All right then, what is up guys? Welcome for another episode of the Group Up Podcast. I am here with the Avengers as always. They need no introduction, but we'll quickly run through. We're about to discuss the upcoming Season 4 patch. In the bottom right is my man Samito. Samito, what's up? What's up? Good early afternoon, everybody, and happy Thursday? Today's Thursday, right? Today's Thursday. Today is, in fact, Friday. <laughs> well, that just shows you where my mental's at this week. I mean... Do, do the days even matter anymore? There's just it's just no. one big blur. We're just kind of carrying on in existence. Yeah. Uh, for real, for real, for real. In the bottom left is my man Flats. Flats, what's up? Hi, I'm sad. You are sad? Well, yeah. I, is is it for the reasons that I think it is? Yeah, I, I I feel like I'm the crazy old man that's been saying stuff for weeks, months, and nobody cares. Speaking of, hey Frida, what's up? <laughs> That's the best introduction I've ever had, I think, right there in my entire life. Uh, hey, guys, I'm excited to be on the show. I do love this show so much. I also love not being on this show because then we get to see other content creators come on it. And as a content enjoyer, then I get to uh, hear the opinions of like Faria last time or Avril, who I'm also a big fan of. But I hope to uh, fill their shoes now because I'm off the show more than I'm on now. So now, now I have to fill the guest spot, I guess, <laughs> and, and do a good job. I'll try my best, everybody. No, no, forever, for, forever one of the OGs. In fact, the first ever guest of the Group Up podcast was Frito. So, uh, the real OG, the etched in history. Okay, guys, so we've alluded to it. It's season four is coming up, and yesterday we got a patch. I mean, we've also got hype. So, you know, I, I, I know people are already tuning in. They're like, oh shit, this is about to go off. This is about to go off. We will try our best to, you know, tinge our potential, any negativity with also no. the optimism. No, never mind. I will try to provide that optimism where where perhaps the darkness is the deepest and where uh, Mufasa would tell us not to go. Um, you know, we've got awesome hype about a new new hero, Life Weaver. They'll, we'll have a whole dedicated podcast for Life Weaver next week, so, but we will talk a little bit about him as well. But I think that the topic in everyone's mind, first and foremost, we're going we're gonna to get right into it, is the Season 4 patch that we've been given. Uh, fellas, I think it makes sense for us to run through it. And you know what? Let's just fucking start with the big topic and then we'll work our way back, okay? Because I know everyone's like immediately wants your thoughts on Brigitte, which is that this hero has a long history of Overwatch since her release, has, has kind of caused a lot of, uh, a lot of discussion, a lot of controversy, a lot of love, a lot of hate. I'll let, I'll let my resident fellow expert, Samito, uh, introduce us. I'm going to read the patch notes, Sam. Can you uh, link them I'll... in in uh, Discord in Discord too? Sure, so sure, 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 sure. Here you go. This is the patch notes, the retail patch notes. So I'm just gonna read what's happening. Uh, rally yeah. has now been changed. Brigitta now gains 100 restorable armor health pool for the duration of rally. So again, this is the patch notes that are gonna be released on April 11th when season four begins. Uh, this is what's on the Overwatch forum. So the link is there. You can check it out. Brigitta no longer gradually builds temporary health like her nearby allies. Rally now upgrades her barrier shield as we've seen the wide people brig that you may have seen in Samito's new banner, uh, increasing both its health and size. Barrier health increased from 300 to 750 during the ultimate. During Rally, shield bash now impacts multiple enemies and briefly stuns them. Her bonus movement speed that she got in Rally has been reduced from 30 to 15%, and the range of her repair packs have been nerfed by 5 meters. Developer comments, Rally lost some of its power with the change from granting allies additional armor to temporary health and overall took a relatively long time to build up its defensive benefits. This rework is intended to keep it as a defensive ultimate ability, but with a more immediate impact due to gaining an increased armor health pool up front and the enhanced barrier which can be utilized to block for teammates while their temporary health builds or interrupts with their stun. Samito, give me your general thoughts on this uh on this change here because i know this is the one that everyone's going to talk about so muted. there you go oh, I'm, I'm not muted no i'm just trying oh he's just in shock really okay. he's just yeah. thinking he's just thinking he's hearing it again they're, they're just coming out real slow so <laughs> in, in, in the wise words of stephen a smith who's somebody that i i've kind of modeled like a lot of my content after over the years what kind of crack are you all smoking? What, like, this is ridiculous. It's a ridiculous change. And if any, like, I, I saw so many tweets from people being like, oh, it's just an ult, right? It's just, like, if you don't think, let me make some, something clear about these changes right now. Brig is immortal when rallying. You're not killing her. You're not going to kill her at all. 
the, these stats are as good as she was on launch, which I'm going to quote the devs, we're never making another brick again. Within the fourth season, we're already back. And look, I'm going to explain a lot more as this goes on about why I, I've always said this. That I think Brig is a horribly designed character, especially for your average player. And a lot of people see that as me saying, oh, well, you just hate Brig. Like, get good. Like, my reasons for, like, why I think she's poorly designed, I, I'll talk about a little bit down the line, but I want to cover Rally first. The character's just immortal when she rallies. That's not good for the game. Like, it just seems like every... Th this is now... I would consider this, like, the fourth... Hero in the sport role, wait, one, two, three. Fourth, that's going to have an immortality ability, right? Because like, well, I guess this one's an ultimate, so it's a little bit better, right? But like, she's not going to die. You, you cannot fight Rally anymore. She has a collective like 1,200 HP that she can regen with a massive barrier. She's not going to die. So I get, okay, you want to make Rally stronger. Surely there's a better way to do it than this, right? Giving her an AOE stun that I believe, Flats, I mean, I think it was at your clip that it goes through shields again. It goes through Ryan's shield mm -hmm. like back in the day. No, it was, Kark, you had it, but yeah, it go, you can bash yeah, Shatter was, again. We're back. <laughs> We're literally. Like, like, I, look, I know it's a new team, right? I know it's a new team, but do y'all not remember what happened last time? Like, like, this is what I want to know. Like, I get wanting to make heroes good. I get wanting to make them want to, like, show off and, like, doing crazy stuff. Has anyone ever received Brig that way in, in the gaming? Like, it's a meme for how horrible it is. It's a literal meme. And the fact that this is the way that you choose to die on the hill is stupid. And my biggest... You want to know what my biggest fear is? You want to know what my biggest fear is? My biggest fear is because the character doesn't show people. That's my big problem with it. It doesn't show people how to actually play it properly. That low SR players are still going to continue to be shit with the character, right? Because the game doesn't visualize and show you how to play. Because the character is inherently misleading. And at high level play, it's going to make the game awful. Right? It's going to make the game awful. I don't under I don't know in what kind of shooter game people like having characters that are unkillable in it. I don't know who likes it. I don't know why they're doubling down on this support design, and it's really concerning. I'm gonna call out the the, the the design team again because it's really concerning that so many streamers and so many players who don't play the game anymore even are so vocal about how continuously it seems like invulnerability abilities continuously get added to the support role. That is not why people play shooter games. And I know Overwatch is a different type of shooter. It has MOBA elements, right? But when every character is either becoming unkillable in the sport role, applying an immortality effect, it breaks the game and it ruins what's fun about the game. These changes are horrible. And it's jumping the gun. I really think they should have looked to address the mid-fight visuals for your average player so that you can actually see how... I don't think we're getting good stats on Brig right now. Because I guarantee you anybody below Masters who's playing Brig is not playing the hero properly. So Damn. the fact that we jump straight to the ult and don't try to fix any of this first is just redonk donk donk It's 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 like it's crazy. It's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Put it on the Kellogg's ad. Literally front page. New 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 sponsor. Cocoa Puffs, and it's 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 the Blizzard team making these rally changes. It's crazy. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought the last podcast they did, like the thing, they said that Brig had the highest support win rate outside of GM for the whole game. And only in GM, it's Zen that has a higher win rate. I'm pretty sure they said that. Before, before. <laughs> then what I are love, they doing? Like, what, what, what are we? What are we huffing? Like, right, okay, 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 okay. I don't, I don't want us to, you know, you know. I want us to keep our emotions in check, or lest we be accused of being a bunch of baby ragers. Um, That's what they said, though. Not. It is no, it's true. You're right. You're right to point that. out. You're very right to point today. that out, flat. And, I will and... baby rage today. I'm going. Oh to yeah, that's that's, that's totally bit, understandable. Totally understandable. Gotta get the bingo card going. I, for sure, for sure. I, I mean, do want to try and provide context with a couple of things. Firstly, I think there's probably a lot of people who are new to Watch 2, welcome, uh, who maybe are a little bit confused by the relationship that a lot of our older players have with Brigitte, right? Um, where they maybe don't understand why, why people are so traumatized, why they're so desperate for Brigitte to not be what they keep referring to as release Brig. Um, and then there's the other side of this, which is, as you alluded to as well, Sam, where a lot of people feel like there's, there's not, I, they don't really get the big deal. I want to I take it to Frido. Frido, uh, do you feel like the trauma, maybe you want to, maybe you want to allude to the trauma here, which is that like, when Brig was released, she created this composition called Goats, which basically dominated Overwatch for, what, two years or thereabouts forced what well, eventually became roll cube for you know there was multiple attempts to balance to stop it from being the dominant comp that it was eventually the devs couldn't do it they they made roll cube instead so they locked you into 222 so that you couldn't play three tanks and three supports uh to enable the mass healing of brigitta and ever since then we've been kind of living in a post brigitta world pb right like the 
the the <laughs> trauma that's kind of that's kind of caused the schism in the Overwatch community where we're all tr like we're all like no please no never again. So Frito, maybe you want to talk about like do you think that's fair? Like we kind of we kind of feel that way that we still have this image of Brig that's this kind of monster that terrorized and maybe even uh, some would say broke Overwatch. And do you think this is kind of bringing that that state back? Okay, I, this is going to take a long arc, so let, let me wind this one up for a second. I'm going to take it even back before that. So Jeff Kaplan often in forums and um, through explaining their thought process like through the years, explained at like different points of time this information came out. We didn't necessarily understand this at the launch, but us as the community would often see the game and like compositions at the highest level. 222 kind of seemed like the most playable version, right? But the devs never really intended that. They didn't even really know what would be viable, why it's viable. The design of Overwatch 1 was strictly much more of a casual game first because it didn't have the structure around it in order to say what your expectations for any role or category or matchup or team composition. The, the craziness goes worse the further back you go but the rationale is that they weren't they, that's just not how they designed the game at all right so brig being the uh tank support hybrid was like their design goal like they always designed to the extremes valk 1.0 brig 1.0 they were attempting to do that and and that's how we got some of this crazy design so the post-traumatic stress of that uh in this um ultimate rework for brig it's just like saying well what if brig could do that again and actually i kind of predicted this as well because i'm like well what if brig just had a stun again and i, I hope i'm not to blame for that uh for them putting it back in the ultimate but um okay so that's overwatch one design then they went into um 222 forcing the rollock and it just took them forever to really understand how to balance that because they never really intended to do that ever they didn't really ever want to balance the game for a competitive level they just wanted heroes to have the immersion to do what you expected them to do as the player as opposed to how it would affect the metagame or any of that. It's like you, 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 you can piece together comments that the devs said over the years, and they almost get bored or snore at those things. It's like, well, there's something's always going to be meta. Uh, just like get better at playing Reaper. Like that's literally like how they would explain it, right? And it was tone deaf and not good for the competitive scene. Luckily now, I think we have an entirely different philosophy. So while there are uh, ripple effects or like I'm trying to remember like nightmares I guess from the previous versions of what we know that potential to be I, I think they're going to be willing to tone it back whether it's the uh, mid fight value or you know they already decreased the movement speed a little bit I, and now I'm going to go for a curve that you probably don't even see coming I don't even think necessarily Brig is that great on the new build, personally. And the reason is, is because what we didn't have in the GOATS era was a character like Lifeweaver. I know you wanted to pause him for a moment, but for me, I can't look at any of the balance changes in that patch without the context of, we now have a hero that constantly gives your backline high ground, um, in, like invulnerability, and it allows for a lot of high stat greed characters to play positions that just would have been inefficient before. So as a GOATS historian myself, always trying to figure out like the niche cases of how to counter it, like at the highest levels, it was too difficult, but a lot of it just came around from needing to get the better angle above it and around it and between it, and you had to execute a dive with one tank or crossfire perfectly split it up all that wasn't really possible efficiently enough for long enough in that goats era but now we have more characters that are designed to do different things and i think you'll find that like a life weaver pulling your character up like you kind of don't want that to be a brig like if life weaver is a top pick which i think he is Playing around a Brig is just kind of like low value in comparison to an Ananade or a Zen Discord. Like those are way more oppressive to me to be on the high ground always. Like that's what we have to imagine. Like it's efficient to have greed characters on the high ground always on this new patch. So this idea that you need to have characters that play down in the brawl always, that's just like not how the game's going to be played as far as I can tell and imagine. And it's always going to be map pool depending too. But that, that's uh, okay. That's my long arc <laughs> circling back to I think Life Weaver is very good and Brig looks scary now. And yes, the ultimate is absolutely insane. But I think what's more insane is, is holding high ground with uh, more valuable characters from range is my guess. But, uh, you know, been wrong before. So it's possible that that's the incorrect take. But... In, in our testing, anyway, in Pugs, Brig didn't seem that insane. 
Like the, the stats look insane, but when I played against it, even against really good Briggs, what I'm saying kind of panned out where it's just like, you just play keep away and just, oh, I'm, I'm on high ground, I shoot down. So it's like, good luck being a brawler against that. That's a very, very uh, well summarized point there. And I appreciate the GOATS historian for giving us a little journey through the eras. Um, Flats, I kind of saw your eyes light up a little bit where you were like, mm, I don't know about that one, Chief. So where where does your grievances lie with that statement about Brig not being so strong? Well, the, even to the the last one of like holding high ground, like Brig is the king of the high ground. Like that's what we played Brig, uh, Brig Zen for the last like eight months of a watch one because you just made Zen a fortress. And now Brig will just make everyone a fortress. And the one thing she was not that good at was if you got on her, you could run her down, which is why I was really surprised that they said Ryan Brig was a good comp because like inherently when Ryan is good, Brig is not good. And when Brig is good, Ryan isn't good. Like they're actually like not mirror images, but almost reflections of opposites of enabling different types of comps, which is why I was like, I don't know about that one, Chief. Um, but yeah, like basically what Brig is going to do is just enable everyone. And then even if you get on her now, you now can't kill her. Like that was the one thing that made Brig not that good now is you could punish her if you were on her. Um, because don't forget, they buffed whip shot going into Overwatch 2. They buffed shield damage. It's back at 50. They buffed the, how far you go with a shield bash. So not only can she escape and evade you, but if you actually do get on her, what good Briggs are going to do is if you start to pressure her down, they're going to pop their rally and they're going to get an instant 100 armor burst immediately. Not 100 he healing, 100 armor burst and an ultra wide monitor shield. That will still do 50 damage on the bash and stun you and, and they'll still have the whip shot now and the Crocs inspire, inspire and it bash. still gives the green healing to all the teammates. It's not like that's gone. They still get the over health. Just you don't get over health. You trade over health for armor, which is way better. So it's like, you know, rally was still already a decent ultimate to like take space. Like, okay, pop rally, walk in, walk in, walk in. Now it's take pop rally. And now I walk in and I'm not scared of anything either. It's like, it just cranks it up to 11. It's hilarious. Like Sam said, like they, they literally went back and said, we will never do another break. And here it is like arguably. And I think the worst part of all is the Twitter high grounders piss me off, dude. I'm so fucking sick of it <laughs> because you know, what's going to happen. I've been here for seven years. I've seen this a million times. Stop fucking talking down. Like, Oh, it's just a patch. It's not that big of a deal streamer. You guys are all just re rage react baiting. Do you know what work they probably put in to do like the UI design and the shield design? That would that took a lot of work. Like they they're not gonna go two weeks from now and go, oops, sorry, and go back to old rally. They're gonna make it work. They're gonna maybe tone down how often you can use bash in the rally. They're gonna tone down the damage. They're gonna tone down the range. Maybe the HP. Maybe they'll make it so you can only stun one enemy at a time. We're gonna go back to 19 nerfs in a row where it still can't kill her. Now, I'd show you a clip. I'm not sure if it's DMCA or not, but there's a uh, there's a, a very famous uh, Dragon Ball abridged uh, Frieza clip where it's like, if I'm truly that bad, God strike me down now, and a lightning bolt hits him. It's like, ah, give it your best shot next time, asshole. And it's like, they just put Brig <laughs> over her, over him, and it's fucking perfect. It's so perfect. It's 19 nerfs. Boom. It's like, ah, Give it your A game next time. And it's like, that's what we're going again, where it might take weeks or months to get to the point where we don't have to deal with it again. It's going to just be the same fucking cycle. And the worst part of all is I think Sam is spot on is they don't know the history or because it's a new team. They weren't here. Want a great example of that? Let me, let me link you a little something. I'll put it in the, I'll put it in, in into discord chat for you. You got, you mm -hmm. can show your end. I'll show my end. Um, but there's a great example of it's just a different team. They were not all on the same page. They, you know, for better or for worse, Ash, yeah, might not know what's up. The ash change that came into this patch back in 2019, they quote unquote fixed a bug where ash wasn't gaining ultimate charge when bomb existed. And now the patch that's coming out fixed a bug that allowed ash to gain ultimate charge where Bob is active. How are you going to call the same thing? How are you going to call changes that have been in the game and that you once called a bug is still a bug now? It's like there's just little things like that because it's a new team. They don't remember all these things. 
I bet there's I bet there's a lot of people on the team that don't actually remember the history of Brig and what she did to the game and probably think it's fine. And it's like, yeah, it's not gonna be a big deal. It's only it's only in rally. Is she only gonna have two bashes every couple minutes? Like it's not that bad, right? Fight wins. Right? Um right? can I can I add on to this a little bit? Yes, yeah. I want to. I want to give sorry. Frito a chance first, though, just because in case of a rebuttal, I don't want necessarily just a full pylon on the brig. Frito, do you have any kind of? Well, of course, of course, Flats. You know the the way the brig Rhine thing, uh, as Flats described it, he's completely right on that. The brig protecting Zen thing, completely right on that. I think the only thing you guys are underestimating is how much better Life Weaver is at all of that. Protecting Zen, Zen can jump down off the high ground, go get a one one tap, and get pulled back to the high ground. Like, get, I, I think we're not used to having a world where any of these like low ground comps that take time to rotate to the high ground, all, all of a sudden now you instantly have support that puts you up there, and now you have it. Like the just the time alone it takes to take the map control that we're talking about. It's like, oh well, Briggs Zen can hold the high ground. They're really great at that. It's like, yeah, well, Life Weaver does that, and then he gets you there instantly. And oh, you get pushed off, you get up 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 instantly again, over and over and over and over again. Like the the potential teamwork uh in like uh potential and value you can get from just continuously getting back up there is so insane to me that I, I don't no amount of Briggs stats on the ground scare me because every like in I played a ton of the pugs and I will say like the pug players uh, behind the scenes have a bit of mixed skill sets but there's a lot of killers in there like there's ML and Aspen and uh, a lot of masters level players as well there's lower level players too that they get into the pugs so that can kind of uh, offshoot the results but I I don't think I'm misreading it here I think like oftentimes. Brig is just off doing nothing, <laughs> and and like for her to go in and and put herself on the line, it she looks like a joke on the low ground a lot a lot of the time. That's how I felt testing it. Like the skill ceiling of what you can do when you do have the ult is obviously insane. But when everything's away from you, the this idea of like, well, now you can go stun the Cassidy's high new. Well, Cassidy's on the pedal, so you better go get on the pedal. And if you either get up yourself by playing something that's vertical, or you're playing Life Weaver comps yourself. That's how good I think he is. That, so it, it's it's all based on that, obviously. Like, if, I, if I'm wrong and Life Weaver's really bad and his stats aren't good enough, um, then everything I said is going to fall apart. But I, I really think uh, everything you expect Brig to do, Life Weaver just does better and gets you to the high ground faster. And, yeah. Sam. I want to talk about a couple things first. One, Flats, it wasn't 19 nerfs, it was 26. Okay, get it right for Brig. Come, <laughs> come on, buddy. Two, Frito, you're talking a lot about meta. Gotta get up to it, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're good. I, I haven't really gotten to the meta discussion yet as to how viable I think the character is going to be because the reality is right now, Brig is indirectly bad because of how strong Ramaksha is and Ramaksha Rush on a lot of these maps, which I actually think... Like people are talking about Ryan Rush with, with Life Weaver, I think it would be Ram Rush because Life Weaver doesn't have the stats that BAP does, but Ram has the block that would suit into the comp. So I, I agree with you. I think Life Weaver is good, but I haven't really gotten to the meta discussion yet, which I will get into in a second. I also want to elaborate a little bit on my what I think should change for this rig. She does not need a 750 HP shield. That is ridiculous, okay? I think a lot of these changes are actually, like, decent if the shield is 300. I'm okay with the bigger barrier. AoE stun's a little bit questionable. But the 750 HP shield is ridiculous. That's more than a Sigma shield. That's more than a Winston bubble. I really wish they hadn't just stacked buff on buff on buff on buff on buff and seen where she stands. Because the reason why Brig is bad right now, I think, is because of the indirect direction the meta has taken with Ram Rush progressively getting better and better. Because all they really nerfed was his ultimate, and he's still really strong. So if we want to talk meta, I think Life Weaver which we'll, we will get to in a bit, actually is very good. Mostly because, I don't know if you tested this, Frito, but uh, you can set up his pedal platform like Junkrat Mines in that you can leave one on the ground before a fight and recharge your cooldown for the next one, and it doesn't disappear unless somebody steps on it. So you have pre-fight setups that are really, really good. It'll catch a dive well because they're 400 HP. So you go up, they dive you, oh, here's another one on the ground. That's 800 HP collectively on top of his shift and a couple other things that he probably can be used to kite very well. As for the Brig, Brig meta, Brig in the meta, I, I think there are absolutely maps where Brig is going to get played. I think she's getting played a little bit in scrims right now, um, um, especially with these Ana nerfs which to tank, which, I, you know, sleep, sleep nerf to, to only tanks I think is a little inconsistent, but I, I'm willing to try it out. Um, I, I think it's too soon to tell where the meta is going to go, but I still think it's going to be very heavy Ram rush comps, and Ram absolutely dumpsters Brigida in the mid-fight. 
So it's tough to say where the meta is. My biggest fear with all of this is that this just becomes senseless power creep that the reason why Brick isn't as good in pro play right now is not because the hero is bad, but because everything else is just better, especially with just one tank. That tank matchup completely determines whether or not Brig is good or not. And right now, the tank matchup doesn't favor her. So if we go down this endless path of buffing the Wazoo out of specifically supports again in this game, it is going to be detrimental to the game's health long term. And where I guarantee you, as Flat said, we're going to end up stuck with some of these senseless buffs that the hero does not need for ever because we think that I, I, did, but it's crazy i i want to say it's because the devs think the hero's bad but what flat said i remember them saying this now she has one of the highest win rates which is I, again they pay a lot of attention to it so i just i don't understand where this is coming from and why i would love to do any was there anything i missed the uh the talk with ml yesterday i saw i saw some of the memes about them calling support healers or something or jay saying something i thought that was funny um but uh, was there any re what was the direct? Oh, I can, uh, yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, I can. I, I think I can answer your question as well. Well, remember Wait. the launch of the game. What was the narrative around supports? And uh, go back to many, many podcasts ago. I wasn't necessarily the one saying this, and I know you guys are definitely against it. But uh, supports didn't feel impactful. So they've been working on this rally rework, like outside of the meta. Like they're not thinking about meta necessarily. I don't think. But they wanted these support characters to have these big play moments to be able to to defend themselves. And Alec Dawson even said specifically in that chat with ML7 that they want supports to be more scrappy in Overwatch 2. Because in Overwatch 1, and now this is me translating that, I think, it was a little bit more about playing around your tanks and having synergy, and then a support would be like a free kill if left out. Whereas now, because it's 5v5, supports are left to fend for themselves a bit more so you're seeing a lot more either they have an escape or they have extra cooldowns or like like imagine the the for me bap's like my favorite support but the regenerative uh extra burst health on half health targets if that was in 222 it'll probably it's insane because his aoe heals were already insane right like like so it's things like that like he can self-heal himself or kiri's uh running away and now moira can fade during cole it's like they're trying to make supports have these big plays and i think to some degree you're either going to like that philosophy or not. And so I can't really disagree with someone having well, different just... taste. I like having OP supports it, it, to play, personally. So I, I like being able to do ridiculous things as support. What I don't like so much is DPS heroes that are more supportive and easy to play. But maybe that's a, a separate conversation. So I, I get annoyed with the May and Sombra and Symmetra and all that. So I get excited when the support category, who has less damage typically, has abilities like life weaver does or is it kind of has some cooldowns to use i, I would prefer more genji out of the the, uh, the damage category and supports to be more like they use their cooldowns and, and abilities that's how i like to see the game and i, I think that's the the direction it's going so um i think i answered your question right like they want yeah, they did. want Brig to be it's fun good. it's not necessarily about like the meta or getting her to fit and win more and all that it's like she lost a lot of the fun factor of the character and now at least uh I, maybe the multi-stun or the like so being able to like stun a reaper ult for example is the is what they yeah, said it's like okay like you can with, pop I'm the okay ult and, and hit a stun i, I never had a fun it. factor other than being a power trip character she, she, she was kind of fun and goats after you committed and as a power trip half. character though right yeah as a power yeah yeah it was yeah, yeah. well what do it's, you mean it's, by it's, a it's, power it's, trip character flats you literally can dominate anybody in a 1v1 literally like you were not afraid of anyone like so you could be you could be neek the 2200 Break player who got to 4,400 and fuck up Dante on Nick. Tracer. Like, Nick, that was his name. You know, by yeah. the way, shout out to Nick, that guy. If you did not know this, Flats, he uh, not only was he a 2,200 player, the reason he was playing, he was playing on a laptop in his bed because he broke his back in a construction accident. So he was playing in his bed, laying down. He was, he, he can walk now. He can walk now. Shout out to Nick. You ever see this, buddy? I know this because I asked him. I, I, was, I was joking with him about Brig Tips. He told me his story. So yeah, he was literally playing with like, a textbook as his m mouse pad with a broken back laying down in bed. And he Dude, uh, one last thing I wanted to insane. say before we move on. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry to sorry interrupt, but I just didn't want to forget. Like, Sam brought up, like, how Ramatra kind of runs over Brig. And even Ryan to that degree, because he can pierce through the shield and with the buffs that Ram got. I, I don't think some of these changes are necessarily, like, uh, power creeping support as much as giving the supports the rework they might have had if the devs had longer time to... Um, rework the all the classes because support had no changes right at launch and then now over time Zen's got a kick and Briggs got this ridiculous transforming ult and even more ults better and I think 
the reason I'm not scared of goats coming back is just like I think the high ground's so powerful, but also there's more tank picks. Like if Junker Queen existed in uh Overwatch one, would would like that be a, a goat's counter? Like could you have played no. her as one of those one one tanks? I don't I don't know what the if like, there's no cleanse, right? Like pre cleanse. I'm just giving an example, it. right? Like like Ram, Ram being able to cleave or well well goat's Maybe counter Ram. eventually did Maybe fall, Ram right? To anchor. It's, it's mainly just a, mechanics a, questions. The, the point is, there's multiple mechanics in the game that are going to stop you from playing a pure... Other than what we have now. I mean, we already have, like, a Death Ball meta, kind of. Like, I don't see that getting worse. Like, I, I don't think really? it's possible for it to get, get, why, get bro, stronger than it's been recently. Here's why it's worse. My issue is not with goats. My issue is, again, and Brig made goats. The reason goats exist was because of Brig. My issue is with fair play. And then a hero that requires much less Brig right? Way less, especially mechanics, is now immortal. Like, my, my issue isn't with the bash. Like, I'm okay with her being, like, when I talked about a Brig rework, my issue was always with Inspire. I didn't not necessarily mind the bash, because that was one of the few things you had to be proactive with Brig's kit with that actually gave burst impact. I think it's fine that she can bash one target while in Rally. I don't really have a huge issue with that, right? My issue is the shields. stats. It's the stats, right? Like, if she had the bigger shield, and it was 300 health, it also that shield would also be easier to hit. So the Brig player still had to be smart about when to shield and when not to, and you could still get a big bash off if you need it. You can cover more angles for yourself. My problem is that the shield is better than two of the tank shields, and the stats are so high, she's un unkillable. That's not good game design, right? Look, compare that ult to Dragon Blade. Like, it's ridiculous, right? It's, it's, it's not even in the same realm. So look, I'm okay with supports having utility, but it should be fair to the amount of effort that's required, and it needs to be able to be answered. You can't answer that ult. Your best bet is to just disengage. And that's not good game design. That's 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 tic tac toe. That's checkers. That's the checkers that we always complained about in Overwatch One. So I agree so, with where you're coming from, Frito, and I don't have an issue with that. My issue is with the numbers. Those numbers are ridiculous. That is literal tank health pool. It, it, it cannot come to life. It's terrible. So I think there's been a lot of fair points made, uh, and I think there's a couple couple areas I want to probe you guys a little further. I think I want to elaborate as well a little bit on what Frito's point was about what the dev intentions are, because I think that is what we're looking at. Um, I, I, there was one phrase that really caught my ear uh, was what Alex said that, you know, I think ML was like, what, what are you kind of hoping for with this rally change? And he said, well, when your tank dies, you can be the tank. And I think that was like a really telling statement to me because i think i think if we look at some of the recent support changes i do think we're looking at a slight hangover from season one basically right we're looking at a slight hangover from season one when nobody's playing support and i think the devs probably looked at that and they thought we need to do something here because this is a this is a holistic problem right it's the same problem that we had in watch one with tanks where it's like we could never convince people to play tank and eventually that kills the game and i think they looked at that season they thought okay we if we can never convince people to play support we're going to have a problem. And so yeah. over the over the multiple seasons, we've seen that slowly, slowly, slowly creep up. Lucio players are crying somewhere where they're like, where's our, <laughs> where's our turn? Where's our turn? But, you know, I, I think if I look at the Mercy changes as well, because we'll get to talking about all of those. I, I personally am I'm often confused by the Mercy changes when they talk about wanting her to be a triage healer. But it's that same idea of, like, creating supports who can handle for everything for themselves, essentially, right? I think that's what they're trying to do because tanks and DPS are kind of already there. As a tank, obviously, you're now just the only tank, so you handle shit for yourself. As a DPS, you generally have a lot of autonomy to go and get kills. I know Sam is, is raising his eyebrows because there's the, there's yeah, the nuance ahead, of that take. You finish, you finish. No, no, there's the nuance of that take. But again, you can always lock Hans, you can always lock Widow, you can always kill three people, and, and you know, you've got that power. I think what, what supports have often said is, well... My tank is feeding, what do I do? My other support is dead, what do I do? If I'm Mercy, I can't carry the burden of needing to heal my entire team. And I guess similarly for Brig, it's like, if my tank feeds, what do I do? And I think the devs are like, well, here's what you do. You become the tank. So I think that stylistic, that stylistic philosophy is like, we're trying to create supports in a way that they can have like the power to change the game. Because I think for, for supports as well, they've been frustrated by saying, yeah, okay, we might have some powerful cooldowns, but like at best we save other people. We don't we don't win the fight. You guys get to win the fight. So the frustration is we don't get to have that moment. Flats, we we would you I'm gonna you, lose uh... my fucking marbles though, because the tools are there. You just don't know how to turn your brain on and use them. I literally had played a game yesterday where I was like twenty seven and oh on, on uh first point fucking uh, whatever the new york map is and I, every fight you know what i would do every fight i'd let them walk up i'd bait the bash and shift three two one ramatra boom we hold w and everybody dies everybody falls over easy 
because their Bastion was stupid and just kept wasting his shift at the beginning of the fight. You know what happened? On the sec on the last fight, they swapped Zen. And I said, hey guys, I'll see y'all back in spawn. They finally went Zen. They learned how to beat this. And Karki goes, no, Flash, you're not going to die. You're going to be fine. I died that fight. We won, but I but the, I literally sprinted at their Zen full speed. I killed him, but guess what? I died with it because you know what he can do? He puts a little orb on the top of your head, and all of a sudden you take 25% more damage from every single person. And if you get too close, he kicks you away. And he also has extremely high DPS, and he has an orb that you just put on somebody and leave it there, and you don't even have to think about it. And it has probably the high, one of the highest DPS in the game, higher than a lot of even the DPS characters. The support characters, I'm sorry, is the most babied role of anybody. I'm, I was with it, because even back in Beta 2, Beta 1 even, Everyone didn't want to play support. Why did nobody want to play support during the first and second betas of Overwatch? Because there was nothing new. It was the same game you played for the last four years. That doesn't mean there's anything broken or wrong with the role. Beta 1, there was, because the DPS passive. Beta 2, they took they got rid of the DPS passive. So you didn't have to worry about the really fast DPS anymore. But, in, but there was nothing new. There was not a reason. There wasn't anything, like, cool. Like, they're, like you got the kick, and then everyone enjoyed the kick for, like, a week. Like... That doesn't mean anything's wrong with it, though. Like, I wouldn't say any of the supports needed reworks going into Overwatch 2. Even, even like, some, like, even Doomfist, like, I, Doomfist was, like, the only character, I think, that really, really needed a big rework. I'm not even sure if Arissa even needed a rework. It made her more fun, but, like, now Arissa's just permanently in the spot where she's either going to be dog or dominant. And it's, like, otherwise, like, maybe, like, an anti-Roadhog character. Like, that's probably the other, like, you know maybe niche for her that character's kind of gone and good i hated that character so per personally i don't give a shit but it's like I, there's so many things though and it's like you want to give them all these powers but like i can tell you right now healing is already really strong healing is strong as shit you think what like one support can't carry a fight yes they can like and if if i if you get a first pick on support that doesn't mean shit like it is way more impactful to get a first pick on a DPS or a tank than it is on a support. That support can easily carry the rest of the fight, even if it's like a Zen. A good Zen, oh, then put an orb on somebody that, you know, Unite needs it, probably the tank, and then puts Discord up on their tank. If your tank plays smart and plays slow enough, you're probably still going to win that. Like, I, I just, it's crazy to me. It's actually crazy to me that it's like people can look at that and go, they need even more stuff. And it's like, I understand making one it fun, but like once it steps over the boundary of ruining everyone else's fun, you've gone too far. And the brig changes are a great example. We talked about Life Weaver. Sure, we can talk about Life Weaver. Life Weaver, it looks like it's gonna be a really hard character to play fully, like being able to switch between his healing and his DPS and stuff like that. But the major parts are gonna be the flower. 100 percent What happens if you pressure him out on Tracer? Zoop, just goes and sits in the air for a bit. Let's play Mario. Like <laughs> yeah, like I saw Fitzy. I saw Fitzy on the on the dev stream. One was about to kill SK, and he just, just throws it. Whoop! Just goes up in the air and sits there. And Fitzy sat there shooting by himself on May. Took like five icicles and finally broke. SK starts falling, dashes away, gone. Like literally gone. Like like uh, <laughs> you know, like oh, you spent the last four and a half seconds trying to break the platform. Yeah, good luck, dude. You haven't done anything in the fight for the last seven seconds because you just sat up on the platform. The tree. The tree literally won them the game because Yeo got stuck in the tree. He, she, Eva put the tree on him and he got sucked into it and couldn't move for 15 seconds <laughs> because it's a thousand HP and couldn't move. He was literally one with the fucking tree. So it's like, yeah, and then let's not even talk about the lifesteal. The lifesteal is going to be insane. But like what Brig already does is Brig is so good at being a passive do nothing support. You can literally AFK on Brig. As long as you keep the Inspire uptime, you're doing tons of shit. That's how you play Brig. It's a passive, boring character that now doesn't have a weakness. Like, that's the problem. And, like, as Sam was saying, it's like the meta doesn't favor Brig. Not even totally true. Even, like, ranked Ball Zen Brig is actually really good. Actually, you know, Ryan's getting hard nerfed. I actually see way less Ryan than I did at the beginning of the season. I was one of the few people that said, I didn't think Ryan was actually that good. I Ram's think that Ram better. was still better and Ball better. was better. Yeah. Ram, and guess Ram what? Now, come out is better. Yeah. It's just like, it's like, I don't even see Ryan that much in ranked anymore. I don't even, like, I see Ram and I see Ball. Well, oh, we, or, we're, we're nerfing Sigma because he's, 
He's too balanced. That character, I feel like Sigma was the best balanced tank in the game. Like, by we'll, far. We'll, we'll like, get to all so of these. There's so many things that are wrong I mean, here. Hey, Flat said a lot there. Do you want yeah, yeah. to rebut, or can I add on to that first? You could... Hello, guys. SCB here. Just want to quickly interrupt this episode of the Group Up Podcast to say that if you've been enjoying this content, then please do consider supporting me directly via Patreon. It really does help since Patreon only takes about 10% of your money, where YouTube and Twitch take 40 and 50% respectively. So it supports me and allows me to keep making videos no matter how many views they do or don't get. Also, if you are really enjoying this discussion, then why not consider watching some of my other content? First and foremost, my Twitch stream where this podcast is hosted live, and I stream five days a week doing a bunch of other things as well. If you're not much of a Twitch viewer, then you can check out the SVB side channel where all the best bits from the stream go straight to YouTube in highlight format including VOD reviews, gameplay, and streamer formats such as the Fantasy Overwatch or Rank Gauntlet that you may have seen other streamers participate in. And finally, if you're sick of Overwatch, then you could check out my other channel, The Soak, which is where I do movie and TV breakdowns. And I've done videos on things like Avatar The Last Airbender, Pixar's Up, and anime like Haikyuu. So if any of that sounds up your street, then all the links are in the description. But now, back to the discussion. Uh, actually, can I can I quickly? I just want to sure. I want to yeah. inspect a statement that Flats made because I think that people will look at that and they'll say that perhaps there's a contradiction there, which is that you said, well, if you pick, essentially, you implied that the support if you pick a support first, it's the least impactful, right? You said if you pick an enemy support off first from the fight, the other support can still carry less so than a DPS and a tank. Could that not be what support players will look at that and they'll say, well, exactly, Flats, our power in the fight is the least of the three roles. Like what you're telling us is that you can pick up the slack. What do you it's, mean? It's yeah, but but it, it's the opposite. Okay. I, Flats, you're right, but the in my opinion, killing a support force is the most important pick, and here's why. And this this goes with your first statement. I look at like team comps and setups, kind of like PEMDAS, right? You guys remember PEMDAS, like how you like the order of operations for how you do math, right? SVB, you said that DPS you can always pick Hanzo and Widow and Tracer and just pop off as DPS. That's not true. Okay, the better your supports are and the better picks they have, the better angles you can take, which is the most important part of playing those roles. I was playing a couple games um, a week or two ago with my buddy Razor, who played in Contenders, um, and he was playing Tracer. He lost seven games in a row. He's like, I can't win. I can't win. Right? I queued up with him one game. I picked Zenyatta. I kept Orb on him the entire game and Discord the other team. This guy's he's a Contenders player. He's a very, very good player. He could not win in GM1, fell out of top 100. We went and won seven games in a row just from me picking support and actually enabling the DPS in the proper order of operations. So the supports are the most valuable kill you can get if they're playing the role properly, right? If they're not playing the role properly, it doesn't really matter. But to say that support doesn't have the tools to go out there and win, it is the most impactful role in the game. It is the most impactful role in ranked. It is the easiest role to climb on. It has the most tools to win, right? The problem is half the heroes in the role don't require you to actually learn skill sets that make you the most proactive players and that make you really, really good. And that's not a shot at those characters, but it's just the reality of it, right? Like you don't have to be like, you, you, you need mercy takes skill sets, right? Like you need to have good positioning, good game awareness, blah, blah, blah. But if, if you're an honor player, you have to know where to put the nade. Like, mechanically, who you have to heal when. And it's like, there's a lot more actions per minute required of you to, like, get to a super high SR on Ana. The same kind of goes for Zed, aside from Discord, right? Stuff like that. You have to take the mechanical shots. You need to know where to position. So to say that supports, like, don't have big tools is just wrong. It's just not true, right? And I challenge anybody who disagrees to, to really rethink their logic on that one because it's just, if it, you look at these tools, they dictate the entire game, right? So is the, I, 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 that's why I like to think of it as PEMDAS, right? When, when the math, when the order of operation, everything's functioning fluently, right? DPS and tanks can absolutely carry the crap out of a game. But if you mess up the first step of PEMDAS, which are your supports, the ability for your tank and DPS to actually play the game properly just is drastically, drastically diminished. So it, at that point, you're almost arguing, okay, well, True. what organ is more important to the body, the heart or the brain? Well, the brain can't work without the heart, Right. But and then it's it's kind of like an endless discussion. So I maybe 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 that's maybe better is not the right word. SVB, maybe you can help me flesh that analogy out. But do you see what I'm trying to say about that? Yes, How, yeah. right. So you're, you're saying right that on. they're the first foundation of the of the house, right? It's like you yeah. build yes. off of the supports. Yes, you can't build on a shaky foundation, right? And, right. Or your build your structure is just worse. Um, I I hope I covered everything that Flats kind of said. Yeah, no, before. that makes sense. I, I there's I uh, I'll quickly nod shout out to SK in chat who's just come in and said, well, she believes that support is the least impactful role outside of Ana Zen or Bap. So I think also yeah, or, I think when we talk about yeah, roles, well, there's 
There's a little yeah, bit of a. Uh, it depends on the hero, absolutely. It's hard. It, it, it does yeah, depend on like, within the role. It definitely depends on the hero because you know, but, but Lucio, like Moira, the tools Mercy. Are not there. It's not like my problem is with the people that act like the tools that are not there. They are. They absolutely right. are there. And I wanna, um, but, I wanna give yeah, now Frida the chance as well because he has. He's been very patient. Frida, do you have anything to respond on anything that's been said? Yes. So I think Loki. The thing that Flats is really uh, circling a lot around a lot of his points is that Zenzo P, <laughs> which I do agree. I think I think Discord. I mean, we've been saying it for a while. Discord's kind of nuts, and I think the devs are already leaning towards thinking about this potentially because of the very odd nerf to Ana Sleep Dart in the next patch, where it affects tanks less. Maybe that needs to have the same treatment for Zen Discord Orb, but then on the other hand, how do you take down some of these Giga tanks at all, like uh, Ram ball. or when Orisa ball is uh, meta ball, especially, yeah, as well, um, when, when that's not in the game. So I, I don't really know how to solve this problem. Personally, I don't have a, let's say, fundamental philosophical disagreement with supports having big plays to make in the ult fight. And I think a better conversation and one that probably is probably gonna gonna be having, and funnily enough, Sam said a lot of pro Brig statements even in his rage here, where he's like, okay, the 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 stun isn't even so bad. Maybe too big, but the stats are the problem. And I think stats can easily be tuned down, is is yeah. the point. So the the rework I, I don't even think necessarily we think is like a terrible idea in principle it's just maybe it's it's over the top and i i come to the standpoint that i just i don't even know if there's a place for her to be the dominant support anyway so i i don't have fear um I, yeah i i think a lot of this conversation just comes from the gap between um expectations of the devs i think are just trying to make the role more fun it's not about necessarily power because i'm with you on the power you know like when Lucio was like the only good support, I was living my dream. I loved it. I just play Lucio all day, every day. And uh, your role's about speeding the team around and just focus firing, right? And playing like fundamentals. But um, turns out a lot of the player base, they want fun buttons to press because there is the, that's the only place that the, let's say, MMO crowd from Blizzard, um, I, I used to almost uh, insultingly call Overwatch 1. Call of Duty for World of Warcraft players because it's like Blizzard made a shooter game that would appeal to those that want to like throw abilities at the boss. And that's where we got a lot of the RPG team comp builder strategy, quote unquote, in the game. And well, 5v5, more shooter, we lost a lot of that, but they just didn't really have time to put it back in the one role that I always said was going to have it. And it's just that continues to be the, the trend where the tanks are Giga Chad DPSs mostly because there isn't a tank positioning battle so much like it's it kind of exists but you know nowhere to the extent of overwatch one especially with like assault and the kind of the, the choke points and you know does anybody remember like cycling zarya bubbles on your main take like like oh there's all that that's just gone right now we have characters that are coming out that kind of do that or or at least they need to step up to kind of add that layer of rpg complexity and the only place it can go in my opinion is, is support so it's just none of this surprises me i guess is my point but uh, yeah, I think they have a little bit of like balancing concerns coming up. And I, I, I guess I, I'm more afraid of um, how obnoxious Life Weaver meta might be than I am of Brig herself. Because I feel you can run over Brig with some of the statted tanks. Whereas like the potential of, of the deployable creep in the game, it's, I forgot to mention this in the video I recorded actually, so I'm glad I can say it here. But Life Weaver, if done over overly um, oppressive, starts to feel a bit double shieldy in a way. Where there's like you kind of mentioned it earlier. It's like we're worried about Brig Shield, but Life Weaver has a shield. <laughs> it's the pedal. He hides on the pedal, right? And that that's like extra stats. And then he's got a got a thing. And then you combine that with the other deployables that exist in the game or that are already good, like May, for example. Then you got a wall and a tree and a pedal and a thing and a pull and a boom. And you're like, Fortnite it's gaming. all repositioning. Then all of a sudden, we <laughs> are just playing a boba game, and it's like two moba for for than than I even wanted necessarily. So I, I'm a little more afraid of that personally. Yeah. Do we know real quick? Uh, does Ram ult get its bow? Does, does Ram ult against the tree like stay up? Does it? Does, is does the tether from Ram ult still attach and count as a player when it's on the tree? I believe it's players only. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think okay. it. I so mean, like it's Bob, yes. Walls and tree, no. I don't think. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think though. it. I wasn't sure. I mean, it's interesting because we're kind of alluding to here, like the, the sort of, the, again, I think it all comes down to that stylistic vision of the devs of like what they see the roles as. And I think they've kind of 
fumbling is, is a bit of a mean word, but fumbling their way towards trying to find this where they're like, oh, well, should... Initially, it was like, well, tanks are the only role that will have CC. But then they're like kind of reneging on that a little bit. They're like, well, maybe we'll give Brig her bash back. And then we buffed on a sleep dart a little bit. Oh, now we nerfed it. A little. You know, they're trying to like find their way to that answer. And then they like to have this. Then they had this one shot discussion, right? Where they're like, okay, well, who gets to have a one shot? Uh, Hog, we don't really want Hog to have one shot. Oh, we're taking one shot away from Sigma too, because we don't really like how that works. So it's like, it's like they're kind of fumbling their way to this vision. And it's like where basically where tanks have CC and sustain. DPS have one shots and like this kind of burst damage, but then it's such a big role that you also have like your Summers and your Maze in there, which is like, it doesn't write, the stylistic vision is maybe harder there, which is why the role passive is so hard there. And then supports are like this big impact cooldowns, big impact ultimates. And I'm kind of curious because, you know, we, a lot of people will, will kind of attack us and other content creators for being like, just, you know, purely negative or shitting on one role or the other. I want to, I want to kind of ask Flats, What's your kind of ideal vision? Because, you know, we, we've, you've spoken a little bit about, like, well, sports being babied or being a lot of value, and you don't think people are understanding how to actually get the value. And it's not that there isn't value, they don't understand it. What's, like, your ideal version of what a support should be? Like, do you have, like, a picture in mind? Like, this character at this time was what I would see as, like, a very really well bound support? Or, like, just stylistically, do you have, like, a thing of, like, I think support should do this? Mm, I mean... <sighs> It's, I don't know, if, if, you, if you want me to point it like a, a certain time, I would point to like old Ana. Like uh, the, every time we get a good Ana meta, like an Ana with like an Ana Lucio meta, that's always a good time, right? Like you don't have the bullshit AOE healing where everyone just stands on top of each other and nobody dies. You, they have to pick their targets. They have impactful things with the nade and the sleep dart. Nano boost is an enabling ultimate to go forward, whether it was nano Dragon Blade or nanoing a tank or something like that. Like there was a lot of enabling um of characters but they had to still make the plays on them you didn't get to do everything yourself um that's kind of changed a little bit with time um Anna now can threaten out tracer with two shots no longer three shots um which is you know like that's it, very minuscule but it's a good example of how things have started to creep their way up over time um zenyatta needed really heavy support whether it was mercy back in old dive and old dive you would just trade zens like the whole point was everybody sat up to go kill the zen like you when you played zen and old dive you knew you knew who was coming like the, the whole squad was coming for your ass but the good zens would one stay alive really long or not die or two always took one or two people with them and like or really like really chunk tanks um as that evolved into the end of overwatch one it became fortress zen where brig was able to keep zen alive for so long that you couldn't even threaten them anymore. And actually, what Sam was saying before about PEMDAS is definitely true. But my own philosophy in ranked, I've changed my philosophy. I don't actually target supports first anymore. Um, it's not possible to kill them half the time. Because if you have two supports that turn and just start pocketing each other, there's literally no chance. Actually, yesterday I was 600 HP on Ryan, sleeping in front of an Ana who had no, no abilities. And I woke up and started swinging and I lost to a Kiriko Ana and I hit every swing. They were able to keep each other alive between Suzu, the heal, the shots, the, like if the nade comes back online, then they get extra healing. Like I literally just died. I was like, that is unbelievable. I didn't miss a single swing. I almost built a shatter off of the two of them. I was like, that is, inc that is incredible. You know, like I know it's a, oh, it's a 2v1. Yeah, but like Reinhardt is like the dominant up close tank with arguably some of the highest up close DPS in the game still lost. And it's like wild. It's actually wild at this point. Um, yeah where you'll definitely be able to kill supports, I mean, uh, DPS more. And I think that's why Mercy meta felt so impressive with Sojourn. Yes, Sojourn was insane, but, like, you couldn't kill the Sojourn half the time. Like, she could do whatever she wanted. She could jump up on high ground. She could do really stupid stuff. And the Mercy would always be there to bail them out with either healing or to enable shots faster. Like, they wouldn't have to charge the railgun all the way up. They could charge it to, like, 60%, 70%, and then go for the headshot and easily just take people out. And it was really, really frustrating, and that's why a lot of people wanted damage boost re removed. But it's like, it's all these crazy enabling things, which is fine. I'm cool with enabling uh, abilities and whatnot. But once they have no weaknesses, and that's one of my big pr problems with Zen, is Zen's big problem was you could just jump on him with Winston, Ball, D.Va, whatever, and he was screwed. Towards the end of Overwatch 1, you know, Break kind of made it, it was a little bit harder, but, you know, like, hey, still somewhat doable, hard. And then the kick got introduced. So that's kind of not really there. You have to kind of poke them down more. 
Um, so what is what is my ideal for supports? I would say they have to have one strong niche uh, that they're good at, and then that's it. Like that's what they're good at because that is what the tank role is now. And everyone complains about tanks. Tanks OP, dude. Every game of fucking tank is rock paper scissors. I swap like seven times a game now. Like it's insane. Like it's it's actually insane. Every game I will play Diva, Ball, Winston, Ryan, Ramatra, Sigma. Like every game without fail. I'm constantly rotating my way through because they either their DPS swap, like they'll go Sombra May. You know, if I'm on Ball, they'll go Sombra. If they go May, if I'm on Ryan, or their backline will go Brig Zen if I'm on Ball, or their tank will go, oh hey, uh, he's on Ryan. Yeah, we'll go ball and go behind him, or we'll go Ramatra and just start kind of like playing a little bit slower and just like punch him out. You know what I mean? Like I have to play the the rock, paper, scissors game all day long. Support players don't. You just pick whatever character. And very few times do you actually have to swap in ranked unless it's really high level games and they know what they're doing. And even then, I've lost so many games because support players don't feel like they want to swap. They don't care. Like they're like, I'll get Kiriko Ana. And they're like, well, I'm running Kiriko because they have a tracer. And it's like, yeah, but if you went Brig for our Ana, or you guys went Brig Zen, or if you guys went Ana Lucio, or if you guys went Lucio Kiriko, you know what I mean? Like you actually work together in some way, shape, or form, you'd be fine but you don't want to, you don't care. So it's like, oh, you could work, with, like there's so many supports that could complement each other and make it be fine. But in the ranked environment, people just don't give a shit. So then they feel helpless and they need more tools. But it's like, you don't need more tools. Like you have another partner. That was the whole point of getting rid of two tanks is we had part, like the partnership with tanks. So now you have it all condensed into one. So you can't play just one tank. You have to constantly swap now. So like, why, why is support get to have everything at all times? Like Briggs one weakness was you run her down like you guys said, with Ramacha Ryan. But now, yeah, you, you probably still can, but Brig just stays further away anyway. So Ryan it's like, can't. I don't know. Ryan, there's no way. You won't Ryan make it. Anymore. You Ryan don't get there. Anymore. Ram might be able to because of his block, but Ryan will. I mean, Ryan, yeah, Ryan's dead this season, to be fair. So, so yeah. But. Well, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about Reinhardt. Uh, I'll give Frito a quick chance to kind of feedback on any of that because we're, we're just sticking on the on the larger picture of discussing supports in general we'll get to each of the heroes in a second but do you kind of uh, agree with with flats's opinion there about supports getting to kind of have their cake and eat it too almost whereas with the tank role again we, you know we've been complaining about the rock paper scissors for a while all right i'm i'm gonna attempt to use some some therapy language here okay because i, I want to bridge the gap of the communication here so i feel it's a bit tank versus support so instead i want to phrase it this way everyone's pain is valid let's all have a big hug okay Every, everyone's pain is valid <laughs> right so support players want to have more fun and flats kept bringing up things like oh you know it was great you know everyone just dove the zen and he always died sometimes you got to kill but that it's like zen players hated that and that's the reason why they invented brig to begin with as an answer to not have that happen it was the design goal expressed so that wouldn't happen anymore but I'm with Flats as well at the same time because trying to play tank myself, um, I probably shouldn't play on the laptop I'm currently on. That's a mistake. Don't play on a laptop. Get, get a real real PC. That's That's been rough. But uh, a tank is the easiest to counter roll of all of them for sure. And especially if you don't have the right picks. Like getting counterpicked as tank, it used to be like, all right, the enemy tank was counterpicking me in the hog era, right? Now it's like half the characters in the game are good at countering tanks in one way or another. And it's so obnoxious to play. that, And that's where I get into my like uh, DPS anger a bit, where the support utility from DPSs to counter tanks is super annoying. And then on top of that, you got Discord and Ana Disables. And there's so many ways for tanks to get screwed and be forced to swap. And I think... Remembering the phrase, everyone's pain is valid. Well, now we'll start to think about, do they counteract this a bit? Because we can kind of expect when they address a role like support and they start giving them all these tools, it's going to have a knock-on effect somewhere. And Flats was ahead of this over the past months, I'd say, where he's like, hold on a second, hold on. My tank is getting much less fun. It was super fun to begin with because they, I, I would argue, just ran over everything, right? And now supports easily fight back in many cases. Though I will mention, like, the Mercy Beam triage healer, that being reverted, I think that matters a lot. You'll be able to damage through Mercy Beam, for example. Ana, sleep going down. Like, I think they're already, like, paying attention to this, and I just want 
us to track this narrative as it goes through a bit, because I, I think the tank role is having less fun for sure uh, as the support role gets buffed up. Because, and I think I said this last podcast I was on, but it, it's going to be the case that if support have more power and agency, well, then they're more reliant or they're more powerful, let's say, on what happens in the tank battle altogether. So, um, I, I want to track this, I guess, is, is my point. And I, I agree with the pain points Flats has about tank. Uh, I think the devs are just designing the game in real time. And ideally, they, this would have happened behind closed doors instead of them doing PvE for years and years and misallocating resources and projects that never came and all that, right? Like, we're kind of just seeing it happen as it goes and have to suffer, the, <laughs> suffer as I have, the pain points as we go through. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that take. Actually, I think I think designing the game live is like is a great summary of, of what we're seeing. Because I think the example the Flats gave is is a really telling one about like, well, I'm Reinhardt and I'm fighting these two supports who are on their own. There's nothing else. I should win this fight, but I, it's it's fucking no. You're just like, who's the guy who was forever like tortured to like drink the water, but never like always stay thirsty? Like that's what that, that reminds me of. Like where it's just like he's just sipping the water, but it doesn't matter because he's still never gonna get what he wants. And I think that like. That is is like is like the approach or watch when it's like a it, it makes sense game. It's like a, this is a team game. Philosophically, I should win this fight, but then you oppose that with the reality of well, this is also like just we're just we're thinking solo queue. I'm one of the support players, and you know I I want to be able to fight back against the tank. This is two support players. They want to be able to fight back against the tank. It doesn't matter that he's the close range tank who got in close and must have used some cooldowns to get there. It feels shit if you're the two supports. And you have no way to fight back against that one tank, right? So it's like fighting that, those two oppositional things of like, yeah, but to do it, I there was a whole, you don't, you know, don't you see the whole resource chain that took place before I got to that point? Like for me to get there as Reinhardt, a lot happened. It wasn't just that I teleported there. I planned my path, I planned my resource management, and I got there. But... That, and that's the theory, but that fights against the, well, yeah, but I'm two supports now. I might have mispositioned or I might have missed cooldown, but I still don't want to feel like I can't fight this one tank as these two characters. I'm two players and I can't be one guy. That feels shit. So I think what we're seeing is the devs kind of try to figure out the philosophy of the game as like before they actually balance the game almost i feel like that's almost what's happening where it's like we had because a lot of our fun the fun is always a subjective term but a lot of our fun has come at the opposition of other roles right so like season one people were like tanks op man i i can't do anything then we had sojourn meta and like widow and hanzo one shot meta where it's like nobody outside of those guys could do anything right where you just sit there you're like oh okay well sojourn gap gg and now we're approaching like the support era, right? Where it's like, well, if they have these two supports and my supports are sniffing glue, GG, like it's unwinnable. And we're kind of fighting this battle because the devs keep trying to pull and they keep trying to be like, okay, well, okay, okay, we, I know we made tanks too strong because we were really worried. Remember, that was the really worry, there, worry there, point. There was just a couple of them, yeah, but for the most yeah. part, I think we're okay. It, it was the it was worry just, point oh, yeah, though, right? One. It was Zarya and Zarya, Hawk, like back Zarya back. yeah. And D don't forget Diva. Zarya Diva. Forget, Zarya Diva. Diva got tuned down at the same time, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Zarya Diva then went to Hog, then Orisa. Uh, there was like a brief, like people panicking over Ramatra in there too. Um, but the point yeah. being that you know the he's big concern, he's still good. Still the, good the, yeah. the, the the concern point was at launch because we had switched from six to six v six to five v five. We need to make sure the tanks are good. So the tanks were were you know certainly Zarya and Diva were very very good, and their tanks were also like not what people feared. Then it was like oh shit, okay DPS players and support players are now like we don't feel good. So we got to make sure the DPS feel good. Now we got to make sure the support feel good. So I feel like we've just gone through that cycle. We're in season four now. So we've kind of almost taken a season to give everyone a little bit of a chance to be like, this is the this is the characters or the niche characters that kind of dominate the game. And I guess what they're going to try and do is eventually then iron that out. And I hope, maybe this is copium, but I hope they'll eventually try and figure out a way where it's like, our fun shouldn't be so oppositional because Frito's right. <laughs> you know, all, all, all our pain is valid. Uh, the fun sh sh doesn't need to be oppositional where it's like, for them to have fun, I can't have fun. And I think that that's probably the, the main problem we need to solve here. Um, Sam, I, I know you haven't had a chance to speak in a while, so I want to let you have a have a, have a crack. Yeah, I wouldn't say that the, that the idea that for me to have fun, they need to not have fun is solid in the game. I wouldn't say that's 100% true. I think there are some circumstances where that's true for specific characters. Um, but like generally speaking, I don't, I don't think that's true. Um, and again, I, I I do think that they're kind of going as they either they're trialing things as they go on, um, but 
I don't want people to think that changing things like Brig necessarily that we're super against that. Like I'm okay with some minor changes. It's just particularly the stats that are put onto this are so over the top that it will break the game. It's just going to. So if they want to trial and experiment with things, just be more careful with stats. That's all. Like again, this is you know what this is? This is the equivalent of Sojourn season two and support. This is what that is, right? Where they changed the rail and up their damage at the same time to compensate, and it was just too much, right? I, 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 season four is going to start out like season two, and nobody is going to like it because some of this stuff is just too good. I, I hope it's I, I, it probably is too late. This is probably going to be what the pack they put it out, yeah. knowing yeah, the, the hot six fix. That, well, the, the the hot fix thing is six weeks for the next patch. You're kidding? No, no, no. It takes weeks to put it out because they have to clear it through Xbox, Sony, okay. uh, Nintendo Switch. So this is probably already locked in. How are we getting this before we can stack with our friends? That's what I want. <laughs> bingo, I bingo, bingo. <laughs> this is just this is preposterous. It really like rank is gonna be dead. It's just gonna be so dead. People aren't gonna play this. Um, but yeah, look, I, bingo. You're, you're welcome. Um, I've got no words. Okay, on, on anymore. That's all I got. But yeah. Before we move on, can I have can one I, last thing? Yeah, yeah. It's flats as well can, can have a thing, but you go, Frito. Yeah, yeah, you go first. Uh, I just want to add on to our flats example, okay? So flats is in the back line, swings forever, can't kill supports. Because I think the devs find this feedback, I hope, useful. So my problem is, so what is he supposed to do as the tank player? Stay, what ends up happening is you just have to anchor around your own May walls or whatever and play Ram and just anchor a position and that's what makes it kind of boring to play. Because like, who are, who am I supposed to go at? Well, they have Sombra and May and all these other picks that just like can't die to me. So you end up just like channeling being support heal fodder and playing off everyone else's abilities, which to some degree was kind of how main tank played in Overwatch 1 as well, but also why people didn't like it then. So it's like the the arc of people not liking tank again is coming back and it, that's it's going to come for the same reasons, basically, because you feel like you can't go anywhere and when you do, they, the, the things don't die. So you just have to anchor in the perfect spot, absorb healing and launch off of the resources. And um, that makes it definitely less fun to me, I'd say, especially when I don't have the Sombras or Maze or whatever on my team that, to, that are easily winning the tank battle because it is so important. The answer is to just like hide like a little scared, <laughs> like big hitbox, basically, and, and, and so be sad. farm fodder. And, and that's what sucks about it is like you're just kind of have to wait for everyone else to set you up. And that does, isn't what like tank feels good about. And well, I don't, I don't know. I, like I, again, I, I think I've made earlier points better. So I'll pause it there. That's a fair point, Flats. Tank, tank is the least run full. Tank is the least fun role in the game, personally, in my opinion. How, right. how fast they fucked it up too. It's actually hilarious. Well, it's, it's, it's tank, 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 tank. I, I would caveat yeah. that I'd say tank is fun for like the first fight and then they counter you and then that's it. Now you're like yeah. you start yeah. off, you're like, even Yo, then it's not that fun depending on who you are. I stream, dude. Like that's true. I okay, actually yeah. so I actually play miss I play uh, uh mystery heroes in the spawn room now, and I've actually won I since I started playing mystery heroes in the spawn room, my win rate in first fight went up like eighty percent. Just saying. Um but I actually I'm, I'm a little bit different than Sam here, and you're you're gonna probably laugh your ass off. Uh, I actually think we've hit the point with Brig where it's legitimately done so much psychological damage at this point that leaving her as like kind of like a niche pick for high level play, like where you just you play it as like a dive, like an anti dive character every once in a while is the way to leave her. Don't yeah. don't bring her back. Like literally, like I you are agree. talking about a character that actually killed your entire franchise at one point. And it's like <laughs> it's actually kind of back. And I would actually argue uh I don't I don't want to give any Twitter fodder to, you know, all the people that post screenshots at 3:30 in the morning. Oh, look at the Twitch views. Yeah. Nothing like that. But I can tell you from all my own personal analytics from YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, all that stuff, there is a pretty significant drop in excitement from season 2 character release to season 4. Running about the data it was about a 10 to 20% drop in like excitement across the board and i i i haven't even looked at google trends i bet google trends that once when season four launches will look very similar i can um, i can um, i don't know what they'll look like their numbers on the back end but sam's talked about this before google trends search trends are very very oh, much yeah. in line with people's uh interests around things it's already took a small drop it will continue to take small drops until some core gameplay aspect is changed because realistically to people outside of overwatch 
Overwatch 2 is Overwatch 1 with one less tank. To the casual fucking gamer who rotates Valorant, Apex, all the shit all day long, they think it's the same game. If Brig came back and actually dominated the game for a second it's time, it's, over. it's, it's over. actually my GG. Roommate, my roommate already won't play the game because of the invulnerability. I, I don't think people understand play. how deep-rooted that trauma of the character is. I, I genuinely believe Brig is one of the few characters at this point, if you leave her off to the side where she's okay in some niche situations and high players know how to use her and all the low-level players have no fucking clue, that's okay. Yeah. And obviously, like, th these are compounding issues, but it doesn't have to be this way, I think, is, is the other thing I would add to what Flats is saying, is that, you know, I remember when we were in the dark days of the end of Overwatch 1, we would keep looking over across the fence at Apex Legends with jealous eyes, and we'd always point to the to the player counts, and it's always, okay, peak, because season season starts, a little bit of dwindle as season goes, then another peak as a new season, but higher than the previous season. That's what Apex was yes. doing for a consistent period of time, because... Every time they release a new hero, more people would come and more people would rejoin as well. So it doesn't actually have to be this way that we're actually losing players after the initial hype. Technically, if you're if you're kind of hitting the nail on the head every time, people will keep coming back. Of course, they'll lose interest over time, but they'll keep coming back and in higher numbers. Flats? There's a core gameplay design difference, though, with Apex. And, like, Apex also can come... Like, don't get me wrong. They have fucking tons of problems. But oh, like yeah. they can also somewhat admit sometimes when they're wrong. And a good example of that was the season 15 reboot. They basically just reworked all of their characters. Their abilities stayed the same, but they changed all of the classes. Everyone got moved around, how they worked, different quirks, small reworks for other characters. It a lot of people were really upset. Season 13, 14 thought the game was getting stale. You know, like it was the new character wasn't anything great. They had they actually had a they had a Kiriko moment where they, they advertised the new character as, like, something special, and then it didn't work that way. Like, in, in the game, it was like Catalyst Wall was supposed to counter their Seer, which is, like, their Brig, uh, and then it didn't work that way. So everyone was like, why does it not work? Um, but at a gameplay level, the game can be shooken up pretty heavily, and it feels different. Overwatch doesn't do that. I don't Yo, think it ever uh... will. Here, so here's uh, their answer to this, actually. I don't know if that you had this on the bingo, subject, bingo, minus bingo. Uh No, actually, no, you're not going to guess what this is, actually. There's, there's a whole different <laughs> arc. Uh, they've got a PvE mode coming out this season. Yes, and I feel true, like yeah. a lot of the creators aren't paying close enough attention to this, where this entire... What's it called? Star Watch? Am I right on that? Is that that's the name of it? Yes. Star Watch is a PvP mode with some PvE elements. And in Aaron Keller's blog post that literally just went live, I believe, like, 20 minutes ago or, or an hour ago, I guess, um, he low-key put some, like, pretty intense language on it. And whenever Blizzard says, like, they'd like to get a lot more ambitious with something like this, that's what he said, right? So it's like, they would like to do more spin-off modes or even spin-off universes, uh, not just, like, crossover events with one punch man and whatnot but like entirely different game modes and stuff so to me when you start bringing up apex i'm like well that's just a much more fun casual game like we're, we're all we've been arguing about brig for like an Wait, hour would you say and apex like, like a more casual game it's a more fun casual game yeah battle royale so who do you think tens is farming when that we goes like there's hundreds of players in those lobbies that are signing up to play a battle royale and get <laughs> farmed that's by bingo card don't make me that's hit because it. their Goal their one. cat their pub mode doesn't have extremely strict mmr changes like us like our game could do the same thing if quick play didn't have super uh super strict mmr changes it i would argue that Ooh. apex legends is way more competitive and ranked like with their with algs oh. and and yeah and, but i'm people, people play it casually rank. Yeah, yeah well, rank, mean, ranked fine, fair enough. They have a, the tournaments or whatever. I'm not as familiar with that. But it just as a genre, Battle Royale is a bring the kid fodder in on their cell phones and whatnot to get farmed by the few people who can win. It's just, it's a better casual game. And well, what is Overwatch's answer to that? Sam will keep saying, make a Battle Royale also. But their answer is God. PVE stuff mm -hmm. and, and, and that. So that, that's, not only do we know that's coming this year, it was supposed to, right? Am I wrong in saying that? Yeah, like, yeah, like no, they no, said, 2023, 2023. <laughs> it's, it's April, guys. Uh, we're doing the first PvE, hey, PvP style mode, luckily. 
I, I had a lot of people asking me about this, and I didn't have an answer. We so like, was there a public statement about no archives event? Because I always the archives Good events were like my fate. Like twenty seventeen retribution and Black Watch were awesome. Like that was like really cool. Did have any of you guys? Did you guys hear anything at all, or was there some kind of public statement? That's about this it? time of year, right? It should have been. Yeah, it would have yeah. been like this. Yeah, yeah, it would have been this. I guess year. Star Watch is the replacement to that. It's like a more advanced okay, version point. of that. The way the way they said is like they're they're like. Adding on to Junkenstein. It's like, so Junkenstein's a thing over here. It's got its own universe oh, lore. Okay. So the characters like... are playing a different thing. Star Watch is its own narrative. Oh, like It's like all the characters are new characters. You know what I mean? It's sort of like when Family Guy does Star Wars or something. Like they're all <laughs> playing the Star Wars character. <laughs> okay, it's it's that. the same thing. I forgot which about I think that. That was really funny. I'm really optimistic about, actually. Like, like no, that, could, that, that has like endless potential. It. Uh, it, it, yeah, I, we don't know enough about it to know what to expect. Maybe it sucks. I don't know. <laughs> like, like the Battle for Olympus wasn't enough. Let's just put it that way, right? Like, it's like okay. It's like goofy that's characters also coming back, wearing by skins. The way. It, it's it's okay, and and I guess that's going to come back each season. I guess uh, it's going to recur. Uh, but this sounds to be more um, have more depth to it, just like the Junkenstein mode did. And I I would imagine each time they want to like add more and for it to be a more advanced. Um, entity uh, whenever they add these new things so th anyway long story short that's our casual appeal because the the ranked game of overwatch is too hard uh flats's take of removing mmr matchmaking in, in quick play I, I would there would be fires in the streets like like i, I wouldn't <laughs> mind if you wanted it the same way like like it was like i, you I saw don't those we have a different game I hear you. I think we have a different game. And it's also a non-Activision thing. Keep in mind, like, I come from the Call of Duty creator community, from the OG YouTube content creators back before Twitch and all that. Like, I'm an old man, okay? Pub stomping in that game was a whole genre, right? And then they forcibly made that less and less possible over time with the, with the matchmaker. Uh, so this, this is that? like an Activision thing. Yes. Uh, the players hate that. Yeah, I hate yeah. it. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to do that. I'm just telling you, There's this is spot. their yeah. philosophy. There's a sweet spot for it. There's a sweet There's spot. There's a sweet spot. I agree with that. But uh, we're are we we're kind of way are we still on the balance patch? SPB? Yeah, we'll, just went, ah. we'll, we'll get back to it. I mean, this has been an interesting thing. I think I think it's relevant to discuss all of yeah. these all of these factors because it, it, you know, you're right. Like the 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 PVE is something we don't we don't necessarily talk about. But that's also I don't think it's our fault for not talking about it because we never hear anything about it. Like, what do you how how Real. often can you keep talking about something that there's no communication on it? Right? How often you gonna be, it's coming, fellas? It's coming. It's coming, fellas. It's coming. It's co you know, like how how long can you keep doing that same yeah, cycle yeah. until we actually know more? Wolf. So, yeah. um, I I do. If it think... is like Junkenstein. It's gonna be amazing. Oh yeah, I I, I the upcoming I, thing. Yes, I still think it's gonna be. I still think it will be awesome whenever it comes. There, there is that again. That whole conversation about like, well, how will the PVE fit into all of this? Like, what audience will it serve? Will Will this continue to be a game that? Your average, you know, again, Apex, Valorant, Overwatch, Switcher will continue to enjoy, or will they just completely abandon it for the PvE? In which case, like, it might not be a bad thing if this became the more hardcore mode, because then you could, then you wouldn't need to keep having this fight that we were talking about earlier, right? You don't need to keep having this fight of like, okay, here's Overwatch that makes sense in a team and coordinated environment, and then here's Solo Q Andy who just wants to have fun and be able to dominate the lobby as well, as right, right? So like, if that goes away. Then now you can just make sure everything makes sense and you don't have to have the, the flats versus two support scenario and, and kind of be like, well, but yeah, but actually, no, 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 just make it make sense. So I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but flats, I think you had something else to say before we actually move back to discussing the patch notes. God, I don't even know where we are at this point. Where, where, where were we talking about at that point? I, don't know. I think Apex. something of a brig uh, and... Yeah, I think again we were still talking about that. Should say niche forever. Yeah, I, I think honestly, I think yeah, I, that's pretty much the end of my thoughts on that. Is like just keep her niche. Um, like Sam said, like there's always been a problem with Overwatch teaching players how to play the game. Like if you pick up Overwatch two tomorrow and you're a brand new player, you're pretty much guaranteed to not be good at the game for like at least three years. Like unless you have like some serious serious FPS background, and you dedicate yourself for like a year. You're probably not going to have a good time if you're like first picking it up. It's never done a good job of teaching you the game. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't teach you any of the niche mechanics. It doesn't teach you interactions. It doesn't even teach you everything that the character does. Like, even like the F1 screen, like, it just says what it does. It doesn't tell you numbers. Actually, that's actually a good point. I, I've actually, I wonder if you guys have an opinion on that. Why do every time when they release a new character, they never say the numbers? You ever notice that? Like, what do you I, mean? 
I think it's a management yeah. thing. So what, they don't like to be thing? married. They don't like to be married to it. I think because they like to deflect from the responsibility of that, and then they have the ability to change it later. I think is, at is the release, the... it's going to be those numbers no matter what, and then when uh, uh, the, the the next patch note says the numbers and what it's changing to. So like, why? You're right. Why do we I don't think it, I don't I don't you know think there's I mean? any deep I don't think there's any deep logic to it. I think it's literally like somewhere someone is like we don't do numbers here. We you know Chadwick Boseman rest like, in peace my man meme. Like I just think that's a company policy of like no 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 we don't so, do numbers. It doesn't feel weird to you though. Like for it, example, oh, it feels they, they were weird. talking about the new character and they talked about his dash and they're like, "Well, they, he has a dash on a very small cooldown." It's like it's 5 just 5 seconds. Just and it heals seconds. some. It like, heals some. It heals some. Yeah, yes, exactly. Just, what is so, a heal? Yeah, but but like I feel like that also plays into other parts of the game where you just don't talk. You don't talk, like it's like almost like you know there is no war in bossing say there is no numbers <laughs> to these characters like <laughs> you know what I mean like you, just, you know it'd be really I don't cool. know it feels weird you know it'd be cool and what I'd love to see in PBE I've talked about so many times how big of a Borderlands fan I am. I love seeing the number of damage I do next to somebody, like whether it be really, really small or something. Like, so, like in PVE at least, I think it'd be so cool to see, like, if you heal somebody, like, see, like, for the Ana, like, the whatever the heal number is, like, if I headshot somebody as May, like, the the uh, the 150. Maybe right? as an like, option. Just, I, now, now, granted, I'm just super ADHD and I love seeing stuff like that. So, like, that's just me personally. But for PVE, more, the more like Borderlands, the better. <laughs> like Apex yeah, Fortnite type awesome. of style, I feel you. Yeah, 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 maybe as an Apex option. Maybe as an option. Yeah, it Apex does. has yeah, it. Does. Yeah, you do. Yeah, and the you, shield you, crack, the uh, yeah. thing comes up as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I yeah, bet I it's mean, a marketing decision where they're distinctly trying to say this game isn't as complicated as those other games a, you don't yeah. want to play. Also, it's like the MOBA hangover because like this is the Even MOBA it problem is. of like you see you open <laughs> the game and you see like twenty five numbers fly up in your face and you're like whoa mama. Meanwhile, right. the new character probably has so many buttons that you actually, if you play on controller, might need to get a different controller to have all the buttons. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, this is true. Yeah. Also, re true. rebinds your life weaver for sure because it, it the, the base kit uh, binds are not not great, in my opinion. They're often not for some of the new heroes, like even Kiriko. Like I think everyone has rebound their left click, right click yep. around like by this point. Like, Sojourn too. And, and Sojourn. And yeah, Doom. That was that was the silliest one to me. Moving <laughs> slam off E was like, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to get picky with that. That's silly. It's all good. It's just a simple swap. But uh, either way, continue. I also yeah, you can one customize one it, thankfully. One last thing I want to add to this wider dis discussion that we're having, which I think Flats alluded to. With, I, th I think the reason the Battle Royale genre has been so like has stayed the test of time is that it is the most easily like you just hop in even if you're years late to the party like because i think even valorant is suffering from the same problem of like now that it's been like a few years since the game is released the like catch-up time is super high like even your average what, what's the lowest rank iron like even your average like iron player or whatever is just better than your newbie who's never played valorant right because they've just off the experience of the game so like the inflation of like even the low end is so high that it's hard for like a brand new player to get in. And we're, we're seeing that with Overwatch. Whereas with Battle Royales, like it's not that bad. Like you still, can, it's like the, the, the principle of the game is really simple of just like you, you fly in and you shoot stuff. And the guns change all the time. So like you don't have to necessarily understand the implicit meta guns all the time or anything. You know, you can kind of pick up and what works for you. Whereas again, like, you know, the, the Valorant and the, and the Overwatch effect and the MOBA effect, the original is the MOBA effect of like, this is way too hard for a new person to like understand and i wonder if that's just gonna be that's just how it will be for like live service games like you know that's why we i think that's why we periodically need new live service games because like yeah. you people get stale and bored of like well i don't want to get back into valorant i'm like three years late now and i don't wanna have to bother catching up on all the shit like this is you know I, I need something new to play where i'm on an even playing field with everyone so i can actually like have fun it's so, like we're right there now with it, gaming yep and Overwatch is going to get worse at this, not better, anytime soon when they keep adding yep. heroes and the type of heroes they're adding as well. Like, think about how much more complicated the, new, the Overwatch 2 heroes are in comparison to Overwatch 1 heroes. Like, the, like in one way, I love it because I hate Moira as, like, a concept. It's like, oh, you're just... Whoa, whoa, ah, really? I actually like oh, Moira as a concept. Well, you, you want supports to just hide in the back and do nothing, Flats. That's why. <laughs> well, no, I want them to have... Uh, I, I, have I think having a, a, a character who is quite simplistic but good at what they do is not bad like like she has a bailout she's good at healing she's good at doing damage without having to aim very much good at aoe healing you know what i mean like and even it's her ult, she builds it super fast 
Yeah, yeah it's it's a, it's actually a great thing for casual players or people that are not that good at the game. And then as you climb, you get the more complex heroes or you know how to use them a little bit better. I think that's fine. I don't think anything's wrong with that. The comfort pick, as described by the devs. And, and <laughs> comfort ML, pick, you're right. ML's hilarious wait. reaction. Hey, wait, 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 wait. The, the comfort pick. Wait, there's an email. <laughs> I have an email on that now. There's the ML7 oh, email now. <laughs> Did I you see? Uh, did you see? Did you hear them talk about they want more highlights? And when they said that, did they? Oh, did that? Was that mean? an admission of guilt? They said they said that uh, with the Moira uh, change of like they want to see more highlights for support players and just fading into the back line. I actually more think TikTok. they were talking about like TikTok Moiras. I was like, no shot. This is a TikTok Moira buff. Are you shitting me? Like. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. well. Let's let's get to it now. So let's let's scroll up. Let's actually talk about these changes. So actually, let's we we kind of alluded to Life Fever. Uh, again, like I said, next week we'll have a dedicated podcast to Life Fever once we've all got access to playing it. But all of us here have had some uh, you know flirtations with Life Fever. No pun intended. Um, so, what do we think, fellas? Anyone have any like? I know Frito's kind of alluded a lot. Sam, I don't think we've heard too much of your opinions on on Life Fever. Like, how do you how do you feel about him? So, wow, that's quite the that's quite the promising initial. Oh, you know, I don't really know. I think so. His heal numbers aren't strong enough to be picked with like a Reinhardt. I don't think. I think Ryan would struggle with him. I think he needs to be playing with a tank that can sustain well, which is why I think there's a chance he replaces Ram or replaces Bap in Ram Rush. Because, again, you just do what you did in Season 1 with Kiriko. You play a corner, you poke. And unlike Kiriko, I think I think Life Weaver has even more utility than Kiriko to actually bail her teammates out of these situations. I think his teleporter, his jump pads, are actually the most interesting and fun mechanic they've added to the support role in a really long time. I'd love to see more abilities like that. I think that was really clever, and I'm glad that they're doing stuff like that instead of MOs. Except for the fact that Life Pool actually is an MO. <laughs> um, <laughs> Damn, uh, we we, oh, we were so we were so close, fellas. We were so close. Stop, please stop with the mos before before it gets out of hand. I'm I'm telling y'all right now. I, I just that's all I want to say on it. Okay. Life pool is dangerous. In the right setting, it can be very good. But what frustrated me the most about people were saying, "Oh, well, people aren't going to troll with life pool." There's there's a big there's there's a big difference between life pool and any other support ability, okay, or any other ability in the game in general, okay, or a maywall anything. This is the first time an ability can forcibly move a teammate that they cannot interact with it on their own in the game's history. And I don't think that's very good for first person shooter games, in my opinion. Like that's there there's a danger to that. Um it's whether it's pulling somebody off the map, which is a very extreme scenario, right? They, they, people try to compare it to Sim Teleporter. Let's make this crystal clear right now. The life pull ability is not similar to any ability we've ever seen in this game. Ever. Okay. It's 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 a dangerous dangerous path to go down because there's it's the first time you can literally control your teammates. That being said, I think it's definitely an interesting ability that is incredibly powerful, right? Like this is the like support like it baffles me that people try to say support is not the most powerful role in the game. You have more control over the game than any other role in the game, hands down. Uh, ult, I think it's interesting. Uh, I I'm unsure as to whether or not. I feel like the only way you beat the ult is like Bap windowing it, right? But if Life Weaver replaces Bap, then we don't know, right? But I think he only gets played with Ram Rush. I think he's very good into dive, right? Because again, you just you can like if you're defending against a dive comp, you just set up double double fl flower petals. Um, and I was actually working on a couple of different rollouts. There's tons of different tech that will be very from a viewer experience. It's gonna be really fun to watch. Here's where I'll give him credit. I think that it's gonna be one of. The, I think this will be the most fun support to watch they've ever put in the game, like ever. Like, that's how much fun it is. Because there's, think about this, Flats, you're on Ryan, right? You're defending Rialto's second. They're trying to come up that abysmal staircase. I'm going to have a, well, I'm going to spoil my strat. I don't care, whatever. I, I have plenty of other stuff cooked up. I'm going to set a pedal pre-fight at the bottom of the staircase on that left flank. My Ryan gets pedaled up, shatters a team as they come up the stairs. If he doesn't get anything, oh, that's fine. I'm pulling you straight back across the map and you have your whole shield, all your cooldowns. And we have plenty of time to set up for our next anchor. And since I set up my, um, my pedal, on the fight before, I'm going to have another one. And you can roof surf as Ryan and an entire rush comp on the top of the roof of Rialto and go over. And you can just drop down and shatter WWE style from a blind side. So, like, plays like that. You can also go over the first on circuit. Legally this time, Al. Legally. You can't say it's an illegal, illegal maneuver because you guys put the jump pads in the game. So, I want to see some of that, too. Options on circuit. You love to see it. Um, 
So I, I, I think the character's interesting. I, I, I was very nervous and scared at first. I think the ammo on the shield might need to get changed and have it just be like barrier health so you can pierce it and maybe have some options. Um, but no, I, I think there are niche situations, especially on the maps that have very difficult rotations for rush comp, where you can just pedal up in the air. That'll be very good. I think he struggles against poke, um, but is good into dive. And I think that there's definitely a cool place in the game for the character. But I, I, I really, I don't know if I like or dislike how the fluidity of switching between his heals and damage is. I'm not sure how to feel about that yet, because I know they wanted to make it like Mercy, but we would have to think about that. But I think overall, it's a very cool design. I think it was executed pr pretty well. There's just some changes, like mine, like, fun it's not fundamentally flawed. It's just going to need some changes and tweaks to how abilities function. It's fair. Uh, Flash, you were nodding along as well, then I'll let Frito and I can chime in on my own thoughts as well, but your your feelings? I didn't play a ton of Life Weaver. Like, I, I actually didn't play him at all. Like, I played in Pugs with him, but I'm not a support player, and everyone seemed to want to play him, so I was just like, fuck it. I just Actually, I played with you the other night. Yeah, um, we played, we played. Yeah, yeah. So, like, and, and for some reason, I was on Demon Time that night on Hanzo. Um, you were fragging out on Hanzo, dude. I, I actually, I had to go AFK because I felt bad at one point. I spawn killed Karku three times in a row, and I was like, fuck, I'm fucking up his content. So I went and sat on the second point of Hollywood where the mini is at the choke, uh, the first choke. And I just sat AFK on the boxes and just waited till I got the points. <laughs> so I stopped spawn killing him. But actually, um, I do think Life Weaver is going to be pretty good. I think the flower is going to be insane. I think that people are talking about the life grip is the scariest part of his kit. I actually think the flower is. And I was talking to Siegel about it. And he was like, he, he was 100%. He was like, wow, this flower is going to be insane. Like, it's, you know, like you tracer po poking you and whoop, just go up. You know, like, we ain't going to get them. Like, it's not possible. Um, especially if you set it up pre-fight too, like you can get two of them. Um, but what I will say, the biggest detriments are like Sam said, his fluidity between healing and, and damage. I don't even know why you heal on the character. There's no point. You only get three 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 percent ult charge on a non tank target. So full ult charge, full sixty five. You get three percent. You swap to the 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 little needler bullets. One clip of hitting people is like ten percent like 12 percent or is he actually more it's insane like there's almost like for me when i was when i was like working with him all, i was like whoa why would i even heal with this guy like his damage gives him way better ult charge and i feel like you just play around tree of life like you just farm tree of life every fight and then play off of that and it's insane um i wouldn't even i wouldn't even use him for healing half the time uh but what i actually think is not talked about enough and is probably his biggest flaw is how fucking gigantic his hitboxes yeah it's insane like when i talked about spawn killing karku it was so easy you know <laughs> nothing against them like i well, literally started every amazing. fight with a shot like it was easy though like even if i didn't hit the headshot i popped storm arrow and just hit him twice and he just fell over it was, it was that was it like you couldn't he's just he's huge like mo all the support characters are very small right like other than maybe brig and bap i would say like even Zen, I guess, is like somewhat like he's got like kind of a kind of a big head, wow. but like yeah. yeah, he's he's just a little he's a little ball. But everybody else is pretty like small or skinny. He's just he's just chunky. He's bigger than May. Like he's bigger than Taller. all the all the DPS. He feels characters. bigger than Junker Queen, to be honest. He feels bigger than Junker yeah, Queen. Yeah, honestly, might be bigger yeah, than Junker yeah. Queen. He's huge. So honestly, like Don't give him uh, 250 health. Don't take it like that before anybody gets <laughs> <it. Don't do> it. <laughs> Good call, good call. Get ahead, getting ahead of the curve. I respect it. Um, I think you should have armor health, Sam. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, basically, I think that that's probably going to be his biggest detriment. Um, is people, you're right, poking him out, especially those sniper comps, because, like, he's just going to be so easy to hit. So I think it's going to be really infuriating um, uh, to play against the flowers all the time, because I saw uh, – SK and, and Eva, when they in the play test, they would like put it in front of the doorways and then step on it walking out. And then, boom, there's a 400 HP barrier, like May wall, you can't walk through. You have to break it. And you can put it on like the stairs sometimes. And they couldn't walk up the stairs because it like it jets out of it. So, like, you're trying to go up it and you couldn't like walk over it. You know what I mean? Like, God, that's going to be annoying. Like, the, the barrier potential of the flower is yeah. going to be very frustrating. Um, and probably a lot of its power. And also, yeah, I think I, I think that the Ryan stuff is definitely possible. Um, I can definitely see the ranked play style being 
you set up as Ryan in the back line and go full LH Cloudy and just go fucking pinning in and just try to go for a free pick. And if you hit the wall and you missed, they just you just like yoink you back out and you're free. Um, but in like more coordinated or like high high rank, I think Ram. I think Ram, you just like be just all in with him. And then like if you get in trouble, you just yoink him back over around the corner and you're like, you know, he pops his shield up and you sit there and you reset really fast. And you probably got to pick on the way out. So I don't know. I think I think it could be insane. Huh? Tree of Life with Ram is going to be crazy. Tree, tree of Life. Yeah. Apparently. Well, also, if you could just catch them in the tree, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Real. I guess, you know, real. if they're next to a corner, just trap them in the tree. What the fuck's he going to do? Like, you're just going to sit there. You'd be like the guy from uh, from God of War. Live in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess a lot of these might be iterated upon. Like, they may have to figure out the clunkiness of, like, well, you know, when you get put in the tree or, like, what blocks you wear. So. Yeah. I'm kind of memeing, but. Maybe no, no, no. Yeah. Out too, honestly. Yeah. It could like, I can't put out. a turret in the tree. What's the deal with that? Why is that not in Overwatch 2? <laughs> like, come on. So, Frito, what was your, you know, you've already given a lot of uh, interesting ideas about you You kind of feel like Lifey will slot himself into the meta, kind of just control from the high ground. But yeah, any, any other thoughts you want to add on on the character? Oh, yeah, plenty. Um, yeah, I think he changes the game in a way that's just so hard to understand until we're all in the thick of it. And it's just hard to imagine a world where you you get the positioning that he guarantees repeatedly in over the course of like multiple repositions in the game. It, it's hard for me to quantify, like, what is the value for that? Because on one hand, you look at his heel and you're like, oh, wow, this may be the worst heel in the game, pretty much, in some ways. But on the other hand, uh, how do you put a, a number value on teammate out of position, now in perfect positioning? And not only that, on the way there is Im immune, completely, invulnerable. That The grip is just is the real um, ability that I think matters the most. Because other supports have, like, escapability options. Like, Flower Petal... For him to escape or as a combo piece, it's like, okay, other supports have things that I feel are similar in principle. Like, you know, if you immortality field, your Cassidy's high noon on a corner, it's like, okay, you set that up. It's it, it's not like totally different other than the fact that you get a new angle. Yes, that's different. But the idea of, of comboing with a ability like that uh, still exists. The thing that's transformative, I think, is maintaining high ground. Now, as a... I, I've yet to release my review of the character, so some of this will be a, a repeat of that, but this is everything I want out of a support character, fundamentally, mechanics-wise, personally. I absolutely love characters like this. I've been begging for the devs to put MOBA-style abilities not in the hands of DPS characters, but instead in the hands of the support class. And now we see, okay, he's got his stats are low, and he's really easy to hit, but his potential super high. And so therefore, as a game sense player, there's a lot for you to do. And I actually think, surprisingly enough, I think he's going to be good at every level of play potentially because, uh, and I want to transition a little bit here, in this podcast specifically, in general sometimes, but in this one, we've done a pretty poor job talking about like the 99%. Like I enjoy listening to you guys go off on a high level meta and all this and in top 500 where Ryan is bad. Meanwhile, everywhere else, Ryan's amazing and the different like comps that exist. I love watching the pro play. Uh, I do often and I try to learn from that to teach everybody else as much as I can. But like, there's a fundamental aspect of Overwatch 2 that has been problematic in that a lot of average level support players, and I'm going to say just everyone, at 99%, okay, everyone, there's a, a like a, I need to pick Moira just because my team isn't syncing up or taking space appropriately or ever, like, flowing through the map, marking flanks, etc. There's this whole, like, inability to ever even set up as a lot of characters, which is one of the most frustrating aspects of playing support in in overwatch 2 whereas in overwatch 1 there's a lot more like extra beef in front of you to get where you need to be they're improving that with the stranded spawn system where you get to warp to the new spawn that's going to be another low-key buff to a lot of slow characters like anna and zen but life weaver as a concept solves a lot of those problems where he can survive himself and he also can say all right teammate that's stranded out somewhere because the dive happened and the the positioning got repositioned there's something like i can't remember hold on I, I bet sam remembers this there's something i said of like many podcasts ago where there's a character that like had extreme late fight value uh, I, I can't remember i wish i had this example i'm like getting yeah 10 i think i remember it. talking about he this talks like, about a support, like, yeah they so much they did so much that like their cooldowns like were just back up faster or something Is that what no mean? no i remember he was talking about like well if you have these two characters in the end of a fight and it's like straggle and i think like sigma and maybe bap or something where it's like you leave these two guys at the point, they'll they'll still keep themselves alive forever, unlike a Reinhardt and someone else who just 
they'll yeah, just fall over have, slowly. Yeah, go ahead, Frida. I got you. Right, right, right. So Overwatch 1 was a bit more about the full team. And you saw a lot more, everyone grouped up, big ults, big team wipes. That happened more often, I feel. Whereas in Overwatch 2, it's a bit more split up repositioning. So therefore, characters that either don't have mobility themselves or have bad matchups, let's say uh, now this is a bad matchup, but... Ryan flats in the ba enemy's backline against two healers where they just heal each other forever. That's a bad matchup. Well, now as uh, from the support category, you get to influence that and say, "Okay, buddy, you know you did good. You made space, and that was the only fight. Let's say flats could take. Like I, I, for whatever reason, I'm imagining this is on like a uh, the new control point. I feel this happens to me a lot. The Arctic Peninsula, the one that has like the bridge um, above the point, and then you fall down, you cap the point, and like there's like stairs to go up. Like this is like a life weaver dream, basically, where my tank maybe go makes a play, goes and makes a play, but is then stranded out in an irrelevant position. And now the more mobile team kind of wins or like sometimes just like the right heroes are alive later in the fight. Well, anyway, but point being life, Weaver gets to reposition that and say, and he actually makes a lot of these characters like Cassidy and, and Reinhardt, maybe not at a high level, but like at like a casual level for sure, way more playable because you go from the, <laughs> uh, effectively, this is the way I was explain it, uh, especially as a CSGO player, anyone who plays tech shooters and understands this. Characters that go for one and done plays are now way more viable. And that's where the end game of Life Weaver is going to be, where as a Reaper, for example, or a Cassidy doing your roll uh, magnate, <laughs> fan the hammer twice, right? And you're now you're out of cooldowns and you're in the enemy's backline. You got your like one and a half kills or whatever. Life Weaver turns that into now, oh, but now you're perfectly safe, way back on the high ground. And we we it's hard for me to express how strong that is. And, and Reaper's another example, right? Where maybe you can use Wraith to reload and tank a cooldown and like and stay in, but get saved, right? And and that that I don't know if is like utterly obnoxious or I think kind of fair because Life Weaver is so exploitable himself, other than perfectly saving himself with the pedal. Once you get on him at all, he just sort of falls over. And so he feels fair to me. He feels like a better design, in my opinion, for the support category. I love playing him because um, you don't actually get to shoot very often, I feel, as Life Weaver, because he's so easy to sh get shot at. So any duel you try to take, like you're just kind of going to lose. During the fight, yeah. Yeah, like if you peek your head out against anything, you just kind of lose. So while, yes, the Needler is better than healing, it's going to be hard to find opportunities, I think, to, to use the Needler a you lot anyway. Open. You need an opening. If you get an opening, you can start snowballing the fight, particularly with Ram. Like, that's why I think Ram is going to be so good, because he has his block and ways to survive on his own, which will open the door for the Needler to be used more. Um, but other than that, like, if it's like a Ryan, like, you're going to have to pump resources into him way more consistently. That's why BAP will be better with, like, Ryan, in my opinion. The characters we think are good are going to change pretty dramatically around this yeah. character. And 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 th this, this is basically to my core premise of why I'm not as afraid of uh, Brig, because... Keeping like a Zen alive is, or any high value, low mobility character like Cassidy, even though he got nerfed, it's like Cassidy's better in this version of the of the game, in my opinion, and or or even uh, Bastion potentially. These like high stat characters that lose all their power after a moment of of whatever it is, whatever their cooldown is, to save them again. Uh, that that cycle is going to be quite strong and then the i said earlier but i think the biggest downside is just the deployable creep <laughs> too many things on the map like it was, when you get like may sim life weaver on both sides that that's like unwatchable overwatch kind of because it's just way too much repositioning and things getting like walls and trees and this and that and so yeah i get a little worried about that affecting the gameplay yeah, I mean, he definitely does add a lot of visual clutter, and I, I do worry about two giant trees on point, just kind of pulsing at each other. Well, there's like petals flying here, there, so there is that like visual clutter element. Um, but I, I agree with Frida, where like obviously I also my background, I never played FPSs before or watch. It was it was MOBAs and and kind of RTSs and stuff. So as a, as a Dota player, like this is exactly the kind of like mechanics that I've I would have loved to see in Overwatch for a long time. I kind of. I remember early on in Overwatch when, like, you know, I was still relatively new. I was like, you know, it's Roadhog Hook. It should be like a Roadhog Hook for like an ally. Like, what about that? And this is kind of what we eventually got now, where it's like we got the life grip. And obviously, there's a lot of concerns about griefing your teammates. So not even actively griefing them, but accidentally griefing them, right? Where it's like, because this this happened to me a little bit uh, when we were playing in the Pugs. I was playing Junk Queen, and we had, I had Fitzy as my life. We were not to put him on blast, but like a couple times I got yoinked because Fitzy was like. 
come fight the thing I'm fighting, right? Like, I'd be fighting something else. And, like, I remember one moment where I'm, like, about to axe this guy and kill him. And, if like, I just get yoinked over. And I was like, oh. And Fitzy's like, sorry, there's a ball on me. And I, I needed help. And I was like, oh, okay. And I think that it will require, like, a community sentiment shift of, of like, assuming good intent from, like, your teammate, right? Because, like, this is another very common MOBA thing where... Like, this, this ability would not bat an eye in a MOBA game because, like, you have so many abilities like this. Like, again, as, as, like, a Dota player, there's, like, Vengeful Spirit where you can swap your position with a teammate's position. So, like, if you could be inting and you could potentially swap your teammate into the inting position and they die, you get away. Or you have, like, Tiny who can throw, literally throw teammates to an enemy and it does damage to them as well. So, like, there's lots of, like, these abilities where, like, or, like, there's a character that can sleep someone and it can be your own teammate. So, like, there's lots of potential for, like, you know, trolling, but at the end of the day, you, like, you know, you, one out of ten times, you'll get trolled by it. But you got to assume the nine out of ten times of, like, their intention was was good. They were trying to do something. And also as a tank and stuff, like, I, I got to assume that my support has a better picture of the fight than I do, right? Like, you may, you may think your teammates are all idiots, and they probably are, but you got to, like, assume that, like, the intent was there for them to save. So I don't, I, I'm not particular personally too worried about like, well, I'm going to get dragged around. I guess the one solution I would have is like, you know, people were like, this should be a confirm to accept option. I think they could do the opposite. You could do a press to break the life grip option if you wanted to. Like, so when you get life well, movement grip, does. Yeah. Movement yeah, I know. But what if you do don't have though, a but... movement? Yeah. But what if you don't have a movement? Yeah. Right. So like if you could just, they could be like a press F to break the life grip option. Right. Like if you feel like you're being pulled and you really don't want to. Interact maybe. Yeah, that's yeah. what. Yeah, yeah, just the interact key would break it. Yeah, that's actually way better than F to accept. That's way better. Didn't they say you're allowed to use movement abilities during it? So maybe you can yeah, like yeah, 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 out of it. Yeah, but yeah, what I'm saying can. is not every Except character. What could if you're Ryan with no charge? You, yeah. What, you char what happens if you start getting pulled and you charge out of it? Like the ultimate. No. Like, <laughs> no. I'm let me go. Going. Let me no, go. Don't take me. <laughs> <laughs> not right Wait, now. What happens if you get? What happens if you get pulled while you're charging? Wait a minute. You do get pulled back. Oh, that's oh, man. At the mo yeah, I think the interact one is kind of the the solution here, in my opinion, because yeah. that's a button nobody presses unless they want to, you know. Yes, yeah, so unless you're trying to thing. do something specific. Um, unless you have some wacky key binds, in which case you need to get help anyway. Because if, you, if you're <laughs> using that F key, like no, 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 no. That's unless that's your emote key. That's respectable. I'm doing push up, guys. By the way, that is actually my melee. Just saying, yeah, it is. Wow. People from the Northeast, man. What are you going to do? <laughs> like, I, I have an explanation point. if you want to hear it. But I yeah. Can explain. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, where's this going to go? Let's hear it. Because right. I was a console gamer and I swapped over, I, I used to really have a bad tendency to put a bunch of buttons on my mouse because it was way easier to have a bunch of mouse buttons. But then I realized over time that I was kind of handicapping myself doing that. But one thing I never broke is that reload is on my mouse. So R is my, is my interact and F is my melee. There's no way you play FPS games. Can we just, let's just let's just continue. Let's, let's skip Overwatch over is this. my Overwatch is my first PC FPS. Got to remember. What's the, wait, yeah, what's, the, what's the date today? Oh, it's it, flat. You got the dates wrong. Today's April seventh, not the first. <laughs> <laughs> Get it together. Jeez. Yeah, please. I don't know. I don't know what he's cooking. <laughs> I don't know who like, let him I've cook. Never heard that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> To, to life oh, weaver, God. yeah, I, I, I think he's really fun. I think that I think it's fun as well that he's, he's, he is that kind of support that doesn't necessarily, he's not gonna one v five people, uh. But I think there's a lot of like I think the the pull is perhaps the most visceral any support player will ever get of feeling like yeah man I'm I'm I popped off like I I really saved my teammate without like killing five people. Everybody like when you pull someone out of danger, like everybody knows it. Which also is a downside. Was like when you fuck up, everyone knows it. But when you're like, <laughs> there's someone who's like low HP and you pull them back, everyone in the lobby is like, God damn it, that life we were just saved him. And I feel like it's much more fair than a Suzu, where again, Suzu's impact is just the high end of it is so much higher. Where it's like fucking five people intangible. It has like accidental effects, right? Where it's like you intangible yeah, yeah, someone yeah, who yeah. didn't mean to get like you can you get kills with it. Unironically. You can get kills like, with I know I died got, to it. I got fucking bonked off to it while I was Junker Queen ulting. So I, I know what that fucking feels like. So but I so I feel like it's very controlled. I feel like it has that like early Overwatch one element of like it's a single target, it's twenty seconds. Like it's it's very controlled what its impact is. So like I think it's like I think it'd be a lot of fun. I think support players who again they, they've kind of said at length that they wanted this to be a support who doesn't need to aim. So I think that like a lot of players who aren't mechanically gifted will look at this and be like, yes, this is a character I can still control the fight with without necessarily, like, 
completely distorting the entire nature of it or without like having to go frag out for myself. So I, I forgot the griefing component in my little spiel about Life Weaver. Can mm -hmm. I comment on that? Yeah, yeah. I know Flash probably is winning to go as well more. Uh, but so I, I feel like there's a lot of people who haven't played the character at all or much uh, that are really worried about griefing. For me, the, with Life Weaver, I get more frustrated when they don't know how to set something up, basically, where you're not really the bigger problem to me usually is like they don't manipulate the fight in a positive way. They just sort of like, they're, typically this is like a, a DPS player. Like they can go on Ana and just hit shots and just sit in the back line. But to, in order to really use this character, you've got to manipulate the fight. And uh, even a bad life grip, as long as it doesn't send you off the map, because you're invulnerable, it doesn't it doesn't tilt me anyway. The characters that it will tilt, in, and it's funny that they say like, well, you can save your Genji, but as a... Uh, SV pointed out, I think the, the characters that you never want a life grip or even probably even play life, life Weaver with are Junker Queen and Genji, because, in my opinion, because those are characters that kind of need to keep hitting their abilities and want to snowball the fight, right? Like, if you whiff your axe as Queen, you're like not a character. That's all her power. So if you grip the axe pretty much at any point and she doesn't land that, it's like you you as the queen are, are like, man, I wish you just let me die because like like or at least try, right? Like like you're better to throw something at her that helps her stay in the fight because she wants to keep getting axe. Whereas uh, and then Genji as well wants dash resets behind them. And and there's certain characters I feel that if you life grip them away from the fight so much, they're just all of a sudden useless. And I think like Brig kind of feels like one of them. Like in theory, uh, she gets inspired. You pull her back. Back, now she's safe but it's like she kind of just wants to maintain the position she's in and not really vacate it whereas i think there's like better options that are more one and done style that like get a full reset off the grip so anyway like the, because you're invulnerable it, it it's like sp sort of just like a eh, on most characters plus, other than plus, those, those specific ones to me plus it's one character every 20 seconds so like the the, the impact of like getting yeah. griefed is like so unlikely i think i think especially when you get to people who are competent like yeah, you're, you're more you're... likely is fighting out of sync. I, I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt. It's just like this is my my oh, yeah. like uh my my, my point, point about this for the for the act. I think this is a net positive for fighting in sync for the general player base of the game. So I spoke about it in terms of like the late fight repositioning benefit, but more often than not, you're quote losing agency in ranked. It, not, the 99 percent again we're, we're not all playing with flats okay because our tank goes in too deep right it, like i had a game uh, with a doom fist one trick who's always out of voice i recognize this guy i've uh i've played with him many times avoid him every time and he just goes in and uses his cooldowns alone and and sometimes that works that's the thing sometimes you get your punch or you get your gauntlet and then you kill the whole team and you're like oh i'm amazing but other times they counter you and then your team just doesn't have a tank the entire game that happens, right? And supports have no way to deal with that until now, where they say, well, oh, good job, Doomfist. Like, now you're forced to reset with me. So on some uh, cases, like SV's example with Queen, maybe that's like a, oh, I'm not a character now. But in other cases, it, like, stabilizes the game. And I, I feel it's a net benefit it has, it has to, to the trolling. Yeah, I think there's... Yeah. You first. I was just gonna say, like, it's again, it's a, a character that has certain things that it's good with, certain things that it's not, and like, you it allows for more diversity of picks that like and comps that can synergize well together. That's all. You had. So I actually, I'm, I kind of agree with you, Frito. Um, I don't. So I know that they put out a tweet to like Stylos's tweet that like they made like the pull off the map harder. Uh, I'm pretty sure when I recorded mine, it was after the patch, so it's still like very doable on certain maps, like well. Um, but that's not actually what I'm more afraid of for like the 99%. The 99%, I read more comments than anything about this. And I don't, you know, I don't read my, I don't read like TikTok comments that often, but the few times I have, it's like, there's people, the psychological aspect of people like probably think that someone's trolling. So like if they go into a fight and they're trying to go in and somebody mistimes a pull or thinks they're in trouble and pulls them out and they're not actively griefing they were trying to be helpful that person on the opposite side goes wow well, this guy's fucking trolling my game playing the stupid character pulling me out of the fight i'm throwing this game right like i have read so many so many comments of people say that if somebody pulls me out of a fight i'm throwing like, like I, I, I can't even tell you. It's all if you go to any Life Weaver TikToks right now, it's always the number one most liked comment without fail across the board. I bet if I went to my YouTube chat, my YouTube stuff, and went down a little bit, I bet I could find one. I bet I could find bunches. <laughs> so, 
not only are we the griefing of you know jumping off the map and pulling them with you, but I wonder how many people one will just think that someone's griefing them, or two, assume that they're just awful and that they're griefing them not on purpose but because they suck. So why am I going to play with this person because they're they're literally making my experience shit? And so then they actively go off on their own and start trolling because that's a second part of the aspect. We can all talk about the life weaver trolling people, but what about the opposite side? That person who gets pulled away and then they get pissed and they're like, nah, fuck this, I'm out. Like, yeah. I, I think there's there's so many aspects. And you're right, to that 99%, though, they don't have the perfect world we do. Of course, we're gonna as a streamer, you're gonna have different, you're gonna have a very different time. Like, I'll probably get pulled off the map many, many times. But like the average GM player or top 500 player, probably not. They'll probably have really good coordination, they'll have good synergies, they'll set up plays, they'll try to make some things work. Not all the time. But it will have a much better chance than the gold players. But I think it's also a much better chance that the gold players get pulled out of a fight on Reinhardt when it looks like they were going to get a kill and they got yoinked that kill away from them that they explode and go, what the fuck? Why did you pull me out, you fuck? <laughs> and then just got go really crazy. Scared. Like, I actually think that side of the psychological aspect is going to be just as impactful as the the Instalock wife wife weaver life weaver and jumping off the map. I think they're going to be just as prominent, both of them. Real real.com slash true. I I think that's true, but also fuck those people. Uh, like I I yeah, I, I but think that's that like ninety nine percent. I know I know people. That's yeah, realistic ahead, though. That's it realistic, is realistic. Though. I, it is realistic, but I do think we have to shift our approach. Like we we got we. That's why I don't talk. We about can't. <laughs> We can't have nice things, right? Like we, we're gonna, like we're gonna have to add like fun things in the game. Okay, sometimes I can be griefed, but like uh, get good, like adapt to it. You have to always be careful about that. You have to always be careful about that. This is the first time your own teammate, and I think to be fair as well, if the, you add the ability to break it on interact, it's a different story. But right now, that comes alive without that ability. It's yes. not gonna go well. It is just again. Not yeah, go I well. I think the best solution is just break, like press button to break it. Like because I think eventually you get used to that. Like oh shit, I'm about to get life. You can you're react. You're not controlling with... your own game, and there's nothing you could do. Yes. About it. Yes. Like that's like if you're getting hog cooked. At least that's the enemy. You can shoot them. <laughs> like you can use your ability. You can't use your abilities on your teammate, right? So I get they, they just have to be interactable, and I think that solves a lot of the problems with it. But then, yes. even then, though, right? Like, yeah. But that's, so, yeah. what you're saying, right? Like, you you know what I'm gonna say, probably, is if you're someone who can deny the life weaver pull, what happens in those games where you have the idiot silver Reinhardt player who only plays? He's a silver always. His teammates terrible. He's got TikTok Moiras. You know, can't win a game because his teammates are terrible. <laughs> that it's is better, the 99 it's, it's, it's percent of though. people. It's it's better like, that there's at least the interaction because if he's what? breaking it, then he's just trolling, right? Well, exactly. That's but then, that's that's as the life weaver troll. player, though, as the life weaver player, you're playing a character who half your kit is literally useless because that player will not accept you to be able to play the game. So then, life weaver feels like shit. But so it's like, like no, but but teammate. it's no. But how's that any different to like if you're a Kiriko player and like you or like your bat player and you emo the Ryan, he just walks out of it. Like that's he, so he, much different, though. Like as soon as you know. you interact with them. If you're if you're talking about Baptiste, yeah, they can walk out of it. Like, of it's course not, they can perfect, walk out that's of it. The best, that's the best. That is way do. different, though. It's that the, is it's 100 different. Do. Oh yeah, it, it is. It is. Yeah, but what I'm do, saying is, sure, what I'm but... saying is, if that Ryan is trolling, he's gonna troll your. He's gonna like but into your game trolling. regardless. He's not intentionally trolling. He well, he's gonna into your game regardless. Yeah, he's gonna int regardless. So whether you're pulling him or not, like that's that's he's no. He's not inting. He's not being rank elitist. <laughs> but, but that's if we want to talk about the 99 percent, that's the 99 percent. that's what people are going to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis yeah. they're going to have their teammates that go too far and 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 that's people outside of our content bubble if you watch twitch streams yeah. you are a hardcore overwatch fan that's fact like I if mean, you watch even if you watch youtube videos you're probably on the more hardcore side most casual players don't watch any content so yeah, they're but, not you're uh, not even in a realm uh, but here's what I'm saying, like, I, so I've been doing, again, I keep doing these hero learning journeys. i just been climbing on Lucio, started in gold, and we, the count is now Master 5. People fucking literally calling me the N-word afk my games because I pick Lucio. So, like, I get what you're saying right. about <laughs> what Life Weaver is doing is the most extreme example of potentially influencing your team. But, like, the number of games I get people just fucking tossing the game because they don't like the hero I picked anyways already it's, on the existing character is already there. This is there. Overwatch. That's yeah, it's, like, get already worse. there. No, it's, it can't get Man. much worse. Like, it's already tossing your game. <laughs> it will like, how much more? get worse. Nah, I think it's overblown. I think people are, like, overselling the, like, 
I think we're almost in danger of creating the monster we're worried about, where we're like, oh man, it's gonna be so I bad agree. to get pulled. Where it's gonna be so bad. It's just one fucking pull every 20 seconds on one character in your team that maybe pulls you out of position from a kill you might have gotten. A lot of times makes you invulnerable, so you definitely can't die. Yes. So like, yes, it's I, like I at agree. worst, at worst, you maybe don't get a kill you were about to get, or maybe occasionally, yeah, you'll remember the one time you're about to pop off and the life we were pulled you off from your pop off moment. But like, you're saying come a on, national GM player, not a goal player. No, I mean, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm in these goal lobbies and the guys, the guy, flats. I was on <laughs> Li Jiang Tower Control Center. We're running Orisa, yeah. and the guy's flaming me for paying Lucio. He says I Lucio know, is a bad pick on Control Center with fucking Orisa May. And he's saying I should go in mercy, smart, dude. No, but what I'm saying is they will toss the game anyways because they're in fucking. They goals. don't know anything. So anyway. you just GG go, go next. You just GG go next anyways because that guy would toss your game no matter what. Like it, it's not a fundamental difference of experience. Is what I'm saying. It's maybe a more extreme, visceral example, but the experience is the same. That guy's a moron who will int your game regardless. My, my opinion is you almost never want to break it anyway. Like why? Why do you want to break an immortality? ability like like generally like that so I, I also think like the visuals of this isn't as disorienting as you might imagine it, it almost feels like you're being like hugged by the thing and you just sort of like whoop, like float back it, it it's not disorienting at all even when it's really long distances like the the range of it is absolutely insane so nine times out of ten i feel you're gonna be like all right it's fine and and there's we already described the really tilting examples where there are horrible targets for it but for the most part it's like not dying is just not, I don't know. I, I don't know. Most of the time, the tanks are complaining that they didn't get healed enough, right? So at least allowing them to not die, I feel they care more about dying than they do about not dying and being repositioned. I, I, yeah, I think this is a bit of a phantom, as SV said. Like, we're creating oh. it. Off we'll of an imaginary out. scenario. We'll yeah, I, guess. I think we'll we can track out. this. I think we can track this. My my standpoint is it'll only improve all the things we're worried about. It's only Here. better than Here's than we'll than worse. Here's what we'll do. I'll go undercover in gold. <laughs> <laughs> Just start trolling people with life grip. <laughs> Just see how well, they I react. Mean, I'll only use it in the right situations, right? Because I feel like I'll be able to tell. And then I'm going to record all the reactions of the gold tanks and see how mad they get. If they get mad, well, then I, I will. I will literally be them. doing that myself, actually, because I'm going to be doing like seven days of Life Weaver. So I'll I'll, I'll report back after playing <laughs> yeah. Life Weaver for a week <laughs> to see how people respond to me pulling them. And I mean, the thing is, though, this is what I'm saying is like I'm already getting called racial slurs for playing Lucio. So it's like, how much worse could it get if I pull a guy and I, like he yeah. thinks I pulled him wrong, but I know I pulled him right. So like, I don't give a shit, you know? Listen, when you flame people like that back, they don't know what to do. You just got to hit them harder. <laughs> no, anyways, 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 really anyways. Of a Sam going crazy on someone in Overwatch One. I was losing it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. With people like that, they don't expect a response because they're trying to be edgy. If you hit them with some game facts and like they, they just don't know how to respond, but you gotta with people like that, you just gotta match their energy and just go a little bit. Well, that's what I do. It doesn't always work. All right, I, I mean, we've, we've kind of uh, let's quickly run through. Then we've been talking for a while, but let's quickly run through more of the changes so Freed already talked about the stranded spawn here's what we'll do we'll, we'll speed through some of the minor stuff just go yay if you want me to like pause on that little thing so stranded spawn any any sort of any additions we want to make on it that was really surprising to see for me the reaction Mod or people or the the change what do you what do you mean SBB? like the, like, the wait, stranded wait, wait, wait. Yeah, flat says what's surprising you about the stranded spawn Oh, just the, like I never would have expected that to happen in the game. Yeah, it seems good no. though. Seems like a good quality of life. Well, it, it's almost a direct fix to the Gibraltar problem that was yeah. kind yeah. of it's talked about Gibraltar for years. Problem, the Gibraltar yeah, problem, the Gibraltar incident. Literally, it, I, I did it on Gibraltar. Literally, I used yeah. it on Gibraltar. Yeah, yeah. Uh, That's the worst map for it. Yeah. Yes. It's. It depends on where you stand, I think, and in like how you view Overwatch. I like chasing kills on that map in particular because it, it makes your first, like, if you're trying to attack second, first, like, fight, it is abysmal rotation. It is abysmal. It's abysmal to make that rotation. So getting those staggers can oftentimes save you a lot. But, again, this is, a, like, very high-level problem. Like, it seems like this is just a change to make, like, the game easier for lower SR players. Yes. Yes. I think for I, the majority of... Heading, so... Yep. Again, well, I, even I, on the competitive level as well, like if you think about like Gibraltar, uh, we watch it in Owl or something. It's like when the cap comes through on where certain people spawn of the defense matters so much to whether you can then dive those extra spawners in the streets phase and the map control advantage of the ship 
phase is so strong on whoever gets to set up there. It's sort of like a free win on whoever kind of gets lucky yes. on that spawn. However, I will say that now on the other hand, so it fixes that then all of a sudden. So your Zen can use the interact key. I personally, I forgot to use it. I don't think I used it once because I There's forgot no it. Was but, but yeah, it doesn't come up and say, Hey, do this. Like I, I didn't realize actually, but if you, I guess if you hit interact, you zoom to the next spawn. I'm worried if that like what the ramifications are on other maps that aren't Gibraltar. Cause that's the extreme example of not only is it easy for it to happen, but the map advantage is so disproportionate that you would ask the devs to fix it so that's why it exists but what happens on the other maps where i i don't know it's hard for me to imagine the ramifications but it, it might end up making some strats better than you think and and again it's like another thing that makes slower characters feel more comfortable in overwatch 2 which might be a good thing but also might change the balance significantly i also think the st staggered spawn while while a current valuable tactic is also like an unintended tactic like you 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 know your team died halfway through while you were respawning the point flips like what the fuck do you do right it's like it's not really like a tactical mistake on your end to spawn at the wrong time so like why are you getting punished and staggered and losing an entire point potentially because the timing of the spawns went bad for you right so i think it's like it is a current tactic but it feels like an unintentional tactic that we could just go away with Okay, uh, let's move on. Uh, matchmaking. I mean, I, I roll my eyes every time we just say matchmaking will be better. I I'll just move on from that. But oh, again, yeah, just, we'll <laughs> just, give, a, flip. just give a yeah, shout we'll if you see. want to stop we'll on anything. See. Yeah, we'll see. It's 25 on leaderboard. That seems fine. Comparative lever changes a little bit harsher. Seems fine. Yeah, rip uh, my accounts, by the way. No more dodging circuit. I got two permadeath <laughs> for, for this season. Uh, can we oh. just say no more map pools? Like, Well, thank we'll, God. We'll, God. We'll big buff, that. big we'll buff, big that. buff. Uh, competitive nerf, points. <laughs> competitive points seems good. I think ultimately yeah. GMs care the least about competitive points. I think so. Having bronze players get more, I think, makes sense. Why did they nerf the GM and masters though? Like, I feel like that's just. Wait, they nerfed those? Yeah, they I'm brought it down. To yeah, a little time. bit. I'm, so yeah, they, they, I'm, so like, I'm close, totally cool but... with like pumping it up for everybody, but like, why did why did we why get did we get nerfed? We're already why getting we screwed get by the, the system. We can't play with our friends. At least give me the comp points. Damn. It, Come on, fellas! You, you know got what? more points than you ever need. You got more points no, than you ever need. No gun! I don't. The anti GM slander is going too this far. Is, this, this is it. Nah, I'm, All right. I'm too away. I'm too away. I can't keep up with the. <laughs> Okay, well, uh, I mean, try to think of this you, from the opposite point of view, though. Like, you're too away from getting it. Now, imagine if you've been bronze for six years, just like hacking away. It's the inflation, it's the inflation. The more people that have gold gold guns, the less, uh, you know, the less valuable they become. So, they gotta, they gotta yeah, ration it. How many other people have yeah, it? I just new get stuff anyway. The game. I'm just new to stuff anyway. Plus, would be awesome. That's true. Maybe, it, it, you know, they want to restrict how many points you have in the future if they add different competitive points, so you can't just immediately farm them oh, all. No. Oh, no. Oh, or different, like, uh, rewards. I just got the Mercy Staff, too. Uh, okay, competitive changes. This one is great. I'm glad we no longer have, like, the top 500 open queue challenger sitting with the diamond yep. icon, Good. actually. Good change. Yep. Uh, <laughs> compared to match rank. So showing the rank at the start of the lobby. That's a good change as well, I think. Nice. A good reaver. It's only the lobby though. It's not individual. No, it's... but at least we get some vague idea of what lobby you're in, which is better yeah. than where we were. Is, is I think the hilarious the thing. Display right now is, there, is it is it like a technological issue? Or they just don't. No, they don't want to show it. it. They don't want to. I think what's hilarious is that over time we're gonna eventually create systems that just bring it back to what Overwatch One was. But we're slowly <laughs> like sure. we're slowly like just showing like more and more details. Like you can see your win loss percentage. You can see what percentage of the skill tier division you're in. You can see the yep. lobby SR. It's like eventually we'll just have the number and we'll just get we'll be gaslit into thinking that it's a different way of showing the number. Like we're eventually it's getting the whole, Homer Simpson going into the bush and coming back out again. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> True. Uh, yeah, so there's competitive updates. Okay, let's get to the balance then. Tank, Reinhardt, armor health reduced from 200 to 250, base health increased from 175 to 200. R developer comments, Reinhardt has been overperforming after the recent increases to his offensive capabilities. Those changes have been playing well, so to adjust his overall power, we're reducing his overall health through this armor reduction. Falats, thoughts? If that, in high level, in, in like top of energy, I'm that character's dead. It'll be back to Zarya if it's, uh, Rush map or Ramatra. However, for the 99%, very yeah. oppressive. So I don't know what they do about this. Hero bands, I think, there you go. I think, uh, bingo card. Bingo card. Yeah, now we because bingo. The, gap, the gap between the performance of... And here's the funny thing. Like, in the Pro-Am, there's a lot of teams that were really trying to play Ryan, but it's like... 
it seemed obvious to everybody spectating that Ram was just better because like the what you can do late in the fight, it's like Ryan's got some opportunities for value, but it's just not enough. Not not enough long enough. It's brawl sig. That's all that cooldown comes back way faster, right? Like come the third cooldown chain, Ryan's can't do anything, but yeah. Ram has his ult again. You burn too many resources Ram's getting there. there. Yeah. I, I think the thought process with this though is that alternatively, what's gonna happen at the 99% is that you'll get those Rhines. It's the opposite scenario from what Flats was describing. Like, not liking getting pulled. It's like, I feel like there's every gold Rhine knows how to at least, like, swing on the enemy, right? And get a uh, kill, right? What's wow. going to happen if he has too much stats is that Lifeweaver can save him way too easily. And, and Lifeweaver just saves any inter-type uh, character, to be honest. So I think it's also because Lifeweaver is being added, is my assumption, not just because Rhine is uh, overperforming at the 99%. Same with Cassidy, I, same thing. I think if, if I was to change it, I think I would change his shield HP, not his real HP. Because here's what I've, again, in my safari in, in the metal ranks and, and, and gold and stuff, <laughs> what I find is that the problem is it's is, is really hard to punish Ryan for all the reasons that he gets punished at the highest elo. Like, basically, no one knows how to kite, firstly. So, like, when the Reinhardt walks on them, they just stand there and then, like, shock Pikachu face that the Reinhardt is slamming them in the face. Right? They're like, huh? This big guy's here? Like, yeah, could just walk backwards and, you know, then he's not there. But they don't. B, they don't target focus. So even there's a giant rectangle, they don't break the shield. So as he slowly walk, and it is slow. I promise you there's a very slow walk where the Reinhardt will like, he'll go a little bit forwards and he stops and he just stands there. Like no point in the open, just stand there. No Lucio, there for remember. Remember, you can no, play, Lucio, play Lucio. Don't play Lucio, so play like Mercy. Lucio. Lucio. Play Lucio, yeah. play Mercy if you want to help me. If, uh, and I'm Ryan, don't play Lucio. So he'll just stand there for a while. His shield will lose like four, 500 HP, but it's still a chunky ass HP. So he'll keep going further, 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 then he'll get there. And again, people are like, oh shit, I, uh, we didn't break his shield. And then no one plays Zen either. So like, he's never discorded, so he doesn't die, right? So like, for all the reasons that Reinhardt is shite at the highest elo, he's just oppressive as fuck in the lower elos and like the metal ranks. So I think they should just tone down his shield HP because I think a good Reinhardt knows how to manage his shield. The shit gold Reinhardts will just like, they, they abuse the like ridiculous amount of shields to like, comp cap compensate for his for their indecision and their inability to actually understand how to rotate so they don't get to just walk up for free but nerfing his hp punishes every reinhardt player like every single reinhardt player now is weaker because they have less hp so that's my two takes but two cents makes the, the ram gap even more though in my opinion I, either way because pummel cleaves the shield you, so you, you can buff like a different aspect but i think in terms of like solving the middle rank boost. reinhardt you want Ryan's speed boost it's 20 percent you but on can. shift, it gives an aura. It gives an aura to the oh team. Less shield, so you have to make decisions faster. It's not like we need another creator uh, pass. It doesn't have to be an all the time type of thing. There has to be something that triggers it, either like a cooldown well, or uh, like a pin. Like after pin, yet he's twenty percent faster for for two seconds or three seconds. Something that gets gets him onto targets kind of cool. a little bit quicker would be something that actually lets the character capitalize on his HP pool in his armor pool instead of just sitting there and just being a shield bot. Because right now, even in high, in ranked high level play, I'm basically a, uh, an ult charge bot, like half the time. And it like, remember Zarya meta back in Overwatch in the season one, how it was basically two Titan Zarya's waiting for someone to get too close and then they killed them. I do the same thing on Ryan, but with less range. You just wait till someone gets too stupid and gets too close. That would give me the ability to get onto targets and, and eliminate them without standing there and waiting all day long on shield. Yeah. <sighs> At some I mean, point, I might, I might try to force a conversation about the philosophy of design of heroes in Overwatch 2 moving forward, because I, I don't know if there's any getting away from the, the lack of complexity problem that characters have. So basically yeah. what Flats is saying is like, make him like Ram and have an extra ability somehow, or, or like Junker Queen or, or whatever. And uh, he's not wrong. It's just like, also, what does that do for the rest of players who are already struggling? And I, I don't know. I think there's just some characters that are more simple, that are easier to play, that the 99% is always going to have an easier time with. And at the higher levels where they understand the fundamentals of a lot of the, you know, Zen as a concept, like Zen exists and, and play around a Zen and how easy that is. It's, it's like the gap between the balancing is just, I don't know. It feels like it's getting worse, not not better over time of the gap of the, the different levels of play and what they is understand. He, is Reinhardt now the Moira of tanks? The comfort pick? Yeah, that's, that is exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, actually, yes. good point. That's actually a good point. I feel like that's a little disrespectful to Reinhardt. 
definitely I mean, very I, disrespectful. I mean, it is. I, but skill, again, but. coming as an original Reinhardt player, but like he's just like, what do you do? It's this more a problem like uh, this hero just heals and damages, so like there's no utility. It's like Reinhardt's like, I have shield, I have swing, like it's one or the other. You know, like it's not hey, Ramatra, it's not Sigma I mean, where you, you do eight pin. things. I mean, I've seen some yeah. Ryan's pin. I mean. Yeah, but pin is just like the damage, but now you can't even protect yourself, yeah. right? So it's like. Yeah, yeah, what was that? Yeah. And yeah, they have more than 225 HP. Like, you know, man, how you're about not yeah, let's, let's just give Ryan a Berserker passive. Every kill I was thinking that as well. Speed. I was thinking that, well, like, well, maybe the well, lower not shield. not about the damage and speed, but, like, it'd be cool. <laughs> In resets. Got, speed, at least, <laughs> maybe. Not damage. Speed, oh, yeah, God. like, if it's the you lower know, his shield Ryan gets. needs no more damage. Like, I say, I, no. I, whenever yeah. I explain to people the problem is, like, let's say we designed a very simple game where you had, like, it was people. an open field where there's no cover, and you could pick four characters, like a sniper, uh, a melee character, uh, 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 someone with a pistol and, like, a rifleman. If you have a sniper versus the melee character... You don't buff the amount of damage the melee character does. You buff how much damage he can take so he can make it there and fight the sniper character. If you make the knife do more damage, that doesn't work because he dies before he gets there. Ryan needs no more damage at this point. None. So, so. Something, something funny. That, take this back to my old Minecraft days. There was an infamous kit that was as broken as Brig called Broken Brute. And the, the, like, there was a passive ability called Bloodlust, um, and every kill you got, you healed two and a half hearts in Minecraft, got increased damage and up to sixty percent movement speed after the third kill, and it lasted for like twenty seconds. And like that was like my first YouTube video I've ever made where I just went off about Broken Brute, and like an ability like Bloodlust, at least in PVE, right? For Reinhardt would be imagine how fun that would be, just be like zipping around the map as Reinhardt, just like you have to wear that one skin though. What's the what's the uh, the, the skin that looks like it's Daedric armor from Skyrim, from like way Blood back Heart? in the day. Bloodheart is that the one that's yeah. got like the the, the 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 orange like reddish? You know, you know. What I'm it's talking the other about. version, which is Blackheart. It's like the same color. It's like different coloring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That skin, that skin. You have to have that skin on though for it to work. It's like the camo soldier skin. It's just a little pay to win, pay to win, pay to win. Real. Pay to win. Okay, <laughs> uh, let's go on then to Sigma accretion impact damage reduced from sixty to forty, knockdown duration increased. Like Roadhog's Chain Hook, Sigma's Accretion and Primary Fire combo can be highly lethal and feel like a guaranteed kill against 200 health targets. We're reducing the damage slightly to require an additional volley of Primary Fire Bar, also increasing the stun duration to provide allies with more opportunity to follow up on successful impact. Frito, I'm going to take it to you on this one first. Whoops, tabbed out at the wrong time. Um, somewhat fair. Sig's really, really strong. I think um, a bit biased, maybe, based on the map pool, though. So it's a, I think sometimes when that's the case, you, it's better to leave a character alone than nerf them on a map pool when, or from the previous map pools when we're not going to have them anymore. So yeah, that, that's sort of how I feel. I don't mind Sig not being able to one shot as much. Um, I don't know. He, he's a pretty strong character, but also counterable because he doesn't have mobility. I wonder how that affects into my like whole life weaver theory though um about how he changes all that like i i don't think i we did anybody play sig at any point in the pugs when i grinded the <laughs> no. pugs I, I don't even remember seeing him to be honest so uh, yeah i don't have strong opinions um a little wait and see on this patch note flat sam dumb okay. change really dumb change the fact they cited it as the same as Roadhog is laughable. Yeah. There's no I way agree. you can compare Sigma Rock left click follow up to a fucking hook. You can literally you, you can snatch babies out of their crib from halfway across the map <laughs> and you compare that to the same thing as hitting them with a rock. Then they fall. So if they're like up on high ground or somewhere, you have to follow the arc of them falling and then hit the left click too. Where where it actually matters was DPS or supports got really close, like a Zen who's just like I'm playing Zen. I've never died before. So they get up close and just try to start kicking you and then you just rock him and left click him and send him back to the shadow realm where he belongs. It's like, that's where rock was really scary and like valuable. Like it's actually laughable that he got, he got nerfed with that. And I'm not even a SIG player, but Frito's hundred percent right. It's off his map pool. Like you play Sigma on like Cirque Royale, you play him on Junkertown. You, this is the map pool Havana. This is the map pool for Sigma. So now we're going to go to a non Sigma map pool. And he's not going to be as good. I would say he was the most balanced tank in the game. And it's like, because Sigma was the most balanced tank in the game, you now kind of like lowered everybody a little bit more. I feel like Sigma was almost the gold standard of what is a map-based strong tank. I agree I, 100%. I agree with that statement. 
Um, I, I, I'm not okay. I'm not torn in part that he loses his one shot combo. I think he's still gonna be really, really strong. Um, so like in terms of like how it affects the game and where he's played, it won't. I think he'll still get picked. It's just he won't be able to do as much in those situations. So for a tank player, I think it's justified to be upset about that. Um, but I still think the hero is really strong. So I. I, I think it is silly though to compare it to Roadhog. I don't think it's in the same realm whatsoever. I think that's I don't think that's I, comparable at all. Yeah, I I think um, I think target is... can still be healed potentially. Yes, whereas yes. A so much. pull you away. It's harder to There's get so the much. Combo. It's way harder. There's so much. Also, the the rock anime like un, the the whole key point I think is that this Roadhog hook. He's in your face and then he presses hook and it's like the reaction time is like so much shorter to dodge the hook versus the rock where he fucking summons the earth and he takes 10 hours to be like I'm rocking you now I'm building the rock and then he and, throws and the, the rock going on in the and it moves too. slowly his, his, yeah his like melody. it's like if you can't see that rock coming like I don't know what to tell you dude like I don't know what to tell you right whereas Roadhog peaks corner hooks you you get like that's it you're dead right so like the reaction time as well to be able like it's actually quite easy if you're any mid distance it's really easy to go like sidestep at the right time to dodge the rock so i feel like this is another example of like the developers taking like a principle that they had and misapplying it to a situation it didn't need to apply to where it's like we oh you guys don't like one shots okay 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 we'll, we'll reduce one shots we took away roadhog's hook well, what about the sigma guy he has a one shot too let's let's remove this one shot but again as of all the things have been pointed out longer response time slower projectile travel you have to follow up with your own shot after the rock. It's not easy to hit. Sigma's volley is already much harder to hit than a Roadhog volley, right? Or a Roadhog shot. Your teammates can influence that that play. They can stop the one shot being a one shot anytime. If you even slightly miss, you're let's say you're free, right? So it's like, and on top of that, it's like the scenarios where it's actually lethal is probably if someone has gotten right on top of Sigma, in which case he needs the rock. So it's like, I feel like uh, this is a miss in my book. Basically, I'll summarize as a miss. I don't know what this is all about, to be honest. And then you're adding a longer stun to it. So it's like, do you feel better as the receiving end of a player to be stunned longer? Like, if I'm going to die, just just kill me, dog. Like, don't stun me longer. Then I get up and I die a half a second later because someone else hit, like, the 20 extra damage or right? Like, it feels like... It's yeah, easy I, patch. Yeah, I don't know. Miss. Um, I think it's supposed to be anti-dive, maybe. I don't know. It should stop making rules that they're going to break anyway. That, that's what I feel. <laughs> they, yes. they keep trying to get, make, like, all right, we have this base understanding. It's a game about less CC. But now let's add a patch where Brig gets it back and Sig gets more, but more less of this, more of that. Uh, yeah, I, I'd rather they look at each character in isolation as opposed to the rationale that it's like, well, we took it from Roadhog, so Sig should lose it too. It's like, hold on a second. <laughs> it was sort of like when they nerfed Shatter in that in Overwatch 1. Remember that? And, and they eventually reverted that in Overwatch 2. But it's like no one was yeah, complaining really. about that. You just made a rule that you thought you had to apply to everything that no one asked you to do. Anyway. Well, then they did this to honestly. It's like middle ground. They yeah. did this to Ana Sleep too, though, right? We're like, oh shit, we gotta reduce CC. We bumped up the CC cool. Like, we lowered Sleep Dart. Then we upped Sleep Dart. Now we've got another Sleep Dart change. You know, it's like the roll passives were the same thing. Like, this is the roll passive problem, basically, where it's like we applied a blanket rule to an entire vast set of heroes who all have different d needs and desires. So we gave everyone this roll passive. Oh shit, it doesn't work for Lucio. Oh shit, it doesn't work for Mercy. Oh, we're gonna have to change those now. Oh, this this roll passive is OP on Genji, but doesn't work for Hanzo. You know, just, just, just stop with the blanket rules. Your heroes are very unique like there doesn't need to be like a unified ideology to like all every single hero in every single category right like it, it, something works and relevantly speaking talks to this fucking moron cassidy character where it's like this magno bang is the worst fucking thing ever because like <laughs> somehow we got worse than flashbang like, somehow we were like flash cc's are bad let's remove flashbang we added the fucking nuclear missile that homes in on you at like Free kill at, at literal nine. It's only worse if you're not a tank player. I'm just saying, as a tank player, I That's don't true. care That's about true. it. It's hilarious for me because I'm like, I, I don't give a shit. But I agree with you. I know what you're talking about. It's just like it's any time anyone like it's impossible for anyone who's not a tank to duel Cassidy as long as he has the Magno grenade because it's like body shot, you're dead, right? Body shot, and you hear it. I've had so many again well, sorry, on my three times and then sticks. Literally <laughs> yeah, on my Lucio arc, I have so many moments where I'm like, okay, I'm speeding away from this guy and I'm like dipping around the corner and then I just hear. <laughs> like chasing it's after actual, me and I'm like I'm dead you know what it is it's an actual Tom and Jerry ability legit it's just like straight out of a Tom and Jerry or like an old school Looney Tunes cartoon it's, it's you know it's funny not to so, get hit with though 
not to get hit with. So they've reduced his base health to 200, and the damage has gone from 131 to 120. So basically, it's not a body shot, one shot combo. Magnetic they grenade. They did mention only... they're reworking this, by the way, in the oh, really? dev chat. Yes. Okay, so the clue God. that they gave to it is that they're they're thinking about Cassidy as more of a medium to long range character, and the nade may get a rework to fit that philosophy, essentially. So I don't know if that means like my guess is it's like an HE nade or like an Ana nade or closer to that, as opposed to the close range nade so they lowered the damage on it now so it's not a body shot but you'll still be able to fan the hammer which makes it in a way worse and more lame because <laughs> if you fan the hammer with, with a mag nade that'll still kill a squishy so either way this whole like close range god character who's super easy but then at medium range where uh, like let's say like I, I, I when they say we've been talking to creators i think what they really mean is we've been talking to wanted who's been like talking about uh cassidy this whole time where like he wants to be able to use the left click right and show off his aim skill and luckily i think they sort of did that with the range increase where now it's yeah. a little bit more about not that he's a tanky character but he's a medium range head clicker guy as in there's They'll need to walk back more the nade and the the fan the hammer I think. But on one on the other hand, they wanted fan the hammer to exist for the you know Moira players out there who uh, oh, <laughs> like me. Careful, but careful, the careful, support careful. players like me. Pick. <laughs> pick. 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 He, he literally pick. is. Can you read that most... phrase? Can it we is. coin that, please? That's so funny. Yeah, the I comfort pick saying. is our is our the new bingo pick. card edition. The comfort. I, I, I don't think there's ever been a freer DPS in current Cassidy. Like literally, you just right click and E, and someone's on your screen and they die. Like that's uh, it. It's literally like the freest shit ever. I, I think that one week in season four of Overwatch one where they made Bastion the best hero in the game was the most free. That that was oh so yeah, funny. that's my first week of Overwatch <laughs> ever actually. Wait, really? <laughs> so yeah, I, I I actually used to play with my friends every once in a while. So I was a siege player at the time. So every once in a while yeah. they'd pull me in. And then they got to like diamond. I was like silver, 1700. And I couldn't play with it anymore. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to learn this game. And that was the week Ironclad Bastion came out. Went from silver to diamond in like one week. Maybe so easy. Maybe. I was like, wow, this is great. Like, <laughs> <laughs> was everyone complaining? Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, what are you guys okay. talking about? This, this, this is easy. Final yeah, so DPS funny. change. EMP can now disable Blizzard. Uh, we are expanding what Summer's EMP turns off to keep it consistent prior to effects other device control ultimates. Sam yeah, shaking his head. Man, how are we doing this before we're buffing my May freeze? Like, come on. Come on. Come on. Well, okay, listen. I'd be okay with this if it was not Sombra. All right? I'd be okay with this if it was not Sombra. Do we really need to be making this bag? I don't know. I think... Is Sombra power creep coming? Uh, they've they've now... Little they've now little. added two they've ultimates that she can cancel, anime. yeah. So, I think... Little by little. Again, I feel like, uh, having gone on my Sombra arc, I feel like I wouldn't have wanted this. I feel like it's a bit brainless again. It's like, it kind of reduces the... You know, I, I got coached by Fitzy and everything, and the man's just, like, yelling 10,000 things in my ear at, at, while I'm playing, and he's like, think about this ultimate, if you think about this ultimate, if you think about this, think about that, think about this... And I feel like that, that's something I can really respect. Like when I'm playing that and I'm like, I really respect this summer player because they're tracking the cooldown and they're tracking the state of the game. When you remove that and you're like, oh, they pushed the button, I'll also push the button. Like that's lame. Like that's like, now you've removed the like the tracking element to just be like, there was oh, th play before. the thing is there, I pushed the thing. Hmm? There was, there was counterplay before. Like, you could hack me out of the animation, right? And if yeah. that was, I, if I made that mistake, then that's on me. But, like, if I use my ult, I use it perfectly, and then you just hack it, like, what, are people instantly unfrozen? Like, I... I, just, I don't think it'll I, be I unfrozen. Think I think it'll just stop it continuing. Yeah, it's just... I, I just think it's a little corny. That's all. I think it's, like, a kind of a corny way to change it. I don't know. It kind of also threatens to make EMP this, like... Uh... Auto-win? Yeah, like just like erases it, like erases uh, what other people are doing, right? Which is like a dangerous territory. Again, this is the whole support discussion, because like, yeah, it just feels like oh, my my alt remove your alt better, alt, like better than your alt. You know, like it's very direct to be like, I pushed my alt, I pushed my alt. Sucks to be you, you know. So, yeah, not not gigantically huge on this, but again, we know there's a summer rework coming, so. Shrug. What, is there again? Whatever. Did they say there was another one coming? They still haven't given yes. us the one they promised. I thought they did. I thought that the hack and stealth and like changing how hack work was the Sombra rework. No, that was no. the Jeff Goodman rework. I think there's a Alec Dawson rework. Not not to put too <laughs> fine of a point gonna, on it. Is that, that what we're that, gonna that, call it? Well, I mean, they reworked it the one time at the launch of the game, and they're like, all right, this is it now. And then they announced later on when a different guy's in charge. We'll do that again. <laughs> and they, but uh, they because, said a couple yeah. seasons from now. So it's like we're looking like season six minimum. Okay. I mean, 
Is, if it's fun. Surely <laughs> sure. she doesn't get an MO. <laughs> Maybe. Um, this break she, level, hey, nervous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll see. Okay. What, what else was there in the pack? Should so Anna sleep dart reduction on tank heroes from 5 to 3.5 seconds. We've been watching how effective sleep dart has been in 5v5 gameplay. It hasn't been overly disruptive as a whole, but since it's significantly more reliable to land against tanks due to their large hitboxes and even more valuable to do so with only one tank in the field, we're reducing the maximum duration against those targets. Frito, I think you said this was like kind of fair. Uh, I don't I don't know what I think necessarily. I think this is the Nathan patch because he hates that ability yeah, <laughs> and Anna in general. That's true. Uh, He's a filthy hog player. So I think the shieldless tanks especially are going to really appreciate this. Like, for example, Wrecking Ball, if you slept him after Adaptive Shield, it basically would, like, delete the entire ability, right? And that's, like, one of the biggest value exchange for health points I can think of in the outside of an ult. Um, so that's that kind of changes a little bit where you'll retain a little bit of the shields. I, yeah, I don't know what to say. It's like, on one hand, I think we went on the arc to discuss how tank gameplay is kind of brutal right now in terms of how many things that exist to just, like, ruin your day, Sleep Dart being one of them. But on the other hand, it's like, don't you want to reward the, the skill shot of the character? And it, if the target wakes up in three seconds, does Ana die now in spots where she wouldn't? Or maybe because she is so survivable with... Brig being buffed or Life Weaver, in my opinion, maybe that's fine. I think Ana's great in this patch, personally, because if uh, you need a character, like if you're going to play with Life Weaver, for example, you need a character that has a lot of healing, because otherwise, or or Zen, like one of the two. I think like you're really amping up with Discord, or you're playing Ana with with Life Weaver, in my opinion. So I, I don't even think she's bad necessarily, um, even with this nerf. Flats. <sighs> You know, I've I've been I try to be pretty fair to every every role, every rank, and, and like you know talk about different things. But like I'm I'm really kind of getting sick of it. I'm gonna just go on like this anti like just just stick to the things that benefit me because that's what seems like everyone else does. Or like you know they just they're like oh you're only benefiting yourself. Like you know, I was one of the biggest proponents for for during goats. I was like this is not healthy. Like DPS should not be able to not play the game. But you know what though I I, I look at it and it's like. That's going to greatly de benefit things like Ramatra, right? Like Ramatra is probably going to get a huge change because, like, when you go punchy punch, Ana was one of the best things for kind of shutting that down. Because, like, Nano Ramatra, Ana Ramatra goes well. So if you run the mirrors, right, they're going to have an, an, an Ana as well. And the Sleep Dart Anti Nade, you know, those things are going to ruin your day like every time. So, uh, how do I feel about it? I don't think it actually should be a thing. Um, and, I, you know, we're going to talk about Mercy here, I'm sure, because I saw your tweet, uh, SVB. And I think this actually kind of applies to, to Ana now, is we're, there's so many things that they're afraid of making changes because they don't want to make the game too complex. And I actually kind of agree with that take. It's like, you know, like you shouldn't have to look up on the wiki three things like, you know, like, oh, like you do do 10% more damage to these types of characters, 20% less damage to these types of characters. Tanks give 25% old charge less. And it's like, you know, Mercy was a good example with the super jump stuff. And now you need a PhD in Mercyology to just be able to understand the patch notes. Is Are we going down that road now where like even Ana, where it's like you pick up the game, you're going to have to understand that when you sleep targets, they're not all going to sleep the same amount of time. Or yeah, like, you know, like that. for CC, right? Like the, they're being less CC, like what, let's say like hard CC, like, like, like things that push you away, like whip shot, right? Like whip shot was, is a good example of like, okay, I bang this mace off of somebody, they fly away from it, that makes sense. But if they're a big, giant tank, they go a little bit not as far, or they don't get booped as far, that conceptually makes sense. But what conceptually makes sense about big tanks sleep less long? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I, I, And you kind of start to go down a dangerous route. Does anti less like not go as long on tanks? Like, you know, do they have a resistance to those cooldowns? Like, how, like, where do you start to draw the lines? Like, does hack not go as long? If you don't know, loaded this earlier, Omnic what about Discord? Huh? <laughs> if, you, if you're a robot, you shouldn't be able to get slept. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. <laughs> what, <laughs> what about Discord Orb, right? Like, if Discord Orb's on a tank, you know, because it's bigger and it's the front line, you know, should you take less damage with Discord Orb? If that's how the route they end up going down, I'm going to love that. I'll have to deal with Discord Orb less. But of course, though, like, you know, like, how complex do you want to make these things? Like, do you need a degree in every character to be able to understand how to play the game? And that's a totally different conversation to have. So I actually don't know how to feel about it. I'm on the fence. Um, but 
the inner Overwatch in me goes, I don't know about that one. Sam just left on I got to ask his opinion. Yeah, I mean, on the one hand, it feels fair because you're like, um, does it? You know, it doesn't feel right somehow that you know these big tanks they go down as easy, right? It's like some something, something feels off about this petite British woman sleeping for as long as this gigantic, you know, German behemoth. Like, some some's some off about this. The same amount of tranquilizer on both these guys. What was going on? But then, yeah, like, there's the other danger, which is that, like, I feel like Anna just, like, is one of those heroes that reminds me of, like, early D.Va, where it's like, this hero keeps so much in check. You know, like, this hero, this hero's existence keeps so much in check. And the minute you, like, nerf this hero, like, she, I remember, was there, like, a patch when they, like, nerfed D.Va's Matrix a lot, and then suddenly, like, Visor took over, like, Attack Visor just took over, and everyone's like, shit, this is why we have D.Va in the game, right? Because uh, until we don't, Attack Visor, like, you know, this other ability just wrecks everyone. And I feel like, yeah, Ball is this character where... What do you do when Wrecking Ball is, like, trolling around in your backline? Like, how many things do you have that can really answer this guy? Like, Hack... It, uh, maybe Hot Take, but Hack isn't even that bad against Ball. Like, yeah, when you get Chain CC, it is bad, but, like, now it doesn't hack you for as long. So you, like, get unhacked and you run away again. And it's, like, now when you're taking Sleep Dart... Like, Sleep Dart is the most reliable, I feel, of actually stopping him. You're like, okay, he's actually hunted now. Like, okay, we we go. But now, yeah, it's, it's hard to this say. Is... I don't... Hmm? I think Zen Zen Break that's is better true. against Ball that's than Ana. I, I, I'm, I'm talking purely like solo I, queue or like right, rando guy. Right now, Ana Zen is what people are playing in the ball. Not that surprising. If, like, if especially with Tracer, you discord the ball, you sleep him one time, and Tracer comes over, chases his escape, he doesn't get away. Yep, Summer Tracer too, and then the, the EMP or Zen, you nano him, he just doesn't die. <laughs> 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 uh, so yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know, I don't. Yeah, I'm not strongly opinionated on either of these, on, on like this where this goes, but I think it's one to wait and see like what it does to... Sam, do you, Sam, you have any more to add on it? I, I think you guys hit the nail on the head, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we discussed... Also, the alternatively, yeah. one and a half second is just doesn't... It's hard to even tell. Like, I think the biggest one maybe is Ram as well, Ram, Doom, <laughs> but like... A lot of I times, think you'll tell you, you want to wake it up before five seconds anyway. Like, like there is some times where you use the whole five second or like they're out of the fight and you ignore them, I guess. But one and a half seconds, it's, there's a chance we'd barely even notice this in a lot of cases. I think the Ana player in solo queue notices this because I, I, I'm I pitching the scenario of like, there's a ball and you're you know, diving in the back line or Winston. You sleep him. You need a few seconds to like run away, right? Because like, let's assume there's nobody helping you. You need a while to reposition to a place where he can't immediately just get right back on top of you. I think that's where you'll feel this, where you're like, your team isn't following up. Like if you're following up, you're right. If people are going to come in and burst this guy, maybe we don't feel it. But when you need to just run away, that's like one and a half seconds is a long time of like running away time. To like nade actually get out too. If you exactly. use your nade aggressively, and as a Winston player, I go, I just saw them use nade. I'm going for it. I'll take the 50-50 duel on the sleep. Now I can actually take it more often because even if you do sleep me, you probably don't have your nade up by the time I wake up and jump you again. Yeah. We, well, it's going to end up being a brig on a Winston meta too because you can't sleep the nano monkey anymore for as long as he'll just be back. That's true. True, the actually. Sleeps, the nano sleep. Dragon Blade sleep. Now he might actually get the rest of it off if he gets up. Yeah, I, I still, well. I'm, not, I'm, still, I'm not thinking Genji's going to be that good. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I think... I'm not thinking meta, though. I'm just talking literal interactions oh, in the yeah. game. Yeah. We, we should all do a meta prediction at the end of this. Be... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I don't know if I have one. Um, Because we talked the Brig ones at length. Mercy changes. So, oh, I, I, can, can I just say before I start reading this, I'm tired of reading, Mer reading Mercy patch notes. I swear to God, dude. <laughs> like, I'm tired of, like, every four weeks... Like something fundamental about this hero. I can only imagine how it play feels to be a Mercy player. Where like every four weeks you're like, fingers crossed my character isn't a different character. Although Mercy Conquerors probably love it. Because they get to farm like a new Mercy is dead video every like four weeks. They're like, guys they fucking ruin Mercy every four weeks. So like it's maybe yeah. they they out here eating. But like, okay. Caduceus staff healing per second increase from 45 to 55. It no longer helps allies under half health. Guardian Angel, the cooldown reduced 2.5 to 1.5. Jump and crouch, cancel active ability state duration. That's the, I'm, I'm glad I got that in one take. From 1 to 1.5 seconds. The jump and crouch, cancel active ability state can no longer be manually interrupted to begin the cooldown early. Valkyrie, support role passive healing is now active for the duration of Valkyrie. 
Developer comment, the recent increase to Guardian Angel's jump cancel mobility still needs to be kept in check in some way. But while the last iteration was simple, it also had some unintended effects such as not being ready to use GA after flying in and using Resurrect. This revision provides more flexibility and allows Mercy to opt into an additional 1.5 second cooldown when using the increased mobility from the crouch slash crou jump slash crouch cancel options or otherwise waiting for the base cooldown time. The increased healing multiplier condition on Kadusha's staff was intended to help Mercy players feel more in agency in trying to save critical health allies and to add depth to the healing mechanic without changing the total time to heal to full health. However, the rebalance of the healing values received significant negative feedback, which is to say everyone thought it was dog shit, both from those playing Mercy as and those playing against it. There wasn't a satisfying middle ground where we could reduce the potency of this effect while still having it feel impactful, so we're reverting it. As I said on Twitter, I'm just going to preface it and say, I, I remember when they removed Super Jump as a tech because they were like, yeah, that's too complicated, dog. And now, I, now I, when I was reading this for the first time, I was like, I need a fucking like, degree in hieroglyphics to understand what the fuck is going on in this. Like, I need a translator to even interpret for or me ski. what the fuck this means. Yeah, literally, ski, like Skiesti or Neander or someone to like tell me what the fuck this means. Essentially, it means that if you do... A simple guardian angel, which is just literally the button, right? And you go one place, the other, it's 1.5 seconds. But if you do anything beyond that, so if you super jump, if you do the little, uh, you know, slingshot rubber band further up, anything else that you add will add the, the cooldown increase. So basically, it stays where it is. So it's like a net, Mercy player saying it's a net nerf, basically, because they lost the critical healing. But now, anytime they try to do any complex movement, it's the same movement time. So, like, if you try to do anything... Wait, that's ass. Wait a minute, it's, what? Yeah, literally. It's just it's just <laughs> ass. So, so if you do any... Mm, go ahead, Sam. So, basically, if you do the jump tech, it's back at 1.5 seconds from when you use the tech? Yeah, so basically... So, there's, like, three seconds now, right? So, like, the cooldown. So, like, if you do any tech, it's three seconds again, basically, before you can Guardian Angel once more. See, I, was I take back what I said about support players. Support players are babied as fuck, and they get everything but the Mercy players. That's, that's <laughs> it. Yeah, you guys are the exception now. You guys are like, you guys are in danger if that's a, if that's actually the changes. That's I mean, awful. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go. Hold on. Gonna... They retained the self-heal, though. That's one thing they did not touch. The sympathetic so the healing, bit, yes. The sympathetic the, healing yeah. where you heal off of your target. And I don't recall you saying this, so maybe it was a bug fix technically, but the Valkyrie gets constant self-regen on top of that. So this version of uh, Mercy yeah, is the here, tankiest version we've seen in Valkyrie. Um, yeah. Depends. And I'm a little curious to like, so you can do the GA multiple times after one another to keep up with, let's say, like a Farah. But if you're using the tech, you're slowed down a little bit. Is that that's yes. how it works? So it's like yes, okay. I, I I don't know if I think this is as doomsday as everybody else thinks, but maybe that's because uh, I can't aim and I like mercy to be locked downable. <laughs> and the the like previous version, as I've said when we talked about this originally, uh, where she could constantly whip shot herself in the sky over and over and over again. Like I, I thought that was just egregious. Unless you are a hit scan player and you can. Uh, click that out of the sky like that was way too hard for me personally to hit to so she was effectively invulnerable whereas now she her defenses are a little bit more in those stats of like if you're healing someone you self-heal a bit and especially in valk as well way way tankier in valk i, I don't know I, i'll have to play it a bit more to know what i think i also think like another thing to keep in mind is that in many ways the game has more verticality to it now so so especially against life weaver um, while on one hand, you might think like raising a Cassidy would beat a flyer type character in many ways, like being able to fly above a uh, life weaver to get above him um, is one of the better counters as well. So th this isn't like a meta prediction necessarily. It's just more so like a, an average player's experience type thing. Life weaver has really poor interactions against the flyers because although he, really his only thing is lifting up a teammate to shoot them. Like it's not like a Zen or a Mercy or Anna, Bap, they all can like shoot at those things. The Needler's not going to shoot down an Echo or Farah or or anything vertical, yeah. really. Yeah. Sam, you going to say something? Uh, yeah, I just tested out the tech. So basically, how it works is like if you the GA cooldown doesn't reset until I, if you use the tech, like it still considers that a part of the first GA. So it's still one and a half second cooldown, I think. Um, but that cooldown timer doesn't reset until you finish whatever the movement was that you were previously doing.
So I, I get what you're saying. Ah, I'm so the kidding. bigger movements have it's, it's until just, uh, yeah, it yeah, like your cooldown, your cooldown doesn't re it doesn't consider the cooldown finished until you stop moving, whether you use the additional tech or not. That's all. So like if you use the jump boost, like that won't reset the cooldown until after you're done with the jump boost. Ah, but it's the player's hey, so choice it, yeah. as to whether or not. Yeah, I thought the jump. Yeah. I thought the the second jump boost would reset it again. Isn't that no, what it's it doesn't. Been? It doesn't consider the cooldown done at all until you're done moving. So, like, if you choose not to use the jump boost, you're done moving. That's when the cooldown resets. If you use the jump boost, it still considers that a part of the GA you previously used, and then it will reset after you've done. You're done moving from the jump boost, and you've received all the bonus. If you go in the practice range and do it, like, you get it easy. It's, I get what you're saying. Anyway. It. It's way simpler than what it's worded as. <laughs> I, I'm still a little bit confused, but I'm gonna be real. I, I have a different point because, like, obviously, none of us are like mercy experts, and and you know, the, the mercy players are seemingly upset. I, I I was a little bit upset myself, and I can't imagine how they feel when when they were in the dev talk, and Alex said something like, "Oh, you know, we uh we made the mercy movement change, and you know, unfortunately, had the unintended effect of ruining all her synergies." And I was just like sat there, and I'm like. Yeah, Which but the, the so the, when you guard an angel it, towards a target to res, by the time the res animation finishes, an original mercy like movement, you would have the guardian angel back to guardian angel away. But with the nerfs that they gave to her movement, when it was three seconds, you go in, you res, and you're sat there for like an extra second before you can guardian angel away. So that synergy of like within your own movement goes away. And I was kind of like li listening to this, and I'm like. They fucking told you this, the, like, on day one. Like, if you talk to anybody who plays Mercy, they literally told you this, like, literally day fucking one if you ask them. And they've been, they've been screaming and begging on, like, you know, I've seen them on the Country Creator Discord, but on, in public spheres as well. They've been like, please don't touch the movement. The movement is the fun part. Like, dude, you, you, when we were all complaining about Blue Beam, they were like, yeah, fine, you could take the Blue Beam. You could take the res. Just, like, don't interrupt the movement. That's the actually movement, a good point. Because the movement is why anyone plays Mercy. Like, that's the fun part. And they fucked the movement. They left the blue beam. And, like, they would have, like, they literally told you day one. Like, who could have, man, who could have thought this would fuck up the synergies? The Mercy, like, players reading the patch notes were like, yeah, but now I can't res when I go after a guardian angel. I have to sit there for a second. So it's like, this is where area where I could, I would definitely be molding if I was a Mercy content creator. Because I'm like, we, we, we screamed at you. We begged you. Use us as a resource. We told you. And they're just like, nah, you know, man, who would have thought? So... That's a great I, point, actually. I remember. I don't even. I completely forgot. Like, everyone was like, "Yeah, let's rework the damage boost." The actually part that kind of breaks the game, and we we're like, "Nah, fuck that. Let's get rid of the movement." <laughs> like, wait a minute. I actually. Holy shit! That's actually so stupid. Sorry. So was that last patch or this patch? Is this last patch? I'm patch. trying to practice wrench right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was gonna say this patch. You can do that again. Yeah, I think it still fucks some shit up, though. Like, I, I don't, again, I, I can't claim to, I still you, don't you fucking understand. You can't do the boost tech up in the air as you res, I think, and get it. I think that's what's different. But I get, we'll have to ask the Mercy players for sure. I mean, my point is, is on a wider scale anyways. Like, I just think this is like, an, I, I also, on the whole note of like this triage healer business, like, because again, they keep mentioning we want her to be this triage healer. And both triage again, hero. And, and again, I'm just like, I'm a little bit confused by the ideology of that. Like, it feels like I, I feel if I were to summarize this balance patch, I feel a lot. It's a lot of like philosophical balancing of like this is the game. This is the, like this is the way we envision the heroes, and this is the way we think of the heroes. But it's like devoid from the practical reality of how the hero is played. So, like this mercy example is a good one, where it's like we want her to be an emergency triage healer. And then you look at how actually Mercy's been played for years and you're like, that's just not how it is. This is not a healer that you're supposed to like bounce in and try and save a critical HP tank. Like, no, this is a support that's like about surviving and like enabling DPS. That's what it was for like the majority of the end of Overwatch 1, right? And it's like, no, we want her to be a triage support. So let's buff her healing on tanks and reduce the movement, which everybody loves. And it's again the same with like this stylistic like Sigma change. Like we don't want one shots, but it's like that yeah, this is devoid from what the character's play actually is. So I, yeah, I, I feel upset on behalf of the Mercy players where I'm like, I, I feel like they've been screaming and they just got some other slap in their face. Like, it's like, no, we don't give you what you want. We give you something else. You know, it's funny, actually. I feel like a lot of characters have actually gotten kind of similar, not to the same extreme, but similar-ish um, treatments since Overwatch 2 has come out. Like, th like, certain things that they were, like, always good at and, like, you know what people wanted to play those characters like for example the shield tanks like the shield tanks were very much designed for high level play was different 
was like for like the 99 percent, it's like you the you're the protector of your team you take a bunch of damage everyone gets near you, you swing on them now it's it's not totally like that anymore it's like you're basically just a, a sponge for damage and like sometimes get to get make a cool play but like otherwise you're just you don't feel like you may have that much of an impact anymore at least i don't feel that way like i don't have the i don't have the high highs of tank like i used to it's just like either like you know like there was the low lows and high highs it now feels like it's like very much compressed you know i mean i think sombra is another example too of a hero that like I mean, the ha the yeah. hack was like the whole like okay, we're we're I'm a tactical character. I'm gonna hack people at the right time for the right thing, and it feels like more and more in Overwatch, they push her towards like she's an assassin character. She's we we want her to be an assassin character, and now they're saying with the rework that they're gonna do away with like the translocator, and it's like all the Sombra players are like no 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 the translocator is the fun part. We like the whole the mechanic and the cycling of like I translocate, I go in, I come out, I translocate, go in, and come out. You know, it's like that cycle of like is what Sombra is. And then they're like, yeah, we're considering removing... I mean, I don't want to pin them to the wall on it. Like, maybe they are just changed their mind, and maybe that's just their initial thought. But again, it feels like there's a lot of decisions being made devoid from how the player base of that hero actually play the hero. It's just a lot of, like, we think this hero should be this. Frida, I'm curious if you have anything to input any of this while we're on this topic. General heroes, not so much. I'm just sitting here thinking, like, I don't think Mercy should be able to spam ability uh, movement as as much as she used to be able to. So that, that's how I feel. I'm I'm curious to how strong she'll actually be. It's like there, there's Doomsday takes on it, but I think with the self heal boost and I, I don't I don't know. I think and, that should uh, get done away with hot take. I, I don't. That's like already that. pretty good. Like that's going to increase her tankiness, even if she's losing a little bit of movement. So I. I can't make heads or tails of it for certain at this point, but I, I think uh, the triage healing kind of had to go because you can't shoot through it, and th that was just too much. I like to abuse it because you can just hold position, and I think as like a non-Mercy expert, someone who flexes to it, it's like, okay, I can play my position and just heal, and that was insane m m amount of value because it's just so much stats on a very uh, easy-to-target ability. So now it's a little more about your movement, which is better, um, I also don't, uh, yeah, I guess I repeat myself, myself, but I, I, the whole like supports flying away always is just a little lame. It's sort of like what flat flats is Reinhardt point. Like I feel that a lot with, uh, a lot of characters that, uh, in that previous iteration of mercy where she could spam her GA a lot more, uh, I just felt she never could be targeted by a lot of things unless you're a Widowmaker and have aim, which I am not. <laughs> That's I think fair. I like Overwatch I... one with the mercy changes. I feel like I don't know. I feel like that's best. Yeah, honestly, like the end of Overwatch one mercy was like fine. Like, I, I mean, maybe some of the mercy players will disagree. Maybe they were like, ah, she's kind of weak at the start of Overwatch two. But like, yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like that original super jump was 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 plenty, and now we're just like in even more. Like, who's who? Who fucking in their bronze mind is is reading and understanding this for how GA works? Like how the super jump works. I, I, in general, I, just... I say the three the three dimensional rework for her movement is pretty sick. Like I immediately thought that was like it gave a lot of power, but then it just seems like they've they didn't know what to do with it afterwards because there was a period where we had that, but Kiri was just so much stronger, right? That that we just kind of could ignore it. And then when Kiri was knocked down, then Mercy kind of came out of the woodwork. I feel with that being uh, then we had the sniper meta. Yeah, we're, it's sort of like what you you guys are worried about, right? As much as I've like. Uh, and downplaying like the brig change it's like the reason why you guys are rightfully worried about this the brig change whatever is like you never know down the line <laughs> when it's just gonna creep up and be like all right that's like insane now i don't know i just guess i've embraced that that's just the yeah. way this game works to some degree yeah and again i am open to some of these changes but uh, I, th I think i saw skst saying just at this point just give her the movement back and drop her hp down which i wouldn't be opposed to like you know one like max one... hp yeah 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 like 175 150 we give her the movement we kind of have both sides you can kill her easy but she can have her fun casuals would hate that i think that would ski, ski, ski would be fine but that like that, all that the casual players would absolutely would hate it just maybe I, my my solution was literally just same cooldowns you can't do the super jump tech every ga it's every other ga so every like it's on its own timer right so your ga is 1.5 seconds okay that's fine you have to do one normal ga and then you you can't repeatedly use the tech you have to wait like an additional cooldown for it so like the the tech would be a three second cooldown 
and the GA would be 1.5 as it's always been, and then that would be fine. Alternatively, they may just revert the whole three-dimensional movement thing. The yeah, whole like we'll jumping see. out of uh, we'll like, like that might happen <laughs> to be honest because we'll, we'll they they've, they've changed this so much that that it wouldn't surprise me at that point if that's the next place they go. I, I like that they're swinging the bat though. I I, I just hope they find a solution because like, again I'm early tired access of game. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, tired of reading access, Mercy patch yeah. notes. I just want I just want there to be a fixed Mercy that we can actually all understand. Uh, you get more complicated but, every time. Literally, I just yeah. I again I'm reading this big ass text the first time and i'm like i have no idea what this means um moira the final change fade can now be activated during coalescence the coalescence bonus movement speed reduced from 50 to 40 percent lingering healing increased from two to three seconds being able to use fade during a coalescence ultimate gives moira more playmaking abilities by being able to reposition even more quickly and avoid potential threats with quick reactions due to the more That's spread out <laughs> play style of 5v5 or increasing the lingering heal maintaining that it will heal more you missed a very important patch note every time yeah. you use coal it automatically records your gameplay and uploads it to tiktok <laughs> <laughs> it's true best players buff. true i mean what do we think uh frida what, what are your genuine thoughts on on the moira change well, like I've said it in the show many times, but I hate the design of Moira. I love the new design of characters. And like, this is like, there's just sort of shrugging and saying, well, we'll just make what the base thing you already do have like a, an extra cool thing to do. That's basically what they want out of the support cast where Brig can stun, Moira gets to be this insane Giga Chad character who already was super easy and forgiving and just threw stats. I mean, in the dev talk, they literally said my buzzword that I hate about Moira. It's like, well, we, we want a forgiving character that has like some extra stats to just like kind of not have to think about too hard. It's effectively pick. what he's saying, Comfort right? Pick. Uh, so I'm just not going to win with this. Like, uh, I, I prefer the root of like the Enfeeble Orb or something like that. Like, I, I'd rather less stats more brain but that's never going to happen with this character it seems like so um I, I i think it it already doubles down on things i don't like design wise but i, I don't know how i feel about moira on this next build though because like other support things get stronger because of the other changes that i've already mentioned to stabilize those picks like ana and zen are more stable in this patch it's it's like hard to think about but a lot of like regrouping with your team is easier with stranded spawn and life weaver. So it's like, are those characters stronger than Moira? Yes. So hopefully, uh, I, I do know. I'll say this: like, metal rank players hate playing against Moira, rightfully so. So on one hand, it's like the appeal to the support players who have this easy comfort pick hero to play. But if you're trying to like learn Genji and Gold or something, like, good good luck, bro. Good good luck. Good luck <laughs> because every it's so easy to just like counter a Genji as by, by existing as Moira. Oh, and it's like that. that's not true. That's definitely not true. Definitely not. Definitely not. That's why we gotta keep nerfing Blade because Genji is the best hero in the game. <laughs> Again though, the, yeah. these pick rate problems will exist. Genji, Reinhardt, I mean, even Mercy, the reason she gets so many changes is the pick rate problem. He's like, well, this character's getting picked a lot, so we got to do something about it. Uh, Flats, your thoughts on the Moira change? This is a per perfect example. You're just making the support character. Like, you remove every weakness of every character. The weakness of Moira's coalescence was that she could get CC'd or stunned or killed because she had no movement during it. She had better health regen because, like, while she was shooting, she her health was regenerating. She was doing damage. She was faster. But she could get slept out of it. She could get pinned. You could you could just like turn and burn her. And guess what? You remove that now. It's gone. Like serious. Like this. Like this is the perfect example of like you know people people, people of course are gonna get mad. Like everyone loves their giga buff supports, dude. Like, but at the same time, like you know, I I you almost wonder. It's like when is someone gonna finally realize and look at it and go, yeah, this is getting kind of insane. And like. You know, beyond your own power trip fun factor, when do you realize, yeah, a character probably should have some weaknesses somewhere. We got to stop getting rid of the the weaknesses those characters have. Because as Frito said, you know, you're, we're arguing, it's like, oh, they're probably not going to be meta. That's not the point, though. Like, just because like just because they won't be the hard meta best character doesn't mean that, like, someone should be able to pick this character and they still have no weaknesses. You know what I mean? Like, they can still go crazy. And because, like, that's going to affect people more than anything. There's no way to shut it down. Like. And, and the ways you had to shut it down, it's gone. You just made it more forgiving. So it's like, I don't know, dude. I, 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 I just, I'm just sick of it. 
I thought of something to add as well because I looked this up real quick. So Cole lasts eight seconds, and we all know fade probably is a, a six second cooldown. So that means you can fade in with your damage orb, and you'll get another fade. Which again, this isn't just like original fade. This is giga fade, where you get to like super jump in your fade, so you're able to track things down. Like it's just the gap between like. Of being able to call a backliner now is even easier because it's like if they had any ability to get away well now you just fade into them and jump above them <laughs> and it's like the insanity you're going to be able to do with coal is is over the top i think at this point uh, my argument again to hate it is like it just it just teaches bad habits basically like like i think it just makes such an easy path to value that you shouldn't be able to do in support but anyway yeah free kills free kills free escape free forgiving free frags free stats all, all the hold tab moira players i i just you know i i'm not a huge fan of that whole culture i think it's bad for the game overall whether how good it is or not is kind of not the point it's like it's good for a lot of players and then you get these boosted moira players that don't know how to do anything else other than fade into your back line and 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 you know i abuse it as well like you know i i, I definitely play moira when i when i can like it's a, a very relaxing free win and you can just point at everybody else and say hey, hey look at my stats like look at all the damage i've done with this no aim no brain i pierce through things a uh, character it, yeah why do all these supports seem like they all of a sudden have playmaking super crazy playmaking ability what also enabling abilities at the same time it's like i feel like now that you have both it's just insane and like you know, honestly most supports can most of the supports are actually really scary to 1v1 on on non-tank characters. So Well, that's kind of what isn't that kind of what we wanted with Overwatch 2 is like everyone can duel for themselves. Is that not what was yeah, advertised? Sports, sports right. already can. You don't have to buff the easiest characters in the game to be better than their counterparts. It's it's the exact same mistake they made in Overwatch 1. They've shown no no ability to learn whatsoever. None. Why are he easier heroes getting more utility? Just go ahead and shut down the Overwatch League while you're at it, because no one's going <laughs> to want to watch it. I'm not kidding. I'm, I'm not joking. That point anyways, but... I'm not kidding. Just go ahead and turn off Comp 2, because this Comp mode's horrible. It's worse than the previous one. I'm just going to spit facts right now. I don't know. I don't even pretend to be a competitive game studio. Just make this game full casual, because this is a joke. It's a joke. And if you keep doing this, and this is the only time I'm going to say it, I'm not going to go, I'm not making the same mistakes I made in Overwatch. I'm not going to continue to hammer it home, because I got stakes in pro play, like I used to. I'm done. Right? Like, you know, you're, you, people are going to take the game as seriously as you make it. And these changes are not serious changes. Like, if I, like I'm just going to start playing arcade. You hang up the cape. So here, here's what I'm going to say to Blizzard. You want to keep making these same mistakes that you made in Overwatch 1? You're going to make, you're going to run down the same hill. So th the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. This was not well received in Overwatch 1. It's not going to be well received in Overwatch 2. I, I don't understand why you guys continue to try this. Um, but it's just the Activision Blizzard model of just trying to appeal to like your very average audience. But if you do that, no one's special. So it, it just takes away from the grindability of the game. And there's just no intent to keep that competitive integrity and keep that game integrity high. And I think that unfortunately the competitive scene is just going to continue to suffer for it. So look, it's just, it's an arcade change is what I'd describe it as. And I know my, some people, a lot of people look at this as like, oh, well, it's just one or two changes. Like, what's the big deal? Yeah. Well, those add up over time. And that's literally what happened in Overwatch one. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It's it's a it's a it's a circus change. And it's it's not just for high level players either, right? It, 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 to it, translate, it's Sam, global play it, it dominates. Right. right. The problem, the, the the bigger problem is the Ana Gold player that's going up against the Moira now, and it's like, well, maybe a GM would sleep that Cole perfectly or whatever. It's just kind of it's just kind of pointless and brain dead. Again, there's a lot of players that want to play these harder heroes. That now just get run over by stats, and you're you're th th this is it's a trigger for me when they use almost my phrases in the dev chat. Like, yeah, we we wanted to have stats. Wait, hold on a second. Why? <laughs> Why would you want that? What's the benefit? So so the the security blanket of support. Like, it's already comfy enough. That's that's what I've been saying. It's like there's so much I'll like allow for the support uh, cast to have. That's like free value, and I've always been saying like it's stronger than you think the whole time. And I kind of understand the playmaking of like. Casting a stun as Brig or something. There's, there's a, a lot I will give, but you're, what you're really hurting is the players that want to play the harder characters because you're like, well, this one will win easier. So just pick them and you'll win easier. It was like, well, why? That's again, it's, Sam's point is that's everything everyone hated about Overwatch 1. So don't do that. You're, you're sending us down the, a bad path. Yeah. I mean, that that is the salient point, I think, which is that 
the power creep. I think there's a lot of people, again, look at this and like, why are you overreacting? And like, it's just, it's a little, little silly little buff, silly little chain, silly little guy. But we've all been there, though. We saw this. Yeah, we're reliving we've history. All played, we already, already we happened. played like, since launch, and maybe you know, maybe some of you listening are like, I haven't played that long. What's the problem? Well, to give context, again, the goats historian will chime in. But you know, when we were in the goats era, this is exactly what happened. Little little buffs to the characters here or there to be like, oh, maybe maybe now this character will dislodge the meta. Maybe now this character, oh, it's not a big deal. They're not the meta character, so it's not a big deal if we buff them. Well, you know, we gave May the multi freeze. We gave Reaper like Giga stats. We gave this guy, this guy, that, that this guy, guy, that. And then when you eventually remove the thing by because that none of that works, and you eventually do dislodge the big strong thing, you're left with all these characters where it's like impossible to now rebalance because you've given them like five minor changes over time. Orisa was another good example. Why did Orisa take over? Because while Goats existed, they buffed her like five oh, times. Yep. They buffed her like five times and she never got played. But then when the minute Goats dies, everyone's running Orisa because like, yo, shit, this shield is massive. This is a fucking giant shield. And now we also got Sigma, so he stacks the shield. So... Oh, it's debatably I, I worse meta as well, double shield. Like, oh, you, yeah. you might you, even you'll say pay worse. for it later. You'll pay yeah. for it yes. down the line. You'll pay for it down the line. We, we learn this. You know what the part that makes me real line. sad too about it all? Is like we have such a good potential to become the next Apex Legends. Remember Apex Legends released? It went to the moon, then it died, yeah. and then they slowly over time they listened to their pros, their creators, and they brought it back up, chugging little bit by little bit by little bit by little bit. And even now they're having problems. They're actually, I would argue, having fatigue problems where the game is just getting kind of old. So they're like, oh, you know, like we want refresh. They refreshed in season 15, which was like a nice W for them, brought a lot of people back, brought a lot of love back to it. They have problems with ranked and hacking and stuff like that. Totally different problem. But Overwatch has such a prime opportunity that no other game on the market has that we could have spent the next year. Now we're down to six months ish assuming blizzcon is around the time that we start to look towards pve if we're talking about you know 2023 i would assume blizzcon would be the the release at least when we see stuff that's when people are going to be excited for the game be like okay pve is finally here that's your not only next but probably last influx major influx of players and imagine if they all came back and they were like wow this game's changed a lot since i last played it I kind of enjoy it, but instead we're chugging back downwards instead of going back upwards. It hurts. It really hurts. This is what made people quit Overwatch 1. Every single one of my buddies that used to play this game that have now moved on to other stuff. Johnny's so mad at, at Warzone 2, he's playing World of Tanks, which apparently actually looks pretty fun. I don't know if you guys have ever seen World of Tanks. The game looks pretty funny. I walk in there, and he's just rolling up on some tank. <laughs> it's so funny. But no, like they, they don't want to play against this corny stuff. Moira fading in Cole is corny. Brig getting literal tank health pool is corny. That's not the shooter game with MOBA elements that people wanted to come play, right? This is what Blizz, Activision Blizzard always does. They try to make their games as accessible to the average player as possible, and in the process, they can't find the sweet spot, and they destroy what made the game special in the, in the meantime. And that's what all these changes are doing. Stop buffing easy heroes to make them better or be competitive with harder heroes. You cannot do that. You cannot violate fair play. That's why everybody quit this game in the first place, right? So it's just, it's so disappointing. And again, it's a different team, right? It's a different team to be fair to them, right? But, you know, I, I wish that that lesson, surely that had been articulated somehow through a lot of the veterans on the Overwatch team. But... I don't know. I'm very nervous. We'll see how competitive does this season. I'm not hey, I, I have a subject that I hope this doesn't take us too much longer because I know we've been at a really long, long duration on this one. But they they kind of are touting season three's quote, let's say good balance. And I think there's like diverse picks, but I'm not a huge fan of the way the game plays, to be honest, personally. Like, like I don't know if it's necessarily the most fun the game's been. Like it's been, and this is kind of core to my always like diversity isn't always a net positive to the fun factor of the game. Like, yeah, there's like a lot of picks, but there's a lot of just to the same problem of what Flats kind of described, there's a lot of just like abilities and matchups that are pretty brutal, like in, in the game right now. And while there's a lot of picks that you can go to interact with that, it, I, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about it. Because on one hand, we had the Widowmaker Sojourn dominant era, right where where there's certain heroes dominated and now there's just there's a lot of abilities and it, it's kind of going up this next uh 
patch now that there's stronger abilities as well. Like we're adding more strong abilities. And I I feel like I haven't said power creep in years at this point, maybe. <laughs> sure, that can't be true. But it feels like a long time since I've said power creep. Everyone else keeps saying power creep. But it, it almost like sort of reminds me of when I finally gave up on power creep and the game's like a lot of abilities are just really strong. And and I don't know. I don't know if that's uh, too complicated of a question this deep into the podcast. But um, I don't know what to do with that. Because like at the launch of the game, a lot of players were worried it was two shooter where like Lucio was the best support, right? Now it's like ability watch again, kind of. Yeah. Uh, I think it's pretty fair to say. It's a fair take, actually. I agree with that. Because uh, a lot of people have said it's not as fun in season three. Like, like there's just diversity. There's a lot of I'm complexity with you on in the that. game. But I'm not sure. I'd have to think about that, Frito. I, you might be honest something, but I can't. I, I'd have to think about like how to better articulate how I feel to give an appropriate answer. I feel yeah. I, I, it's something to think about. It's not something I really thought about. It's like the, actually the experience of like playing the game and like whether that's actually better. Because the one of the things that's hard to remove is the freshness of season one of Overwatch, um, which is that like you know it's a new game. Season two of Overwatch, yeah, we're we're all really happy. We're all really happy, and even though it's like Zarya meta, we're all enjoying ourselves. But I do wonder if part of it was also just that it wasn't as so many annoying heroes. I know that's a really subjective statement to make to be like, oh, there's a lot of annoying heroes now that they get played a lot. And it wasn't so many annoying heroes back then. But it does feel like that whole... There, there is that vague sentiment amongst the community of like, well, these heroes are, are a little bit more engaging to play against. You know, like, when it was Winston Ana meta, like, I was having a blast. Because it, like, you know, you it feels fair. And it's hard yeah, to yep. sometimes... Uh, but, like, for example, this season, like, you can't kill a ball on your own. You can't kill through ram block. Like, you can't... Um, what are some of the other heroes that are just kind of crazy? Like, if you're discorded, you can't really interact with it. Um, it, it like stuff like that, Frito. Is that what you mean? Like, or SVB rather? There, there's, really good there's, widows. Really good widows. You just yeah. Yep. There's that. Cassidy also running like, around, Magno banging you, no matter where you go. Yeah, and just rolling out all the damage. Yeah, that's gonna get tuned down though, which is good. Um, a, a bunch of characters were kind of worthless, and they made them good contextually. Like, okay, so I'll go back to something SV said. Like, he made a point about Diva, right? And it's like sometimes. And I think the devs just, it's really hard to either grasp this idea, but what gets played and what has power currently is based on what is available to mark them or to be useful. And when when certain things are weak enough, then other things don't get played. And then somehow in the interchange of all of that is the fun factor of, of the game. And characters like May and Sombra were joke picks early on, and now they're like super good. And a problem that I have right now, and I'm trying to adapt to, like I haven't played ranked in a while, and then I got back in this like this last week, and I'm like, Wow, if like if my team goes like Hanzo's soldier and the enemy team has a Sombra or a Mei or a Zen or like oh, so many things that just are like dominant in the tank battle, whether I'm on tank or not, it's like it's just really hard to counteract that because the strategy of the game is is really strong. The team the teamwork is is high and the ability power is really high as well. So I I don't know which version I prefer. I, I think uh to some degree, there was something nice about the game feeling a bit simpler and a lot of those characters not being any good, to be honest. And and while on one hand it's like the the like certain things dominated, whether it's Sojourn or Kiriko or or whatever, but like the the playability of the game, it was more like I moved here, fragged this thing. And as opposed to now, it's like there's so many matchups that you just can't take. It's just like, oh, that thing has stats that you can't interact with. Good luck. And, and you're screwed. Um, so there's a lot more anchoring, a lot more, uh, you know, launching off uh, your support cooldowns or your support uh, ults, things like that. Yeah. I also sure. think that, like, yeah. in, in regards, it was just something we allude to a lot on the podcast, like the freshness and the Overwatch reinventing itself after every game, right? Which Flats often talks about, like, Apex is every, every game is different. And I, again, I'm just going to hit the bingo card, but this is another reason why, like, I just, in my mind, I'm just like, the only thing that could immediately, even vaguely solve this hero bans, like, because I'm like, sometimes I just need a break from something that's annoying the crap out of me. You know what I mean? Like, I just need, like, if I'm playing fucking DPS something, I just want one game where I'm not getting fucking Hanzo logged, dude. Like, I just want one game where that guy isn't logging me across the map and logging me at close range. Like, I just, just give me, like, and, you know, then you get that experience of, like, 
all right, sweet. I, you know, that game was fun because I didn't have to deal with that. And you kind of get that isolation of like, this is the stuff I really don't like going up against. Or if it's like a certain matchup, again, map specific matchup where you're like, Sir please just don't let me. I just don't want to go against Widowmaker. Please. It's like, I, I just want I want to play this map and actually have a good time. And I don't want to, I don't have to deal with this right now. Or, you know, whatever that thing is where you're like, just, just for now, give me a break from this thing. Because I think that's one of the more tiring things that wears you out. And maybe we're biased because, you know, we play the game a lot. So people will be like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. I I have lots of fun because I only play Overwatch like every couple games a week. But like when you do play a lot of Overwatch, which ideally the devs want everyone to do, ideally they want everyone to play a lot of Overwatch all the time. It gets really frustrating. And again, the map pool compounds this. It gets really yeah. frustrating banging yeah. your head against the same problem over and over. You're like, ah, just, just one game. I don't want to go against this guy again. Like I just don't want to go get this character you know. again, this ability again. Go ahead, you finish. No, no, I mean, that's basically my point. I just think, like, because I'm trying to think, like, solutions. Right? I'm like, how can we alleviate this feeling of, like, this kind of almost so, frustration? Uh, team mode around. as well. Uh, that's the team other part mode, of the yeah. bingo card, like, stacking. Like, like not having a good comp against the good comp Wasn't is me. just so brutal right now. No, literally, just I, 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 the idea that we can't stack with our friends. Like, like, there doesn't need to be some complicated system. Just open it up and see what happens. Who cares? Rank's dying anyway. Like, this, it's, it's so dumb. It's, it's just, it is so unbelievably dumb that GM players get punished this way. Who cares? Okay, games are coin flip anyway. Everybody knows this, all right? Let us at least control it on our own, like you all said, to the entire player base, except for us. But to be fair to the devs here as well, um... I think that a lot of that staleness and frustration comes from this season's map pool being horrible. And also, there wasn't a new hero. So let's see if we... I, I think it's too... I, I don't want to jump the gun on that sentiment immediately. I, I would like hero bans. I think that could be something interesting at some point. But let's see how we feel with the map pool gone and the new hero being added, right? Because we talked about this beforehand. We said, this is the season where, like, you know, we're probably going to feel pretty bored towards the end, right? And I think the only reason we didn't feel miserable mid-season was because the patch did have a lot of diversity. Um, and I think a lot of the map picks, too favored a specific type of comp like there are way more sniper poke maps in this map pool than there were dive maps like for example there wasn't gibraltar you couldn't play dive on gibraltar like there was there'd be a lot more options if the map pool is different so i do want to tip the hat a little bit there and just give them a little bit benefit of the doubt we'll see how we're feeling midway through season four it just sucks that this is the patch that it's coming out with <laughs> uh uh, Can I'll, yeah. I'm also going to add one addendum without at the risk of being like doomer 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 podcast and these guys just complain all the time Another another thing is that we have to be careful to not confuse diversity with just the random fucking swapping that we do all the time. Like, I feel like part of the di it's diverse is, like, because the tank has to switch every fucking fight. Like, so, yeah, it's diverse because there's no, like, standout tank that is the meta tank. But is that, like, a good diver? Like, that's not really the diversity I think is, like, we were yeah. looking for. I'm not looking for a different tank every two fights. And, like, oh, yeah, but the, the rest of the four other heroes are the same. You know, like, the re everybody else is playing the same fucking heroes. You know the tank true diversity. Right. You, know, yeah. you know why that happens? I, again, like, I, I actually think that's just because of a solo queue ranked environment where you never know what kind of supports you're going to get. Like, you could anchor on, this, on a specific tank if you had a backline that could consistently play around that and pick the right heroes. But since we're stuck solo queuing at our level, like, it's you just it's a literal coin flip. Every game is a coin flip playing tank. Like, I DPS can't, like, I want... DPS, yeah. Uh, if, they go, yeah. if they go May Bastion, you've been running Ryan or Ramacha, you're just, you're toast. Like, you have yeah. to go swap. Yeah, that May Bastion is a unique comp like that where it's almost better to just max the Bastion. Like, I haven't seen that. Do you see that a lot? I, I don't see maybe we'll do it against me because I play Ryan. Like I people uh, walk out on yeah. Bastion all the time. But yeah. now, but people haven't realized I've been practicing Diva and Sigma uh, on the sly and they get real <laughs> confused when I come out of nowhere and I actually kind of know what I'm doing. It's been a it's been a very nice little little, little yeah, trick in my back pocket. Gotcha. Yeah. Listen, yep. you know what they say, but what makes the best fastball in the league is having a great off speed, right? So like having that secondary pick is always really, really good. But no, I think I, I <laughs> I think a lot of it's solvable over time, but again, it's it's just the coin flip of the rank system too. It's just it's too tough. It's too tough. Yep. Sad. So, Jesse's point: not true diversity. That's what I think. Uh, yeah, a way I think of it is like just because that there's these awesome combos that exist and these more team comps, it doesn't mean the player base knows how to play them or chooses yes. them. So, so oftentimes you, it feels like I'm getting the short end of the stick, where it's like, well, they're playing a good combo, and and what do I do? Like. You know, sometimes I'll send a game to Sam and he'd be like, eh, no, you just lose that. I'm like, oh, but, but I, I don't want to just lose that. What do you mean? Like, like what do I do? No, nothing. Just lose. <laughs> really that's true, just, though. Four minutes, you just lose. I'm sorry. It's like, it is, it is what it is. Like, common reality of games is like, this is what I tell people all the time. Is like, they, if you, and I, I'd like to think that I've kind of, I, I've mastered the rank system and that like, I, 
like I can get like I was almost top ten on two rolls a season. Like every season, I can get really high up, and I've learned how to game the system almost. And that like not every game is winnable. Like a sixty percent win rate is an insanely high win rate, right? So you're better off mentally chalking like like the games where your team are just trolling. I tell people this all the time. I say put in the same amount of effort that your teammates put in if you want to maintain your sanity. It's just what you have to do, right? You just you if you're tryharding really really hard, and then you just have a Moira fade calling in their back line into a bastion. <laughs> Like it's over. Like you can't, you can't stop that. From, well, maybe you can now on Life Weaver, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Oh God. You know what? We have the counter to TikTok Moira. You just pick Life Weaver and just pull pull them right back in every time they get in the back. <laughs> yeah, it's actually very important to be able. Like, I, I don't, I don't totally do the same way Sam is. Like, I, I do always try, no matter what, no matter what people think. You try. You just um, don't go up here. Well, yeah. I just, you have to be kind of stupid. Like. You have to forget the last loss. Like you literally just have to forget. Like, like that's it, it, why sometimes I ask Emong what map he played last game. He goes, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, you've played, you play a thousand games of ranked a season. There's a reason why you don't remember what last map you played. Your brain is mentally protecting you from remembering whatever the fuck you just went through ten minutes ago. Like <laughs> that's what's happening. Yeah, real. It's true. I also think that like the more I, we play, I, again, this is, might just be a hangover of map pools, but the more that like we, we run on these maps and there's like, it's clearly like map metas. I'm kind of going away from the idea of like map metas, dude. Like it's, it's like something that works for Overwatch League, I think, and like pro play where you get to see diverse comps that way. But when I'm playing, again, I, maybe I'm just being a doomer now, but like I, I'm just tired of, of locking into like Parisu and I'm like, oh, they're just going to sit the hit scan in the high ground back there and like it's just GG if we don't play. If we, like I feel like a comp diff happens a lot, and it's not because it's a hard meta comp. And again, this has been my experience trolling through, like gold plus into into master now on Lucio only. But like, especially control, I feel like people just you just you just GG. Like they they go brawl, run on the point. This is GG. Like first fight, I said GG. Like your team's running whatever. You they, there's no way to win the fight. There's no way to win that that Depends game. On your hero pool. I just go Farah. Far is so good into that. This pack again, it completely. You know what would solve this experience? If you could play with your friends, because then you could pick people who have certain special teams and stuff. Like when you're actually, it, it solves so much. It just blow. It's baffling to me. Baffling. So, I, I go ahead, flats. Go. There's a reason why it's deem the flats question. This is not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Gonna, but even, even, even if it, even if we do lose their competitive mode, then that's so I have right. a I have something that I want to. I have a I have an opposite approach. I have like I'm snapping into a Joker arc at this point. Why don't oh, we God. apply the the rule to everybody? to everybody? You know what? Actually, I agree. How about this? Let's apply the stacking apply rule to everybody. The same rule to everybody. That's the they challenge. said. Let's do it. They've said very recently that they have a hard time making stacks in the plat in the metal ranks, um, because the games are not competitive, and they have a really really hard time with the matchmaker. Let's make your job make much easier because even the low rank players. The, all the all the metal ranks, even to up to diamond, even masters, complain about matchmaking. They say the matchmaking sucks. We complain about matchmaking because you know you roll load into a game and they have fits on a widow maker map, and you and I go, surely he doesn't pick widow and spawn trap us, and we sit and spawn for the next four minutes. Um, that's what bad matchmaking is to me. But to everyone else, you know, it's like, oh, I don't want a Moira player or whatever it is. Let's make better matchmaking for everybody. Let's make it so that it you can only solo queue, duo queue. Just like we had the 3900 system in Overwatch 1, which we all hated and everyone told us to shut our mouths. Stupid elitist uh, GM <laughs> streamers. You guys complain about everything, bunch of doomers. Oh, that's funny. When you guys had the same system, y'all hated it. So why don't you join us and have the same system of stacking? Why not? Let's see how long it lasts. I agree. Uh, it's, if it's the only way to get them to do it, they just ha they're going to have to burn themselves a little bit. Like, just go ahead. Listen, just... Apply the logic consistently. But, but back to comps a little bit. I agree with you, Flats, 100%. I think that they should apply it to the whole. I mean, we already learned our lesson on this, guys. You know how it's going to go. Quit quit trying to beat around the bush and just freaking do it. Just freaking do it, man. But, you know, it's there are a lot of situations that are like that. And it's, it's a double-edged sword almost because I, I like having game diversity like that. Like, I do. But also, at the same time, like, you're just not, you're just not consistently getting the tools. Um to actually answer it and that's that's when it gets incredibly frustrating and the, again the only real answer is either hero bans 
right? Or to be able to play with your friends and you have more control over your game experience. That's, that's all you can really do. From a game design standpoint and a balancing standpoint, that's where it should be. We just don't have the features in the game to actually enable the proper answers. And the map pool also is, I think SV, you talked about the high grounds SVB, it's just this map pool. Like I, you would, you would have true, way true. less of that if this map pool wasn't the worst map pool ever played with one of the best patches I think that we've had. So I, I don't want to rag on the Tragic. balance game for that because I, I actually think they did a really good job of this balance patch. You can play so many, like my, 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 uh, my career profile looks like a Skittles ad this season. Right. And that's great. <laughs> you know, that's, that's great. That's what we want. Um, but it's just, the map pool was just so poke favorite that you just missed out on the maps where you could play like a lot of the other stuff. So I, again, this is why I really wanted to see what would happen with season four. I was, I was stoked. I was like, we had this patch on season four. Oh, we'd be cooking, but we'll, we'll see how this one goes. It's true. It's fair. Frito, you haven't spoken in a while. Anything you want to add on this? The devs are teasing that eventually a tournament mode or a mode you can play with your friends, even high level players, one and the same. They've said both is coming, so I assume that's the, the, the same thing. Yeah, I so I enjoyed your guys' last podcast where this was a longer topic. And I'm sitting there thinking, because I remember um, making content for Valorant when that first came out. And Valorant, right at the start, at the launch, was really ahead of like, this is a competitive game, you can stack with your friends. And what ended up happening was, I lost that argument, because I was all for that, right? But there's a lot of high-level streamers that like to pub stomp, and they're like, oh, it's just boring, you can't win as a solo, and, and all this. So I, I see both sides of it, having lost that battle a long time ago. But I personally don't care. I like it when when the, it gets asked this super difficult question, right? It's like, well, what happens when there's a stack that can't be beat on the ladder? I don't care. That's my answer. I, I don't know. They just keep winning. Like, why do you have to force them to lose? Like, it's like, would we ask this question in the Overwatch League? It's like, what happens if the San Francisco Shock can't lose? Yeah, they keep winning. Oh, uh, they keep winning. That's the answer. Yeah, get, they keep winning. Trick room in there. You get trick room in there. Shout out Infect. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, it's not. It's not. To be fair to the devs, it's not that. Why? It's not that. Oh, they don't shouldn't win. It's like, who do you sabotage to basically confirm a loss? Like, who do you put in to be like, go lose? Put Dante in there because he hates stacking. Make him win. Yeah, but back in Overwatch <laughs> 1, like early 2016, 2017, teams used to queue snipe each other all the fucking time. It's more fun. It's not perfect. It's just more fun. It's all it is. And I, I just, it, it baffles me. Because here, you know what? I'm going to tell a story real quick. I would, I, I, all my buddies that I came from Minecraft with into Overwatch, right? It was like me, like Dante, um, like a guy named X Hockey, shout out Parker, Tyler's, um, a, bu a bunch of guys that like came from Minecraft PvP and we started playing Overwatch. And I went into Discord, their old Discord, because everyone was in there. And I just wanted to catch up all my friends, man. I hadn't talked to them in a while and they're all great guys. You know what they were doing? They were five stacking in Valorant. And I was like, why don't you guys like ever like want to play Overwatch too? They're like, dude, we just like, we're not going to play, we're not going to play, we can't play together. Like stuff like that. And it was just like, you know, the amount of communities of people just hanging out in Discord at night, queuing together, playing together. Like, it, like the community is at a net loss. It, it just is. And I'm, it's not perfect without it. I'm just, it's, it's not perfect, okay? But are we really going to act like this is any better? Are we really? And it, what's so frustrating about it is you could just flip a switch in one patch and it'd be back. It's crazy. It's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. It's, it's, it's like I, I look forward to the trying to mode. kill your steam. I'm just looking it, forward to the tournament mode. We, we shouldn't have to wait for a tournament mode. We really shouldn't. It, it is it is cuckoo for cocoa puffs, and we're gonna. And I, I understand the sentiment behind not wanting it at the start, but do you know how many out players behind the scenes I've I've talked to, and they're like, yeah, we just can't even stack. Like it's just boring. Like, there's no point. Ranked is so boring. No one plays. If you bring back stacking, at least those guys would be willing to play more to play against like actual practice. Everyone just trolls. There was I'm yeah. not gonna name the player. I was gonna say there's more owl trolls than I think people know about yeah, at this oh, point. Oh, dude, no, there, there's a lot of owl. There, just they, trolls. There's no. They're what? all in alt accounts out of voice trolling. Just like, trolling. That's all like, it is. I'm not. E I don't even get mad anymore. I think it's fucking funny half the time. Like I don't even care anymore. But like I know, I know when I bump into certain people because you'll just see two tracers go off on the other side of the map and start one v one all the time. Again. Like, mm, what's going on over there? I what's happening. Oh, no, right? do you, do you, it looks like your your uh, your keyboard got broken. Your crouch key's getting stuck on that other tracer a lot. What's yeah. going on? You know, like it's <laughs> funny. You just, dude. I, I I'm not gonna say it on stream because I'm not gonna rat anybody. But yeah, dude, I know. Like, if, if people knew, like, there there was one <laughs> there was one screenshot where in 20 minutes, this dude I'm not gonna say who it was 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 30 and 28 
and won the game. And that's their challenge. We're calling that challenge and 10 bucks to anybody who wins with a stat line like that. Like stuff like like stuff like that was happening like in season two and stuff. And they were winning. Like people were at they were actually winning. Like that's the most entertainment people can get from ranked. It's crazy. Hmm. It's so crazy. It's also I, really let's just know. say it's a really, 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 really shitty that it's turned to that. And I remember Dante made a tweet of like he hates ranked now. Like the new age, the new generation of pros ruined ranked by always playing out of voice and just kind of trolling and he's not technically wrong but at the same time though you can't really blame him yeah, so with contra is because rank's not taken yeah. seriously because stats yes, exactly they were removed. I, I i think the truth is though as much as i agreed and went hard to agree with you guys it's like the silent majority it, there's more of those players that will just want to exist and will complain if you guys get what you want and then it's just going to get reverted again sadly so the best so, thing we can hope for is an alternate mode. That that's where I stand, unfortunately. Something. I don't blame the devs, is my point. It's like because I've seen a game say, well, this is a competitive game, so you know, get get your friends or get wrecked. And then there was massive upheaval upheaval constantly. And that's what's what, what would happen, I think. Because I'd say my we're not that the hardcore of a community, is the truth. My, my answer to that, yeah, and that's why Owl suffered massively because we've alienated that kind of player and they've just left to better products. That's why they're not here anymore. That's because stuff like this is exactly what drove people away. And I think as a company and a business, your goal to be, should be to get as many people in the door that like stuff as possible. And while we alienate those kinds of players, the league suffers, the community suffers. And that's, I think that's one of the biggest reasons that you see, you know, a lot of the, the, the mentality of Owl players today. It's just not competitive. That's I mean, it. the league sucks because. It the league sucks like that's that's the truth of it like the, the mm -hmm. overwatch league just sucks yeah so, i mean yeah I'm about, to, I'm about to yeah i'm about to get absolutely hit up in my dms but like i i think i think what frito's trying to say is again it's that it's that market you know catering to the market right it's like well and also like you know i, I know there's a lot of people listening who are like yeah but this you know this doesn't change the experience of shit matchmaking outside of gm or like already this is like this we oh, don't, don't we worry, have we'll, we'll, oh i forgot right, actually they did reduce the stacking penalty in those ranks too. So to make your like make it fair argument, uh, it, even more so. That, that's the thing I always hated about stacking because like as a as a bubble player, like even though you can stack in masters, all the yeah, Smurfs Frito are and there I did this as all well. The time. It, 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 yeah, it's not possible to st like it, you you just get rolled. Like it's way the de degree of difficulty is so much harder than a normal game, and yeah, that was the case that. for metal rank as well for quite a while. But in Overwatch 2, they they distinctly reduced the stacking penalty for whatever reason, and I haven't heard upheaval in the streets about that. Like they just sort of like wrote that in a patch note at some point or in, in a blog, I think, and so, no so one's what, complained what there. Like, what does that mean exactly, Frito? Like they're getting matched against harder players or easier players? Because Go, uh, yeah, easier yeah. than before. The, the penalty, really? the pe they literally called it a stack penalty, which is my terminology. They used to just call it fair matchmaking because you were a stack in plat or whatever. They would place you against, like, let's say you, you were a five or a six uh, in Overwatch 1, that you would play against the next rank up pretty much. Or what I dislike even more. They know whose MMR is above that SR range. Oh, so they'll God. pick, they'll, they'll, they'll place the worst. So even if you're at the same rank, quote unquote, you'll get the somehow worse player in that queue, if that makes sense. So like, like there's tw however many people looking to queue at that rank, you'll get the the worst player on in your three stack uh, on your team, and it's obvious, right? It's so obvious, and the the enemy team will will have Smurfs or much like or likely to have hackers as well in Overwatch One. That was much worse. Anyway, this is ancient history, but <laughs> this is like a, yeah, a, a, a subject I wish I wish I had the like heart in me left to be as passionate as you guys are. But I'm just sort of like, oh, I've seen no, no one cares. Like, <laughs> like it, we lose this argument. So, sorry, uh, I'm done. No, Frida just reminded me of our, our memories of like why we don't stack anymore because like when this happened in Overwatch One all the time, where me, me him, and Nate, we'd stack. We're like masters, or whatever, and we're getting either GM Smurfs, like tough hunter Smurfs, against us, or and or the guy on our team is just literally like sniffing glue. He's just like he you check his profile, he hasn't played in two years. The man's just like perma perma me. perma in the front line dying his bap or whatever, right? And you're just like, it's unwinnable. So I remember that's like so I, I imagine for a lot of people it's the same, but I'm glad to hear that they reduced the stack penalty in, in Overwatch 2. I think the ultimate fundamental problem though is just simply you can't have a stack queue at the same SR as a solo queue because like it still will just just the the trollness of a solo queue is always easier to to navigate than like the sweating and trying hard for the same twenty five SR or whatever it is, right? Like, why would you sweat, try hard, calm, 
you know, play your heart out and then still lose to the enemy team for the same amount of effort as going in and getting a free win because their guy is upset that their comp is wrong and so he's just going to toss the game, you know? So I feel like we just need the we just need the separate queues so that people can like have their SR separately, which is again a a, a topic we've gone over many many times over the years. So it's not it's nothing new to listeners, but that feels to be like the only meaningful suggestion. By the way, Flats turning his camera off has changed everyone's POV, so don't worry. Sam is still here shaking his head in in uh, in a chair, and Fritos is not on cam anyways, so. Uh, <laughs> They're all here. Don't worry. We're chilling. Frito, you were gonna say uh, something? Yeah, I, I I think we have a. I haven't been on the show in a while, so we we really I pushed us longer. I'm to blame. Normally, I'm like, let's just try to get this nice and sweet. We'll be here every week, and I'm over here like causing the, the had, deepest we conversations. Was, we, we had to cook today. We had to cook today. This was this is healthy. It was today. yeah necessary. I mean, it's important. With I mean, again, and not to be doomsday. So. You know, there's there's a lot to look forward to. Again, I'm looking forward to Life Weaver for sure. I think it's gonna be fun. Um, I'm playing yeah. them. Shout that's out, for sure. Shout out Life Weaver. That that'll be fun. That'll be a, a funny. That that's a, a a lot of those abilities are good ways to spice things up. And there's a lot of the fringe things coming. Through. Again, that that part they've been killing it. The skins look awesome. L look oh really, yeah, really cool. Well, they always. I mean, that's, um, I mean, it's the best artist in the world. But you know, so. but we should still we should still give him the props. You know, we can't take it for granted oh, yeah. that they keep dropping hot skins like some of that Lucio Bangers. stuff. Was like was always hilarious. Carried. They yeah, carried. I look forward to the to the you know the space opera, uh, the whatever Star Watch, whatever it was. Um, I yeah. think that'll be fun. Flats so these... cardboard Ryan. Oh yes, that's perfectly great fitting skin. for this season. <laughs> so I think I think yeah I think I guess we're just biding our time. It's so sad to say this, but like we're biding our time to PVE again. You know, it's like we're kind of hoping yeah. for that. Uh, don't say that. Don't say that. No, thing again. I really, it's actually real. I I feel that way as well. I'm actually, uh, I don't know if I want to say it. I don't know. If, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very right. much uh, on the hunt a little bit for, you know, what do I want to do? Yeah, I mean, you should always keep your options open. Oh, I for mean... sure. I mean, I, I don't want to so listen. Like, this is going to maybe sound a little bit weird, but it has to be probably you can relate to this in some ways, too, is like when I started making content in Overwatch was in 2020. So I watched the community for like two, three, four years. Like I grew, like like I first, like I was watching Twitch streams and playing Overwatch back when like Sim, like when Tim and Seagull played in like 2016 and then watched XQC during his meteoric rise in 2018. Like I've seen it all. And I also remember watching uh, lots of creators like Harb and Emong and all these guys that used to be three, 5K viewer streamers consistently all slip into 1k or below or 2k and below and at most 3k and, and below streamers at the end of overwatch one and i'm watching right now and it's starting to happen again even with drops sometimes which we, we've heard nothing about drops so like watching everybody slip back down it's like i wouldn't i don't know if i want to stay on a sinking ship if it's going to sink again like overwatch one did like it just seems like a really bad idea so uh it's it's scary like from a own career standpoint, it's like it doesn't feel like we're wanted here sometimes. Uh, you know, it, it feels like we, all we want is what's best um, for everyone in a lot of ways. And uh, it's really scary to watch things kind of slip back to where they were. And also the calendar meme where we're back in 2018 with Brig. Um, <laughs> it, you know what the definition of insanity is, right? Yeah. So I don't want to be insane. That's fair, valid, smart. Frito. Oh man, heavy subject, dude. Uh, I, I I hear you, man. I hear you. I feel like surviving longer. Um, I've already been through this transformation. You know, I, I've done. We did other projects. I have a whole separate. Um, career outside of youtube funnily enough that you, may, you guys don't even know about so <laughs> it's like i've i've been ahead of it like like i've been looking for to make sure that i'm not like too tied to one thing um yeah i i don't have much more to say i guess like like i'm optimistic because i think like our expectations are pretty low and and maybe like a lot of the 
the benefits they're putting into this next season, we'll feel better about it. But this this game has been a bit more of a slow burn. You guys were talking about this really well last, last episode as well. But like, it's been a much slower burn of adding of stuff, and it, we, it doesn't feel like we're getting a downhill momentum, I guess. And and we won't have that until like the PVE, as SV keeps saying. So. Um, I think that's the the major milestone to look forward to. Personally, I, I'm looking forward to like challenging myself with more difficult content. Like I want to make more nerdy um, videos, like or like longer and more advanced. So you can look forward to to that on your Overwatch, not not uh, just news and um, commentary. It's been a while since I've made some really difficult guides, and and I'm, I'm going to try to do that because um, the way I kind of got over some of that like slump. Uh, personally anyway was like i'm gonna like make it my miss mission to try to help players improve and like get all the complexity of the game and at some point i grew like numb to that like i think sv's also grown numb to that in many ways <laughs> if you listen to things he said like like where he started as a creator years ago to like now then it's like it's funny to watch that transformation uh and the, the it's sort of the emong effect that you're saying it's like like the desensitization of the negativity that you have to have to endure and that's where like on so many of these subjects like i can't bring myself to be as passionate as you guys because i have done that and burnt myself out on it and it just like screaming at a wall for so long and and i i don't mean to uh steal the thunder in this way but i feel like in some ways i got it worse because the devs would literally say mean things to me <laughs> Yeah, yeah, in response to the things did. i said okay so it's like did. back right, then too. so like i, I had to have an extra layer of thick skin <laughs> and, and now they're they're really nice to me uh almost overly so uh but you know so um anyway i i didn't come here to talk about this subject i guess <laughs> you turned it into the content creation which i normally try to uh avoid speaking about but um I'm gonna challenge myself basically to to like make better content. So that that that's my that's my goal. I think uh, a lot of you guys have put out really great stuff, and I want to be a part of that group as well. So we we can still curb this away into like a, a more positive direction. The sad reality is like no matter how well we teach the game, no one learns anything ever. So <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> Oh, God. Well, that's, you know, again, not to keep piling on the dude, but that's why I stopped quit educational content, which is, yeah, fr Frito's right to talk about. Like, I started... Smart man. I started Overwatch as a content... As I literally... The, the, the entire reason I became a content creator, I was like, man, there's just not that many good guides in Overwatch. That's literally it. I was like, I hit Top Finder for the first time, and I'm like, my friends are like, yo, dude, you, you're really good at, like, explaining this concept. Go, like, you should make content. And I was like, okay, I will. So I started making content. And I was like, yeah, there's not enough good guides. And then, yeah, over the, like, especially with, like, over the years, even with Overwatch 1, like, there was nothing new to teach. Frito knows it's like, it's the same fucking game. So what are you going to teach someone, like, six years in? Like, there's nothing new. But even Overwatch 2, I was like, maybe, do I want to try educational content again? And I'm like, nobody cares, dude. Nobody wants to learn this game. Like, there's not a single person out there. Well, okay, that's an exaggeration. But, you know, like, pound for pound, like, for, for every 99 people that are playing Overwatch, like, you know, like, one, and then there's one guy who's, who's, who's trying to learn and grind and, and go hard so i mean like you know I, i'm still gonna have fun you know i don't expect people to have sympathy about our jobs because people never do they're always like you fucking chose this job and you know whatever which we did <laughs> we chose to be overwatch creators we chose to be content creators so uh forgive our self-pitying yeah but those same know. people will say something about you not doing educational content anymore because they want that transactional experience where they where you give them something likely for free and then they can just leave and say fuck off so i don't care about those people True, very true. Or the people who are like, why do I have to watch ads on this stream? I don't know, dude, because I need <laughs> a living. I don't know, dude. May, just maybe I should feed myself. That's a fair expectation, I think, but no, not for some people. Um, so, I mean, I'll, I'll, you know, I've, you, as a content creator, you got to find ways to, to, to reinvent yourself. I think that's like the base of content creation. You got to find ways to like adapt to what's happening. So like, I'm having a good time making the content I am. So I don't want anyone to be like, he's just complaining and this idea like i'm having a really good time making the content i am the criticisms that we make are based off of i think our passion as overwatch players i think they're based off of like because i think because you know it, we'd be bad content creators if we weren't able to adapt right if we were like we're complaining because our content is suffering and we want the game to be different so that our content can thrive now nah, like flats has been popping off like giga hard me and sam been making fun videos and fritos on the grind again so like we're, we're fine as content creators it's more a, a desire as an overwatch player to see the game go in a certain direction that we think is healthier for the game. And when that doesn't happen, and when it doesn't happen repeatedly, you kind of start getting sad. And there's only so long you can, like, keep 
shifting your paradigm around what the game is as opposed to what you think it should be, right? There's only so many times you can keep being like, okay, I guess they're doing that this time. I see. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, they're not. Okay. I see. They're not doing that. Oh, all right. Okay. So it, it, it only comes from a place of passion and love. So it is what it is. You know, it, it, what, what will happen will happen. I think part of it is just the... We still haven't... We've been underwhelmed a little bit by Overwatch 2, right? Because so many... The, they didn't actually make an incorrect decision going Overwatch 2. Sorry to keep ranting on and for so long, but... If you look at the industry, other games have realized the same thing that Overwatch 2 did, which is that at some point, if your game is live service, you have to reinvent it at some point, right? It's like Fortnite have done like a large restructure. CSGO has CSGO 2 now. You know, like Apex had to do a large restructure. So like games have realized that if you're like a live service game, at some point, you actually might have to like do a reboot just so that like people get interested in your game again but so it's not that Even overwatch drops. 2 <laughs> yeah some so games that... started doing drops more commonly after they saw overwatch 2 literally right so and overwatch 2 picked up the beta key drop from valorant so it's like you know we all learned that you gotta like you gotta yeah, reinvent maybe. yourself but um it's more that i guess we didn't get the the big momentous shift yet which hopefully the pve provides but again it's, yeah. it's kind of been that slow that slow drip that i think is slowly sapped some of the energy of, of my of my colleagues here uh which is why you're seeing what you're seeing so hopefully looking forward to the future again we'll always try and be optimistic at entity so concluding thoughts fellas season four what are we looking forward to what are we hoping for sam hoping for a balance patch and then two weeks reverting some of the stuff um by the time live fever comes out i i hope the game's like a little tuned down differently i i'm excited to see diversity of comps i think that like there's a lot of interesting abilities should be coming out so i'm excited to see those i'm excited for the map pools to be gone um i'm excited to see things like f move forward right because again like the, we all we talked about this this season was going to be the stagnant season right so i'm excited to see feel the gears turning again with life weaver coming in and hopefully seeing you know maybe a tournament mode or just anything that enables us to play with our friends would be sweet for me personally um but aside from that obviously al's coming back up so i'm excited to co stream I think I can say that, yeah, because I'm a coaching pro. Yeah, um, but yeah, no, so it should be fun. I I'm excited to see everything go on and uh, keep the ball rolling, keep bringing the heat, and uh, yeah, might get ranked one brick this season. We'll see. We'll see. Might have to do that just for the content. Don't know if I want to put myself through that again, but oh well. <laughs> I mean, yeah, go for it, man. Why not? Uh, we'll let Flats go next because I, 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 I don't want uh, <laughs> Flats to have the last negative sentiment of the, of the concluding thoughts. <laughs> Well, Sam, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to play some. If you're playing Brig, we're gonna have to play some games because uh, I don't feel like playing that many. So let's get a very early tense, <laughs> a nice early tent set up for the rest of the season because I yeah. actually ended up. And having Brig to play and the last Ryan game. is a Brig and Ryan's a great combo. Right? <laughs> oh, oh fuck it. off! It, it, interlock fuck the off. shields. Stop. Interlock the shields. Stop. <laughs> Uh, yeah evil. i actually had a i had a hard grind in the last two or three days to get back in because i had one i had a good spot but we played a bunch of games for the tournament and i dropped a bunch and then i played with wanted and we went like oh and seven and then i played more and we lost i just, just tanked it. it's really hard so i had to play a bunch to get back in for end of season um so we're gonna have to play but you actually said something interesting okay so i'm gonna be real i'm really not interested in playing season four i just personally i'm not yeah. um but i'm you know what let's hit let's hit i'll hit you with something nice I am excited for the possibility and the hopefulness. I don't know if you all saw, but Call of Duty League actually announced that it's going to be streaming on both YouTube and Twitch at the Ooh. same time. I hope that Overwatch League, because it's all, you know, similar, um, a lot of the investors are the same across the teams, will follow suit because Overwatch League's Pro AM apparently was really, really fun and really, really good and probably one of the best. Uh, Overwatch like content they had made, however, it being on YouTube with no drops and no skin, no coin drops or anything like that, legitimately is killing it. And like we don't even know, it, did, I don't, did Chung do ever get confirmed? Is like still a team? And then <laughs> yeah, LA Gladiators, so. so. Gladiator said so. if they don't find a buyer by the end of this year, they're just literally closing the doors and there's nothing you could do about it. Um, so like there's trouble over there. There, there is like whether people want to see it or not. I think if it went back to Twitch and YouTube at the same time, like Call of Duty League could do, I think they could have a good, nice, thriving uh, economy and people getting excited to watch the games again. I hope they make the right decision over there because if that's actually a possibility, there's some light in uh, at the end of that tunnel. So hopefully they, they will have a good time and they will have find success 
Uh, I just personally am not that excited for playing Overwatch season four. So that's my my thing to look forward to, possibly. All right. I appreciate you trying to be positive for me, man. I appreciate it. Frito. I'm grinding life weaver, bro. Like I feel like this is my character hero. pretty much. It like, hero. It's it's your hero. We're like the whole like be, I said I said this in the video and I don't think I said it on the show, but like every time I play a ranked, I just wish that I could get my teammates to do what I know they should be doing, and I'm better <laughs> at that than I am like clicking heads. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh hopefully being pretty good at life weaver. I was watching my footage back too. I got a, a guide in the works. And like legit make it some plays, okay? So like like I, I don't know. I feel I feel pretty good on on the character and um, I reached my heights in Overwatch 2 so far when there was, like, good supportive aspects. Before they made carry to more about DPS, like, I was much higher rank. So uh, I, I think my support SR is going to be uh, solid this next um, season. And also, I think the, like, there's, like, little quality of life changes that start to add up. They look so tiny on paper, to be honest. But, like, map pools going away and the stranded spawn system and then life weaver as a character that is just good in general but good at like stabilizing the team and helping you fight together since that's so important to overwatch like i'm hoping that this sort of has a net benefit of like making the game feel a bit more playable to play in in ranked and so i'm optimistic towards that i didn't like season three altogether it, the diversity is great all that so there's a lot of heroes you can play but like the potential of the counter picking and having a bad comp that that's gets a little stale for me personally. It just gets me kind of resident sleeper uh, category with ranked where I'm like, I don't like auto losing games based on, I can't even just get comp to, to work. So um, I hope that down the line, they keep adding mechanics that are like life weaver in terms of it, like makes the game easier to play with teammates that are randoms. And I think they've done a lot of, things with like the ping system and whatnot with overwatch 2 that we just totally forgot about but uh, i'm hoping that they continue on that path it just it seems a little slow now at this point like the first uh two couple seasons there it was rapid and of course we knew this was going to happen but they they released a hero in season one and two right because it was ram am i am i slow and yeah 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 right that's true and yeah. having a having a season without a hero is, is not great. Not gonna lie. I I hope that in future that's like a PVE expansion instead of of just the map. I hope that's what the plan is long term because the the fun factor of the game is quite low, even if the balance is technically good. Unfortunately, um, so I I look forward to the rest of the year. I guess uh, pray for PVE um, because that that's gonna really save the game and also hopefully get us away from a lot of the design decisions to make easy things too good uh, that that's what we've always sort of defended and hoped against but so so I, yeah i'm cautiously optimistic and a little concerned on some of the trends that may add up over time unfortunately yeah yeah i mean there's there's a lot I, I think the thing is you know we come when we come and we talk about overwatch we're we're, we're obviously very competitive centric whereas the wider game has a lot of cool things going on a lot of the time. They're just not based around the experience of actually playing Overwatch, right? So if we look back at Season 3, we got the Lover Watch thing, which was great. Like, so many people are having such a great time with Overwatch. Like, Lover Watch was great. There's lots of little lore, lore nuggets. I know people have been loving the interactions in some of the heroes. You know, there's a lot of new voice interactions that are great that, you know, tell a lot of rich story about how the characters are that obviously make us look forward to PvE even more. You know, obviously, shout out Life Fever being the first openly pansexual hero. The the interaction where he flirts with Bap is, is hilarious and cool. So there's, like, a lot of cool stuff going on. There'll be the space opera stuff. The skins will be awesome. So there's a lot of fun things going along in Overwatch. The only sad part is that when you boot up the, the Overwatch client, it kind of ends there. <laughs> like, when you click the play button, like, it's not it kind of goes away a little bit. Like, and again, not to say that I haven't had fun, but you shouldn't have to make your own fun, I think, is the is the thing. Like, I've had to make my own fun, right? Like, finding ways of making content that are, like, engaging for me and, like, challenging myself and impose... Like, you know, I think we talked about this in the LAD podcast as well. It's, like, adding challenges to yourself uh, about, like, how you want to play the game to kind of make it more interesting. And this goes back to those pro players as well, where it's, like, they they... they come up with something to do to actually engage themselves in the game so i hope that you know i hope that it feels fun when life he was in the game i hope it feels like he'll definitely carry the first few weeks right like when he's around he'll definitely carry the first few weeks so i hope when we get that balance patch 
I hope it hits hard. I hope it makes us feel fun. And I hope that all the systems and things that they've alluded to, the things they've talked about, about this like pro tournament mode or whatever. And yeah, those PVE. I hope they actually add so that we're all, we're all just more happy with the experience of playing Overwatch. That's what I'm looking forward to. Um, again, I, I will have a lot of fun playing Life Weaver, but yeah, I don't I don't want us to be jaded and frustrated with this game, especially we're barely in six months into the life of Overwatch 2. Like, I don't want us to burn out in like a year. So I hope the devs put out some good shit because they put out a lot of good shit. Ping system is great as well as free to point size. Actually awesome. Like, you don't, you don't actually ever have to be in voice chat because you can just ping stuff. So... That made the out of voice problem worse, though. But sadly, that's but yeah. true. Yeah, it's true. But honestly, like, yeah, outside of GM, it's like it's actually kind of pointless, anyways, because everyone's a clown. Um, so true. Don't worry, yeah. we're GM too. I'm sure I'm, uh, that's true. They are. They are. That's true. Actually, that's actually <clears throat> legit and ironically true. But um, yeah, I mean, not to be too negative. I, I there's a lot to look forward to. So I hope that season four provides us with. A lot of fun, and I hope we have some more smiling faces, fellas, next time we convene that there's a lot of us to kind of be like, yes, guys, this is fun. So I hope to see you guys in a better mood, all right, fellas? Oh, also, I'm smiling in my note, picture. Ending That's note, true. we can talk about this next time. It looks like the acquisition probably is going to go through based on like what's been happening the last couple of weeks, but um, we, I'll talk to you guys about that in, in Discord. But yeah. Yeah, another piece of optimistic news. So Sam, thank you very much. I'll see you, fellas. I'm about to go grind, actually. Flats, yeah. thank you very much. How you do it? Yeah, thank you for having me. And Frito, thank you so much, guys. Use code Overwatch at checkout, Manscaped. Later. <laughs> Let's go. On that note, peace I just out. Might. I just might. See All you right, later, see you guys. Guys.